the biggest mobile publisher. I mean, that's true. And so from that standpoint, it does fit with what Xbox is trying to get into. So perfectly. And I mean, Cycle looked up the list and was like, you know, he was high. <laughs> Holy shit. So that is a good point. It is a good point. But you could also say that they could pull that from somewhere else, though. Of course um, they could. It's just built in, pre-built in. Right. I mean, they, they, that would be pre-built in. But again, I think it would be better for Microsoft to just kind of hit Sony over the head. Um, I don't. I don't. I think. I don't think that would be better. Excuse me. I think that would just be the wrong move to take it. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we're kind of already in conversation talking about <laughs> things behind the scenes. I said, "Fuck it, let's just go live." I'm just. I'm dropping the f bomb first thing in the beginning of the show. Yeah, why not? We're, yeah, we're not. We're not monetized. It's all good. We'll make those adjustments no. once Disney picks us up or something. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is Liver Split Screen, though. Hopefully, you know that, and hopefully, you also know you're about to get some of the most live, raw, and uncut content because I'm about to go on a fucking tangent about Gotham oh. Knights today. Um, oh, I know oh, Paul oh. kind of reined me in the other day from me, you know, really taking off. But um, I, I'm going to have to go on a tangent because seemingly the audience has flipped the script on this game. Everything was swaying towards the negative side of it. And now people are coming around like, oh, I don't know. This game's pretty good. Uh, it might Sorry. even be better than the original Batman games. Now, again, different. It's ro it's rolling around. It it is 100% different again and I am here to admit that. Um but the biggest reason I admit that today, I do have some live gameplay for you playing in the background of Gotham Knights. This is me playing as Black Girl um Bat Girl, Black Girl. Black Girl. Whoa. Um, there actually was a Black it. Bat Girl though, but yes, um yes, then they but, made a TV show and everything. They ended but that up that would canceling. be one crazy character name if they just called her Black Black girl, you no, know, that would have been out. really <laughs> off. Nah, yeah. I would have had a problem. I would have been like, hey, 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 hey. It's white oh, guy but... and black girl. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, what are, what are we doing here? But no, um, but no, it's of Bat Girl getting it in or Bat Cheeks as Bam uh, V3 like calls one, her on way. Twitter. I like that one. Uh, like Bat Cheeks is amazing because she is double cheeked up, man. I, I don't, I don't. I see some of it. I'll tell you this. As many as much as people try to kind of poo poo on the graphics, not the game looks and the art style, I overall like it and I like the design of the characters. Um, the weakest looking characters are Robin and Nightwing, but Robin's outfits are fire. Like, bro, he he is super savage to me. I like his play style. All the characters play differently. Oh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, we were kind of talking about shot the hard geeks in the e, but. Uh, we were talking about some things in the background, just um, as far as like how deals go and everything, and the differing opinions that a lot of people could do uh, could definitely have because that's what makes this conversation interesting, right? Because there is no true one way. Um, but we got in the conversation a little bit about uh, Sega kind of like versus Square Enix, right? And me and Pong are all of the same mind that it definitely makes more sense that. Sega kind of jump in that bag, and I know we're 15 minutes behind the scene, y'all. Just both. chopping it up. Get them both. Get them both. Uh, people are like, "Yo, these guys came in hot and just ready to give the energy." Uh, yeah, man. So, and that's why I kind of want to transition that to you guys too. What do you guys think? Do you guys think it'd be smarter to get Sega over Square Enix? And I know Pong said, "Hey, why not go for both?" <laughs> and for me, I try not to be like take the greedy bag side of it. Um, I wanted to be, I wanted to do things that make sense, right? Uh, but again, for me, Sega makes the most influential sense. Uh, definitely would be able to dig in that bag more. Uh, Sonic would be an instant billboard for them. Uh, and mobile games you could be could be made in the groves. <laughs> again, I know that was one of the points that came up uh, behind the scene when we were talking about it, but. I don't know, man. It's definitely going to be something interesting to see how um, people decide to play that out, man. But uh, let's see what we got in here or in these beautiful people, man. That on up. Let's see. He said, <laughs> Jacob Novick says, are we talking about Sony buying Sega? No, oh, man, not Sony. Xbox. <laughs> Xbox buying. <laughs> Xbox buying them. Sony buying Sega, that would be, that would be different. That would I, be a move. It would. It would definitely be a move. I don't see that happening, but no. man, that would be different. Because they don't. Mm. 
I don't want I I it'd be a move. It'd be a move for sure. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if there's enough benefit for nah, Sony not, there. In the long term, honestly. Uh yeah, I mean they would get a PC presence. They would do yeah, it'd be they would get Atlas, which would be It's not like they didn't need Atlas at, at the same no. time. They're going to get those games regardless. <laughs> well, yeah, for sure. But you can say that about anyone, right? For for Sony right now, you can say that about anyone. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Right down that's the true. Road. You know what I'm saying? So it's solidifying things. No, I think CD Projekt Red, Sony, definitely. And CD Projekt Red is, the way that they're announcing things. I think that's more they possible. Are, they are beefing up their stock price right now for an acquisition. That's why they... That's what a lot of this was for CD Projekt Red, and I think Sony, I mean, is would fill a big giant need. Um, it'd be a good move. I'd be sad because I know we wouldn't get the next spot Cyberpunk right <laughs> over on Xbox, but hopefully I have a PlayStation by then, anyways. But it would be a great move for me. One hundred percent, chat. Hope you're all feeling good this morning. Everything behind the scenes is looking from a tech standpoint good this morning. So yeah, hopefully. man, we got no drop frames. Connection is uh, extra smooth and extra solid. Gotta, gotta, um, everything's working beautifully. I also tried to do something else. Um, you guys let me know if the stream maybe is coming across a little bit clearer than usual. The re biggest reason I asked that is because I did, behind the scenes, change the actual canvas of OBS to more of a 4K quality. So what you're getting is 4K essentially being downscaled to 1080p um, when you go live. So by, by premise, hopefully that should present you guys some better looking quality at 1080p. Uh, again, nothing. it's nothing major, nothing, oh, whatever the case, obscure or whatever. Um, but I did want to see if that made any of a difference. From what I can tell, um, looks like it's fine. I can't really see any of a difference though because i am streaming at the same time so it's only going to show me so much um weird i can't take i can't the quality that i see on my end is may not be exactly what you guys get on your end uh but yeah let me know if everything's running smooth uh that would be greatly appreciated so we can adjust some things um hurts all says it's, it's a little sharper than previous hey i'll take it um again <laughs> let's give us a little bit a little bit more uh a little bit more space. He said most of the cameras. Maybe we're just looking, looking, looking a little bit more cuter today. I don't know. Make, my makeup's on point. Your makeup's on point. Bond did say he woke yeah. up early. He did about fifty push-ups. Uh, yeah. He got his face beat, and uh, he <laughs> hopped on the show. Man, he's ready to give it to you guys. You know, tried out a new foundation. You know, so. ooh, a new foundation. Yeah. New serum. <laughs> a serum. A hey, serum. Um. Also. Guys, is there anything specifically that you guys would like to get into today? Like, let us know in chat if there's anything different. Uh, if there was something that you maybe thought about overnight, you were like, man, I really want somebody to talk about these things, but I don't know if anybody really will. Uh, or maybe you're tired of hearing a certain, certain things uh, be talked about. Let us know what that is. I also changed some of the logos and stuff for living split screen to kind of to make it a little bit simpler okay. and to make it a little bit more at least on youtube a little bit more in depth i am going to add that to the actual when we uh, when we're live also just to see how that looks um but i'll do that in here in a second stop <laughs> stubby boy seems like i haven't seen you in a minute my guy how you feeling uh hopefully everything is well with you uh, i know you were uh recovering really well hopefully uh, you have been on the up and up as far as pace goes and uh we're feeling back to your normal self man i, I know you've I've uh, taken a little bit of a step back, um, but always good to see you, man. Um, hopefully you're all right. Stubsy. Stubsies. You know what I love about Stubbs is he's consistent. Right? He's yes. consistent with his opinion. Yes. Right. I always know what I'm going to get out of Stubbs. I've seen you on Twitter stirring the pot a little bit, Stubbs. Yes. I've I, I seen you out here, you know, obviously uh, doing your thing, man. So I always appreciate it. I mean, that's what it's about, right? I mean, I mean, again, that's why I at least – like to continue to operate on Twitter because people are kind of there's a lot of diverse people out there, you know, right? And people don't always have to agree, but at least we are coming together for a general purpose. And 
But you do find your, you know, you find your diamonds out there. You find your roses. Sometimes you pick, you know, get hit by the thorn a little bit. But that's uh, life, right? And everything's be all right. I think, I think I've met some good people thus far within my, what I would say, two years being in the in the community, whatever the case. So uh, I'm I'm forever grateful. Got my I got a brother from another here, and uh, you know a bunch of other people that I'm really grateful for. I'm podcasting again. I'm maybe even streaming, streaming more at some point again uh, with with the way i've been tearing it up at call of duty but watch i'm gonna start streaming and that's when it's all going to go to hell i mean that's how it usually fe feels for me but uh we'll see uh real quick shout out some people before we get live into the show because we got to give it to the uh you know to the audio listeners too right they got to listen uh we got to get it recorded and everything uh sappho real quick says if elon allows trump back into twitter i'm done with that platform <laughs> hey, look, Gotta I make feel those you. decisions. Gotta I, I those definitely decisions. feel you. Um, that won't be the move that does it for me. Again, I don't have to agree with all that man. So how that man lives, how he handles business, and everything else. Um, he's not gonna push me out of an entire space that's an open platform. Free speech, baby. Free speech. And yeah. I, I do think that that's an interesting conversation to have. Further, we get into the future because I, I've. There's so many, there's so many crazy places that free speech go where it's like I don't know if that should be a part of it. Like that's kind of hey, crazy. Well, yeah. like, gotta gotta let you gotta gotta let the chips fall and and then let the people decide what's what's good and what's not good. Uh, I do agree with that. I do I do agree with that. But again, I mean, power when you silence. You've also, so. but that's also kind of led to cancel culture too. Uh, that's kinda, what I'm saying. That's why you don't do the cancel culture. But that, but you let people talk about it. And the natural discourse will side one way or the other, right? That's how it works. That's how you gotta yeah. gotta let the gotta let the pros and the cons in, man. That's how yeah, it works. facts, facts. So, uh, all. real quick, Stubb says yes. Uh, he ended midweek. Well, shout out to that man. Um, definitely hope everything's doing going well for that. Um, and he's part of Stasis Chat now. E, shout out to that man. Awesome. Awesome. Appreciate it, subs. Appreciate you being in here, General Spartan Twenty Seven. Timmy, up in here. It's Timmy. Silence, Cipher. Good morning, brother. Great to see you in here as well. I uh, steal. You can still play trailers. Oh uh, yeah, I can play trailers okay. and everything. Good, 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 um, good. Uh, we get down to business. Let me have know. You. I gotta. I gotta show the audience that trailer that. I most stunning, visually stunning trailers. I oh, I know what you're talking about ever seen in my entire life just from a visual i have no idea what the game's gonna be outside of an rpg i have no idea what how it's gonna turn out i don't care visually it's one of the most stunning trailers i have ever yeah. seen so we gotta show that we're gonna have yeah, a good show it definitely is appealing hasn't sure. been a big news week but we're gonna get down to business uh we got we do have some things to talk about for sure um yeah like steel said he's been uh, getting sweaty in modern warfare too or is he uh, just playing the game? I was just playing the just game. Just playing the game, Steel. Steel's just I was just playing. playing I was just playing. Nothing special. I know. Well, we hope we hit 1K, brother. We hope we want to hit 1K. I, I hope so, man. Hey, again, if we hit 1K this year, I will be streaming Callista Protocol live. Um, Because other than that, I'm not buying that game day one. I'm not playing it day one. I'm not even going to look at any videos about it. Uh, Because so, I do want to... I mean, it, it, I already know the game looks good. What else do I need to know? Um, it's appealing. Well, you need to know a, it's banned in Japan. Well, the fact that it's banned in Japan and, the, and they stood on that game yeah. uh, lets me know that it's a fucking going to be a wild ride. So, yeah, uh, yeah it might be a little bit, eh, I'll, I'll play something else. Uh, but if you guys get us to 1K again, I will stream the entire game live. Whatever that playthrough ends up looking like, um, you guys will be 100% a part of that experience. And I think that will be a fun time. Uh, we won't rope pong into that. It'll just be me. But believe you me, guys, I think I might be right there where pong is at. And uh, if you guys get me live <laughs> doing playing this goddamn game, uh, yeah, y'all might have a y'all might be in for some laughs, man. That's going to be Super Chat Heaven. I tell you what. All right. Let's get live, ladies and gentlemen, so we can give it to our audio listeners. Also, greatly appreciate everybody that has been tuning in behind the scenes. And, you know, you're here with us while we're just chopping it up 15 minutes before we get into the show. And there's nothing but love and appreciation that I have for that 100%. Lady Foxfire came through, slipped through and said Lady good morning Foxfire, good to see you and then we had muppet stopping yo Muppet, ladies and gentlemen dreadful. you guys are so beautiful 
I Dreadpool. greatly appreciate you guys. Dreadpool. I hope you're getting ready for your new movie, man. Bread. With Wolverine. With Dread. Oh, with Wolverine? You're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, out. Let's go. Uh, Jaheed the Chosen One. What's going on, Jaheed? Said, I finally made it to a live stream. Hey. Appreciate you. For, uh, you. Appreciate you, you, Jaheed. Appreciate you. All right. So we're going to get this popping. Yeah, healthy discourse is fine. Violence is a huge no. And I think that's going to be a perfect way to end up doing that. I agree. Words can't be violence. Uh, Jacob Novick, again, he put out a good idea out there, Paul, and we'll, we'll kind of take it and we'll run with it at some point. This could be an interesting idea. He said, can't you two have an access to the behind the scenes before the stream? Jacob, uh, we could do that. I don't know if I'd want to do that for the people, right? Uh, I like live, giving the living split screen to everybody, not necessarily like kind of basing it off of that. I'd rather provide extra content if we were going to do that. Uh, so that's kind of my idea, Paul. What do you think? I mean, we think we should block off our 15 minutes no. for $2 a month. You could get into our 15 minute segment. We we started this because of Grub and Minotti yeah, uh, when thanks. they were doing their show. Shout out to those two and uh, how they kind of just started up the show like prior to got the technical stuff going and all that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't agree with paywall and part of it. Yeah. Um, you know, if we eventually get to the point where we hit Mission 1K and we start doing and I can get my side of things with technical stuff. That's the main focus right now. And, that is the main focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll work I, on some stuff like that. We'll give some maybe extra videos, uh, you know, behind the scenes. Or, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, if anything, if anything, and again, I know this is going to be for, if you're joining us live, you're getting some extra juicy stuff right now. If anything, and Palm Bind doesn't even know this, but if anything behind the scenes, like what I want to happen is get everything straight with what you got going on. So anything like if you guys end up wanting to support us or whatever the case, Palm, me, whatever, I, I want to put that towards what we have going on for the channel so we can provide better content to you guys, um, help the technical situations behind the scenes, hardware situations behind the scenes. Uh, I think that would definitely uh, help us in the yeah. long run. That's the oh, plan. Yeah. But uh, either way, that's that's we got to get there first. Uh, we'll talk about those things as we again, me and Paul don't mind being up front. So uh, and Lady Fox, I we do have COD. Uh, I got COD. Paul got COD. We all got COD, I think. And I'm having yes. a fantastic time with yes. it. We're going to actually talk about that during the show. So, yeah, I'm going to say we, stubs. So. Short answer. Yes. And we're going to talk about it. <laughs> oh. All right. Three, two, one. Snap, ladies and gentlemen, it's episode 78. Good morning. How are y'all feeling this fantastic Saturday, October 29th? We getting spooky before Halloween. Everything is feeling really nice. And uh, I got to let you know, I am one of your hosts of Living Split Screen, Steel Rain Eye. Steel Rain Eye, the T is a seven everywhere. And man, do we have some things to get into today. Um xbox is profitable who would have ever known right uh there has been a lot of speculation out there but we were able to get some confirmation um out this week right um phil hey it's profitable game pass is doing what it needs to do whether it's only profitable by a dollar or um a hundred numbers still we gotta see real numbers now yeah now we need to see official numbers and again oh who cares nobody's in these people's official pockets so oh uh, we, we how about you get in those official pockets go be there butler or something if you really want to know that bad um again i i think it's a, i think it's a good conversation to still have though because again it's just sparking up more conversation i think phil's got a butler uh i don't think i don't think i don't think he's that petty i, I don't think he's that petty i don't think he's he wants to be he's not that bougie yeah Come on. he's not at that level he, he's showing it up right I don't think that's the that's exactly what we want right there. I don't think so either. I don't even think Sati has got a. Uh, nah, I well, I don't know. He might. He might. 
he has some so? he has somebody that at least washes his clothes. He he, he definitely does. Uh, at yeah, least, you're right. at you're least. Right. You're right. Somebody you takes his don't. clothes to the to the laundromat. I'm telling to the cleaners, they getting depressed. I'm telling you, man. Um, but <laughs> neither here or there. Uh, the other thing too, man, Gotham Knights is probably and ended up being a solid game. Man, what happened with that? Call of Duty is getting a lot of flack too. Uh, there's a lot of up and down feelings about Call of Duty. I, I want to get into it because I do agree with some of it, but I also I'm going to I am going to stand on the fence and stay like I'm going to be part of the crowd that's going to tell you to get good this mm. year. This year in Call mm. of Duty. I'm just going to tell you to get good and appreciate the game for what it is. Um, no, it's not 2009. Um, it's not the OG Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Um, by far, the story is not the same and it doesn't feel the same and it doesn't play the same. And that definitely gives you some. Uh, it gives you some nuance there, right? But with everything considered, um, I believe overall, like it's the hmm. same way that I look at Halo. Um, just because it's Halo's on a specific platform doesn't mean I can't look at COD the same way this year um, because they hit it. As far as campaign and then rolling also into multiplayer coming off the beta, I think we have a fully complete experience, right? This is guys, this is what you guys wanted out of Battlefield. Call of Duty gave you it. And no, it's not. I know you're comparing it to older games. Completely fine. But it's 2022 ladies and gentlemen you can't lie to yourself and say the game didn't look beautiful didn't run beautifully while you were playing the story um didn't that you didn't get an overall good experience and i think that's going to be something else interesting to get into uh because a lot of people are like oh god god people are just excited because it's xbox now um but yeah it's a little bit of that um and there's some other little things that we'll get into here but pong man i gotta introduce my brother from another, the uncanny gentleman himself, the guy who is not Cyclops. Thank God. In the X Men. Thank God. My brother, Pong. So, how are you feeling, man? What's going on? I'm feeling good, Steel. I went to bed early last night. I crashed out. It has been mm -hmm. a long, long week. Uh, I know everybody comes in here and hears me talk about my week, but man, real life is kicking my butt right now. Uh, work is getting. Ooh, yeah. Dang it, it's getting busy. Um, yeah, which is a good thing potentially. So, uh, but overall, excuse me. Um, we are having still some nice days at the end of October, way up here in the Midwest, which is crazy. It's supposed to hit seventy today. Uh, so enjoying the weather, but uh, gaming wise, steel life is freaking good, brother. Life yeah. is freaking good. Got into some Persona Five last Sunday uh, while I was in the middle of doing. You've been other playing it stuff. off and on. I got uh, last Sunday night. I got a block of time because I, that game needs a block of time. I can't right. sit and play Persona for an, for a half hour, hour, and turn it off. I can't. I can't do it. Um, so I got a block a block of time there. Um, and then uh, this week, uh, obviously, it was lead up to Modern Warfare Two. Right. Uh, so I was uh, knocking out the campaign uh, an hour at a time uh, when I got home from work at night before I hit the hay. Um, knocked out the campaign. Uh, again, discourse is there. People want to compare it to Modern Warfare 2019. That's cool. Uh, you can compare it. Listen. I feel like I the fact that you completed it, though, Pong, and, like, yeah. wanted to finish yes. it, I think yes. speaks volumes in itself. Oh, My it fault. does. And you know what? It's already ahead of the curve, Steel, because guess what? The install, I only had to install it once and everything worked. It's beautiful. It's already yeah, ahead yeah, of previous yeah. Call of Duty. It's true. It's true. <laughs> so, uh, no, but I enjoyed the hell out of the campaign. The campaign, again, I don't look for Call of Duty to be some groundbreaking right. type game like at all. I want to sit down and enjoy myself. And I know I don't play it on Veteran or, or Harden anymore. I don't. I used to. I used to. Uh, that used to be the thing. For me now, I just want to cruise through the campaign, have a good time. It's a 90s action flick to me. Characters are freaking written really well, acted extremely well. The cut scenes, again, I've been talking about this since I first saw it. But the cutscenes and and the 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 uh, character models are freaking ridiculously good, and I was so invested. I don't care if it's tropey, the the story to me was entertaining, and that's all I wanted. Now, did I have some problems with a level here and a level there? Yeah, yeah, I did, I did, I did. I, there's some critique there. They they made some choices that I wouldn't have made, 
I personally like the crafting levels. I know everybody's heard about it. I'm not going to spoil yeah, anything. Yeah, it's not. There's, there's mm, levels with crafting. I like that they tried something new. I like that they went a different route. And for me, it was interesting and it changed things up. Some yeah. people didn't like it because it changed the pacing. I understand that. I feel like but it put you me, in the moment, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And there was some anticlimactic stuff. Too. Yes, on uh, 100%. That I, was so, like, I was like, mm, oh, wow. Mm, okay. I was on the ride. And yeah. 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 what happened <laughs> right but then there was some absolutely brilliant levels right, and right. the gunplay throughout awesome amazing stuff and again the graphics we talked about at steel my god I yeah mean, this game is gorgeous it look good. uh in most areas it is absolutely freaking gorgeous so yeah i had a great time with the campaign and then of course we hopped into multiplayer on thursday night together yes. yeah, i know you were playing in new zealand uh, yes. during the day no <laughs> issues and, uh, by the way yeah yeah which was infinity ward gave out a warning you might see some issues uh but you 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 you've obviously hopped in a lot more than me but we did yes. play uh we had connection issues um, yes which major. Again, yeah again open, first day open, uh, i'd like to say in 2022 these guys got to figure it uh, out activision but we saw what happened with overwatch uh which was even worse uh people not able to get in at least we were able to get in right even if we did get disconnection issues after every match being partied up that was not good, uh, but it is what it is. I've played Call of Duty since the beginning. Right. So therefore, um, when online became a thing and it used to be a holiday for everybody and you jump into Call of Duty, I know what servers are like. We used to get a ton of lag, at least during the matches. No lag. I, I think I had lag one time, like a little blip of it. Right. Otherwise, it was smooth playing. This feels like old call of duty yeah i know some people don't like that because there's a lot of people who like the fast 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 pace run and gun rambo nah so i still do that it's but i like down. this one it's slowed down you can play slower actually you should play slower a little bit here but man it's playing well um i'm excited this is the golden age we are back infinity war is setting the bar here um so much to play right now still again plague's tale is just sitting there that i started that i haven't even touched got scorn that i'm deep into that i haven't gone back to again this is what we can expect from here on out folks it's going to be non if you play a diverse amount of games if you don't play a diverse amount of games you're cool you're still set but you're going to get through these games i'm not i'm 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 my again i don't have a backlog i got a library and i go to the library and check out different games here and there just like i check out books here and there that's how it's going to be from here on out because 2023, let me tell you. Yeah, it's going to be even worse. Free is it, No, it's crazy. I was yeah, in DMs with Mav the other day listing off games, and I'm only yeah, a one me. console owner. I can't imagine owning all consoles and PC, right? I, I can't. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like. Uh, but then we were talking about it last night on uh, Xbox Ultimate as well. We ended the show, and more pe you know, people were bringing up more games that were coming out. I was like, uh, and it's only the first half. We don't even know what the second half looks like right now. So uh, great time to be a gamer. Chat, you're all looking amazing and beautiful. Uh, thank you all for joining us. But uh, Steel, I know you've been down and dirty with Gotham Knights. A yeah, lot, man. Obviously, and Call yeah. of Duty now. But uh, Gotham Knights, yeah, you want to uh, talk about that? I don't know if you want to get into it now. If you want to do Yeah, I'm gonna go, I'll am gonna. i go ahead and get into it now. And then we'll get into upcoming games and everything. Yeah. Um, just so I can get it out of the way. Because it doesn't need to be. Um, I know you haven't had a chance to play it. I know it's something more so you're going to look forward down the road yeah, um, yeah. because you're not simply into these. But what I wanted to say about Gotham Knights, and again, you guys can see some of the gameplay in the background for the audio listeners. You guys got to come check us out um, because, again, I do bring you live gameplay from my week in gaming uh, on a week to week basis just because I, I just want good representation in gaming. And I feel like this is one of my ways to bring it to you guys. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Gotham Knights. Last weekend um, on the episode, I don't know if you guys checked that out. Hopefully you did. But Paul kind of drew, he kind of pulled me off the ledge a little bit because I was about to um, stand out on the mountaintops and make my stake my flag and, you know, maybe build my little hut or maybe just build the cave, start building into the mountain um, and really solidifying my place in it because Gotham Knights. And I'm not, I'm, if you call it a hot take, you can call it whatever you want. Gotham Knights has seemingly redefined what superhero games should be, to me, at least. The depth in this game, I don't, I don't think people were expecting. And I think that's part of the problem. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily what I, if I should put that on WB Montreal, um, because they have been marketing this game. 
One thing though, is that they didn't market this game properly for what it truly is. This game is a looter RPG action adventure game that is based off of Batman. Oh, or the Batman family, I should say. Because one of the things that people were always worried about is how, how do you make a Batman game and take Batman out of it, right? How is that going to hit for anybody? Nobody doesn't care about any of these other characters. They care about Batman. But up front, even in the marketing, they tell you that Batman's dead. So you go into this experience and you first 15 minutes of the game, which is why I was originally saying that within the first hour of the game, you cannot say that this game is trash or you cannot say that this game isn't for you. If you say that within the first hour of this game, I cannot take your opinion seriously as a gamer on why you even bought the game in the first place. I can't. Because in the first hour you say, oh, this isn't for me, that means you had no interest in it once or, once or ever. You didn't. If you got the game for free and saying it's not for you, okay, I can, I can see that. Sure. Because that people get games for free all the time and complain about what they get. For, people get stuff for free and complain. That's just the way of the world. To me, even with, because the other thing too, as I'm approaching the end of the game, more videos are starting to come out about it. The game actually influences you to want to go through another playthrough. And mind you, I've only went through the game with Batgirl mainly. I just started playing with other characters just because, because yes, unfortunately, I do have to unlock my traversal mechanics with the different characters. And that is annoying. That is a design choice that I don't get. Um, and why you set it up that way is it wasn't the best experience. I would have rather you had it set up to where I got that through my training module at the Belfry at my home base instead of you making me go out and fight people for it. At the same time, though, I understand why they did it, because it forced you to experience, okay, what does the bat cycle feel like going through the city? Okay, what do I, me grappling through the city feel like? And then when you get your traversal, it feels special. Now you go through the city and you use your, abil your traversal ability and it's like, wow, I'm Batgirl and I'm gliding through the city. Yeah, I should have had this already, but you appreciate it more for what it is. And now, boom, I'm gliding everywhere. And it works so well together. WB Montreal put a really good game together here that has a lot of potential that has me very afraid about them potentially getting the long-term support for this game. Because obviously there was a live service bone. There's a live service backbone on this game with the crafting because it's the game is so much it's there's you get your right you get different outfits or whatever and you craft the crafting does seem kind of pointless at a certain point right because you're only doing it to get better gear but as you get to as you approach the end of the game as you um get over level 30 you start finding gear that has more mod slots has different tributes to it uh that allow you to change your play style up in such a way to where, hey, if, for example, the Pong did jump on and he's, he notices, he's like, yo, I could do an ice build, I could do a fire build, I could do a poison build, I could do a bleed build. Uh, I have other, all these different ways and all the characters play so differently from one another that there's never going to be a situation, especially when they do this four player mode, if they end up doing it right and it ends up being, a, being something that plays really well. They have something here that could really blow up as far as co-op experiences go and superhero games go. Um, because this has, it almost feels like it has a pointless co-op aspect to it, but the fact that it is drop in, drop out kind of co-op, and I take that back, I think it's more so you, they have to jump in while you're at your home base. Cause that's the only time that I ever noticed that randoms would jump in. Cause I never had anybody like that. I know have jumped in. Cause I do have the game on PC. Uh, so that's one of those other things, but the main reason why I kind of wanted to stay on the square with this, because to me, this is another one of those games. And again, yes, we can look at things through tinted, tinted glasses. I'm not saying that this is the greatest game. This is not mass effect. I'm not saying that it's not. And it's not, oh, this is the next-gen experience that everybody needs to be looking for. No. But as far as superhero games go, 
or hero type games go, these action adventure style games, your Spider-Mans, your Wolverines that are coming out, your Deadpools that could uh, that have games that have been made, uh, your Punisher games that have you've seen being made, in that type of ilk, I think this game is the top is is the top tier of this echelon. I almost because especially off of, after just playing Spider Man on PC again, and getting that full experience. I think Arkham Knights is a better overall experience compared comparatively. Personally, Spider-Man is a good game, but a lot of the things that people complain about in this game, in this game is a lot of the things I see in Spider-Man, especially in 2018. You cannot tell me that that city felt lived in in 2018. It didn't. It felt dry. It was it was so, it was sold short. Now on PC, when I can, I have the performance to get more people on the screen. Yeah, the game does feel more alive than I remember on Spider-Man. But Spider-Man feels more of that Ubisoft formula than Arkham Knights does. Arkham Knights, it's like every night I feel like there's pressure uh, because other thing too, if you die while you're out on the night, you lose some resources. Not like... Uh, not like it's a crap ton or whatever the case, but it's enough to make it feel impactful to you. So you're like, oh man, okay, well, let me make sure I do these moves differently. Let me make sure I lose my abilities. Make sure, let me make sure that I am using timing and I am really learning how to play this game because it's going to alter my, my experience in the long run. Again, this isn't gonna be a game that's for everybody, but I did wanna kind of sit on this ledge and say, man, I do think coming from WB Montreal going from Arkham Origins, a game that was very slept on and people said didn't really line up with the original Arkham trilogy to them now going into Gotham Knights and them seemingly having issues getting to this point. This was their final like, oh, man, well, we don't have any other thing. We can't we don't have any more time. This is what we have. I think they put out a really good product. And to me personally, I think it's an eight out of ten. I would recommend it to anybody who likes these style of games, even if you just like action RPG games, uh, you like a good story. No, it's not, there's, you can't make any choices, but there is so much diversity that you do not see in these types of games and it's done really well. Um, I don't want to short sight that for anybody. So that's my thoughts on it. Um, I'm going to stay on that square. It, the game is a, 10 times better than anybody else um, who downplayed it, tried to make it seem. So again, that's just for me. Anything else you kind of want to tie, tie in on the back end of that? Oh, I saw you over there rubbing your hands and whatnot. No, no, no. Uh, your camera's shaking a lot too, brother. So I don't know. Uh, if you oh, my fault. Maybe I was just getting excited. And, uh, you probably were getting excited. It seems like when you're touching it, it's really moving today. Just to let you know. Um, yeah. You might give some people. Some. Um, listen. Yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I don't have, again, I haven't played the game. Um, you know, I, I'll just repeat. Oh, I won't. I won't repeat because as as more people have played this game, like you, like yeah. Mav, people that I know very well, on top of just strangers and seeing some of the some of the talk around Twitter about this game, you know, the unfortunate part is still I think that from everything I'm hearing, WB Montreal had something at the core that could have been on another level. It has the building blocks there, the base. To have been yeah. an actual superhero RPG, which yeah. we don't get a lot of, right? And I yeah. think that a looter RPG is perfect for the superhero genre. Now, yeah. we saw it with Crystal Dynamics. Like you said, Steel, I've heard plenty of people now to probably believe it, that there this was supposed to be like a game, a games as a service, yeah. much like Avengers was with Crystal Dynamics. And we know how that turned out for various reasons as well. But this game... I think had the, the the base to be something special and it's unfortunate that everything was going down at WB discovery that probably led to this game coming out as a mix mash of different iterations that they tried. And we've heard that this game started out as something completely different. They've been working on this game, not this specific version of the game, but they had started iterating on this 
game that now turned into Gotham Knights almost seven years ago, right? This has been in the works, like WB Montreal, and eventually it got to the point now, especially with WB discovering where they're sitting at and all that turmoil, that they had to put the game out. They didn't have any more time, and it's too bad that we've got an IP here that while a lot of people like yourself, Mav, and, and others are enjoying it, and saying, hey, this is a boom. Shout out to Boom, too. Boom jumped in and is going the hell out of it, too. Enjoying it. It could have been so much more had they been given the time and resources to finish their original vision once they found that vision. Because, again, it started out as something different than what it wound up as. But it's just too bad. Because as me, as not a superhero big nerd anymore as somebody who doesn't care about superhero games as much as others right. do nowadays, this still had a lot of appeal to me as I watched it, as they showed it off more. And I think that they did do a disservice, probably because they didn't have the time. But I wish they would have done some more dev, dev diaries, dev right. docs, like we see with Midnight Suns and Fur Axis showing yeah. off the gameplay giving people a better idea of what this game is all about. Because I do think you're right, Steel. As much as they talked about it, and, and, and I, I don't put this on the devs, um, they should, had they been able to show off all the stuff that you were just talking about, all the nuance to this game, all the RPG aspects to it, all the looter aspects stuff. to it, had they been able to show that off more, I think people would have had a better idea what this game was about. And I think it would have had more, it could have survived that, that initial hate train about the 60 frames more. And that part I do put on the devs. Obviously, I've talked about that. They should have, <clears throat> excuse me, they should have been extremely clear and transparent with um, where this game was going to land performance-wise. Um, yes, and it, had I they agree. done that a month in advance and let everybody know, they would have gotten through that storm. And had they continued to show the game and say, hey, this is our vision. This is what you can come to expect. This is not your standard Arkham game. This is an RPG. This is what we wound up with. We think right. we're going to give you something different as far as the combat goes. It's not going to be the Arkham dance anymore, but we think we found something here that is actually might have more appeal to people. That's the that key. It's not, it's not going to be this rhythm button game like the Arkham dance is, which I know a lot of people love, including myself, but hey, we are showing you something different, and we think that you're going to find out as you grow these characters that you're going to actually like this combat system because it gives you some more flexibility. It gives you uh, some more diverse combat situations. The characters are all different from each other. They yeah. all, you know, all of that stuff. Had they been able to show that off, I think this might have had a different effect on the conversation. Like that. Yeah. You know, I had said that I didn't know it was going to be interesting to see if this thing's got legs um, down the road, you know, because we know games like Saints Row, uh, who had its own kind of discourse and, and trouble around it, um, don't, didn't have any legs. Um, right. Even though some people, you know, were doing the same thing. They were on Twitter. They were out here going, hey, this game isn't as bad as everybody's saying. I'm really enjoying myself. Really fun. Well, it died really quick and the talk right. died. I think Gotham Knights actually might have some more longevity might actually pick up more fans as it goes down the road. Now, we heard that they came out and said that they are going to come out with a patch soon. However, it's not going to be the 60 frame. Um, I know some people were jumping on it and saying, oh, maybe we are getting the No, this no. is to stabilize the 30 frames. Not yet. Because, yeah, no. This is to stabilize the 30 frames because that is another, you know, again – it's awful that they couldn't even stabilize point. the 30 frames. <laughs> yeah, like it's like I know it's in some areas it's really good. Uh, interior, I think it's really good. In the city, it's not so good. Is that right, yeah. Steel? Yeah, no, it's yeah, 100% yeah. accurate. 100% and that's accurate. for consoles more so than PC's got its own issues. But no, you know, it's like, exactly the same. Yeah, is it? Okay. Yeah, right. it's exactly the same. It's exact. That's why people, um, Digital Foundry put out a video about uh, the PC issues that could possibly be causing a reason uh, for okay. console issues also. And it's it's yeah. it's optimization, man. Yeah, it's lacking. And I think they need it. I I think as we get into the holiday season, um, I'm sure we'll be seeing some Black Friday deals on this game. Um, I think it could pick up some more fans, uh, superhero fans. From what I'm hearing, if you are a superhero fan, if you like Gotham, and you like that setting, yes, um, that this is a game you're going to appreciate and you're going to like, uh, as long as you give it the time to get into it. The traversal is not going to be fun up front. But as you open up the traversal, it's going to be good. 
Uh, you know, again, the characters aren't going to feel as good as they feel once you hit the higher levels. And as long as you are into that RPG looter aspect, you're That's going the... to love this game. That's what I've heard. Yeah. I've heard most people agree, Steel. For for the majority of people, though, this is not a full price game. Right. This is, no, this is and that's on the sale, and that's yeah. all mainly because it's mainly because of the issues that it's presented been, been presented forth, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the only reason. So, but like I said, I got more interested as they showed it off. This would be a game. I don't know when, but down the road, when it's on sale constantly, and when it's yes. one of those games that's popping up in my store, I, I, I I'm probably going to jump into it. But see, in the RPG aspect really appeals and that's why i was saying hopefully wb doesn't get flooded or get or get told hey you guys need to stop making this game we don't have enough time you look no i hope they continue to get support for it because further down the road again this could be another game a year down the road they can have so much content for it where anybody that's new jumping in yeah you have a hundred hours worth of content that you jump right. into and me i mean i'm in my first playthrough and some people were like oh it takes eight hours again this is another another game where people are like oh it takes takes so long this takes this time to beat the game and i'm i'm over 40 hours into my first playthrough still so right. but again that's not i don't just try to speed line my game so i mean right, i guess right, that right, right. that might be the other thing too i try to get that full experience in um but i'm not necessarily a completionist either so i guess take that for what you will uh, but yeah, that, that's just kind of my two cents on Gotham Knights. I just want to get the people more of a, I don't know, not necessarily biased opinion, but a stern opinion, a uh, heartfelt opinion, a one that I always kind of strive for when, especially when I'm talking to people where it's just like, hey, I don't want you guys to be necessarily apologetic for what your opinion is or how you feel. Uh, I want you guys to have your opinion. I want us to be able to have these conversations because if there wasn't a varying side or if people didn't feel different ways about this particular game, for an example, or other games, doesn't matter what it is, we wouldn't be able to have this conversation right now. And I can kind of talk about it and express what I do like uh, because the biggest turnoff to me is the performance. It is when I'm going through the city and I, when I have the hardware, I'm struggling to get 60 frames consistent, consistently. Um, I have to cap it off and I'm still not getting that. And it's still fluctuating down to about 27 frames um, in some instances. Yeah, it's very jarring. But at the same time, I think it speaks to if you make a good game, what did Strauss say? What, 20 years of growth? Oh, if you make a if you, if we make a good game, they will come. That's what it's all about. That that's that's that and I think this is the perfect example. If you make a yep. good game, they will come. Uh but hopefully WB can continue to support this. Um and we'll see how it goes. Again, DC the other thing too is that DC has been struggling since Marvel has kind of came to the forefront and been mm -hmm. the representative for what that genre should be. So anytime that we do get good games or good aspects of that, especially as someone who's not a DC fan, um, I think we've hit a good mark, but nothing either here or there. I think that's enough of that. Um, any Fox. last words? Fox at Burger. Good to see you, brother. Great hey. to see you. That's hey, Fox. and you know what? I know everybody should play Age 4, right? Everybody should play Age yeah. 4. It's coming to console next year, brother. I will yeah. be honest. I told you my computer situation does not allow me to play Age right now, no matter what. So, but next year, oh, oh, and it starts with Age 2 Definitive Edition. Uh. And you know, you know I'm going to be rocking that and hopefully we can convince Steel to pop that in. Oh my PS God. I'm... Again. Oh, bro, you know the team ups are going to be amazing, brother. Come on. It's the, team be ups fun. Are, the team ups are probably going to be amazing. Yeah. Uh, you guys might get me to, you guys oh, might get me to jump in and, and play some. We get like four. Uh, if anything, four. four. Oh, if anything, it'll be good to kind of reminisce on age yeah. two because I've spent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in age two back in the day. There <laughs> like, we go. Very ridiculous. We go. Um, come on, come on, come on. Part of the reason Give why me. I don't want to play RTSs now because they're fucking time sinks. Um, I, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, brother. Hey, before, hey, RTSs are the worst games for gaming because it's, it was one of those to where, like, let's say you woke up at nine o'clock, you jump on. Before you know it, it's bedtime. Yeah. It, it's, it's 100%. Because yeah. a game could be. 15 minutes 
And then another game could be three hours. Yep. <laughs> oh, I had them on Halo Wars 2. Let me tell you, Halo Wars 2, I had my matches like that, bro. And, and the whole time, you're just like, oh, I'm going to win. I'm, I'm, I'm defending. Oh, yeah. You're, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to make it. it. It's just funny. It's a good time, though. Um, shout out to everybody that key, continues that RTS train. Uh, I, I just I can't. I can't. Uh, but you'll yes, either here there. You'll be back. You'll be back. We'll but no, I, I think a great conversation on Gotham Knights. Um, I, I love the, you know, again, that's why we're here, Steele. Everybody, everybody has different experiences, and it's always good when a game that is deserving, at least to a certain portion of the audience, to be played, um, and maybe they've been hearing all of the negativity and have held off. It's good to hear the people come out, not fake capping for something, right. but honestly playing the game like you have enjoying it and being able to give a deep dive on why maybe somebody on the fence should jump into it. Um, and I think that's a big part of what we do here. Um, and um, I, again, for anybody out there, as far as my warfare two goes, listen, if you've been off the call of duty train, buy you've been on the fence buy with it. this one, buy, buy this, buy, buy this game. There is so much content. And again, Bro, we're it. not getting another call of duty next year. So they are going to support this game. Yeah. They're already talking about it. Listen, if you've been off and you you hated the last couple of Call of Duties because of the style, this goes back, harkens back to closer to the older style yeah. Call of Duties. And the maps, I'm telling you, I have not played a bad map yet. I have not played a bad map yet from Infinity War. Every map is playing different. Every map has quality, but the gunplay in this game is so freaking good. It's unbelievable. This really does bring back those old Call of Duty feels. Yeah. So go try it, go play it. Um, Steel and I will both, uh, you know, vouch for this game. Uh, yeah, uh, Mass. Look again. Value is going to be the eye of the beholder. I don't think any game is necessarily worth seventy dollars because um, the the way they justify it doesn't make any sense. And I mean, people can say whatever they want. Oh, you're just going to have to accept it for what it is. I'm still going to say again. I think if if you're asking, is it worth full price? Yes, I think so. I mean, again, this is this was the one complaint that people were having about Game Pass. I mean, about Battlefield, right? Oh, it doesn't have campaign. We got the multiplayer. The multiplayer had a lot of problems. Call of Duty. We got the beta. Beta played played pretty good. Got the we got the campaign a week early. I played the entire campaign. You're getting a, you're getting about a six to eight hour experience. I played on hardened. The only my the my biggest gripe with the campaign is that the AI they talked about yeah. is not existent. Yeah. It's the same AI in all the <laughs> other games. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. Other than that, from start to finish, it's a thrilling experience. Um, multiplayer, I swore off a of Call of Duty multiplayer. The beta. Had me back, has me back very interested to the point that, yeah, this is the rotation now. Yeah. And it feels really good. And Again, it's got something for, like for everybody. It's yes. got something for everybody in the multi third person, third uh, person team ground D, war. Doesn't ground matter. war is better ground than war, it's yep. ever been. Spec ops, if you want to yep. team up, co op. With another, co -op I deleted aspect. it, but whatever. Yeah, co op. Yeah, but whatever, <laughs> co op's there. I'm just saying it's got something for everybody. Like the the amount of content that they already have in this game, and yeah. this is just the beginning, is if, it's on another level for a multiplayer. If this game isn't worth seventy dollars, then I don't know what other game is worth seventy dollars. I, I mean, I don't know. At, at this point, this is literally I, again, this was their end all to be all, and you can tell. Yes, L all you of can Activision literally tell. Worked on this, all of yeah, that, you could tell. It, it it feels good. The third person again for them to have made the change from the third person. Just that small thing is the one thing that I kind of complained about. From in third per in the third person mode where you're aiming when it's all third person, unless you use a bigger a zoom scope like a four times, four times and above. Yep, it makes so much of a bigger difference. There's so much of a small thing that little things like that you can tell that this game meant something to them. Hey. This is the game they need to give themselves a break. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what this is. And I can feel it, at least to me. Um, now, it's it's one thing to play off of nostalgia, right? It's another thing to actually hit it and bring you a better experience. I personally think. Again, 
My biggest gripe with multiplayer right now is the same issue that I have with a lot of other multiplayer games. It spawns. I, yeah. I don't know when we're ever going to get spawns right. I, I don't know. But, but either here or there, I, th I do think it's worth the full thing. That's just me. Yep, absolutely, 100%. All right, Seal, so should we get into uh, the upcoming games? Let's the get it, list. man. The yeah. Short list. This Which is why I wanted list. to kind of dive in a little bit deeper. Yeah, 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 yeah. For so. sure. For sure. We got time. We got time, and we don't have a huge amount of news. Oh, and so by the way, you and I, you know, what? Oh, oh. Hopefully, you sweet people are enjoying Bayonetta 3. If you guys have played it, oh. let me know how you guys are feeling about it. I'm seeing some good things. Um, <laughs> I've been debating on getting it on Switch so I can, like, lay in bed sometimes and just play it. Um, <laughs> Because I haven't turned on my I haven't turned on my switch in a while, man. Uh, to be honest with you, RC has kind of let me down because uh, I thought there was going to be a better experience. Come to find out, uh, RC was just a test bed so they can make sure that their game they're releasing at the end of this year is actually going to do well. So, hey, f me, right? Uh, the one time I just say, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go full in, and they kind of just bite me on it. Uh, but again, is, we'll is see. Lay, is laying in bed with the pause screen on Bayonetta really playing those? <laughs> I don't, you know what's, you know what's funny? That's you, Paul. I don't pause the screen. What are you, what are you saying, Steel? Yeah, That's you, man. Am you're I projecting? The, yes, you're definitely projecting. You're projecting your DOA beach volleyball <laughs> directly onto me right now. Uh, Bayonetta is looking good, though. I am jealous. One of the ones. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, a, again, I, I, I would love to see it on current hardware what, it, what the possibilities would be uh but again i people are saying it's put together really well but it's having performance issues also so oh well, even on shocking. the switch you uh, mean on switch yeah weird. yeah uh and lady fox says she's playing cob with a friend she met four years ago hey that's a lit and that's uh awesome. anybody that's playing cob man if you decided you jumped in add me i still rain i at season seven um if i got space let's link up and let's run it man uh i'm not one of these guys that i'm not going to sit here and get heated and and cry if we lose i mean of course i want to win my goal is to always win but like pong says and that's not fun it's like i know it's funny but i'm 100 percent serious i just played a, i'm just playing the game man. like we're just, game. we're just having a good time as long as you're not like purposely trying to make us lose uh, I, i'm good <laughs> <laughs> i don't know um, man I've running out with the bomb in the middle of the open space oh uh, since yeah. since cod 2007 now oh, that's a buddy right wow, there. That's lady. a freaking friend that's, right there. That's freaking amazing. That's awesome. That's freaking amazing. That's oh, badass. hey, real quick too, before we move on, um, I started playing uh indie scene. I can't skip the indie, indie scene. scene, and I forgot. Um, Signalis came out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Signalis came about out. It. Listen, 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 listen. Just real quick, because I tell me a little bit about I, it, man. I got in like forty-five. Okay, minutes, okay, okay. Maybe so. I just, I just barely got into it the other night before Call of Duty launched. Um. Because I didn't go to New Zealand because I only had a couple hours. So, yeah, but no, I did you... jump into Signalis. Uh, this is from Humble. Um, this is part of the Humble bundle that uh, Xbox has. So it's in Game Pass. Listen, if you're looking for the old Resident Evil feel of a game, okay, because that's what it is, uh, top down for the most part. There's some interesting things that they do during the game where you go to a first person view and kind of stuff. But for the most part, the game is is that top down full body view. Um, that you've got that off-center um, Resident Evil kind of view. Um, if you're looking for that type of game, this is a game for you, that old-school horror. Inventory management, you've only got six slots of inventory. you got to inventory manage. Again, classic Resident Evil, but set in a futuristic anime-style setting. This game is for you. Um, it's not going to be for everybody, but this game is going to be for you. Go try Signalis. It is the uh, aesthetic is absolutely perfectly done. The atmosphere is freaking very well done so far. I'm loving everybody, uh, everything about it. Again, you like going and grabbing key cards to get to the next area, go find a key cards, all that kind of stuff. This is the game for you. Go try Signalis. I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, what I played, the short bit of it that I've played. Again, look at Steel's got it up on the screen right now. Um, I again, it's just such a unique blend it is. of old. Every time I see it, anime style. Yes. Every time I see it, I'm like, that game looks fucking interesting. I, I yes. like the style and uh, I yes. like what it's trying to put down. Um, I'm just, I'm not yeah. with that horse. I I know I know, but there's really this is not even again. Steel, oh, it's not like it's that. Not, okay. not like that so far. Yeah, 
you know, I've, I've read the reviews and watched people play it. And there is parts where you got to decide whether or not you're going to stand in battle, but your ammo is low, just like resident evils. Or you got to oh, run, God. you got to run, you got to run. So, but uh, so far so good. Love and Signalis. So I just wanted to put that out there. Go check it out on game pass. Uh, if you are lucky enough to have game pass. So, um, let's hop into this next game. Uh, next week's gaming. Let's do this. Let's of course, do it. Coming from GameInformer.com. Uh, again, short list. If we miss anything, chat that you remember is coming out next week, uh, please Listen throw up. it up there. Uh, let us know. Um, but we're going to start off. It is going to be, obviously, uh, the week of October the 31st. So we start on Halloween, but there's nothing dropping Halloween. So we're going to hop right in here. Uh, November 3rd. We've got Endling. Extinction is forever. This is a game that showed up on uh, last gen hardware back in July. It is now getting a current gen patch for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series consoles. This is obviously an indie title. Uh, it is about a family of foxes. It's going to be one of those side scrolling kind of adventure games. Um, so go check out Endling. Extinction is forever coming for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series. Again, it was out uh, previously on current, uh, last gen hardware. Um, and then we've got How to Say Goodbye from Switch P for Switch PC, Mac, iOS, and Android. I always like when I get to say Mac. Like, you don't get to Mac. say Mac, Mac yeah. very often. Uh, so, How to Say Goodbye, again, puzzle game indie. Um, go check it out. Um, and then we've got one that we did see at one of the shows. I can't ever remember because we have so many damn shows in a year now. Uh, but the chant is coming out, and this is going to be a supernatural style uh, action game. Um, very interesting color palette that they chose yeah. to use. Uh, I do remember seeing this one. Um, and this is coming to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and PC. So this is a current gen only type game. Uh, indie game coming from a Brass Token, published by Prime Matter. Prime Matter does publish a lot of different stuff too. Obviously a very mature game, horror, supernatural style game. Go check out The Champ. That is also coming out November 3rd. And then we got the Entropy Center coming to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC on awesome. November the third uh so we are definitely uh indie uh heavy this week so this is going to be developed by stubby games stubs is that you did you, did you start developing games and we don't know about it you made stubby. a studio that's why you stopped doing podcasts you made a studio <laughs> exactly. oh stubby, stubby games published by playstack ltd limited of course uh it is a puzzle game uh and that is coming out november the third as well looks uh, kind of sci-fi puzzle game which yeah is pretty cool uh, and then we've got, hey, for you racing fans who might be bored with everything, but you're into rally racing, WRC Generations Ooh, coming to yeah. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, PlayStation 4, Xbox Dang. One, yeah. and PC, WRC. Um, and this is uh, developed by KT Racing and published by Nacon. So, uh, hey, again, rally racers, got another game coming. And that, I think this is the last WRC game, too kt racing hey, yeah prob probably yeah, is this is I, I believe this is the last one they're going to make um but uh go check that out that's november the third then we've got demon throttle coming to switch Ooh. demon throttle what is this one? Oh, well this looks kind of cool hey it's an action game you're throttling oh, devolver demons. it's by published by devolver oh then you already know it's oh it you already know it's gonna be hot so you better go check out De uh demon throttle if you got a switch because that's the only place it's coming to one or two players so uh, looking pretty damn cool there. So get on that. And then we've got the big one. And Steel, we're probably going to talk about this a little bit later uh, with Square Enix coming up this week and saying they need to get a bigger global it's market. So like, like, uh, okay. Listen, <laughs> all these decisions were made years ago right. for the games that we're currently getting from Square Enix. But this goes back to the problem. Harvest Stella is looking fantastic. This is a town sim slash RPG. So okay. This is one of those, you know, farming sims, t town sim games, but it's got this huge RPG attached to it as well. And you go out and you go dungeons and fight monsters, collect loot, all that good stuff. Harvestella looks fantastic. And the fact that it's only coming to Switch and PC is part of Square Enix. Okay? This, is, this is, again, this should be on everything, but it's not. So you're limiting your audience. And again, we'll get into the Square Enix stuff a little bit later. 
I uh, got a lot to talk about it, but I know people. Shout out to Lady. She's been waiting on Harvestella. There's going to be a bunch of people jumping into this. This is one of those games, since it's not everywhere, and it's on the Switch, that I'm like, damn, I wish I had a Switch, because I'd really like to try this game. Uh, so Harvestella, Square Enix, uh, November 4th, looking great. If you got a PC, man, go check this out, or a Switch. Um, and they got a big game, uh, game of the year, um, coming to Switch finally. Don't know how it's going to do there with their online, but you know, people who are primarily Switch players, they've got it figured out. So I imagine this is going to do very well. And I, and you know, I never played it. I had so many friends in this community yeah. play this game together, especially over on the fun speculation side. That whole fam played it. I think I'm the only one who didn't play it over on the fun. Yeah, you didn't play it either. That's right, Steel. So Steel and I are the only two that didn't play this game, I think, on the fun speculation side. Uh, but It Takes Two is coming to Switch. Uh, good on them. Uh, again, what I watched, even though it wasn't for me, great game, polished game. Uh, everybody loved it. It was, again, game of the year winner. Um, so go check out It Takes Two uh, on Switch November 4th. I hope it continues to do well. And Steel, that's all I got for this week. Hey, heavy, well. Heavy indies, heavy indies this week. I mean, well, it's uh, that was your this week in gaming, ladies and gentlemen. Then, I mean, there doesn't always have to be a whole lot. I mean, but there was still a slew of games there uh, that were to be presented. And the week right after that is going to be a very interesting week uh, because uh, we got some heavy hitters and in even a blue ball of magic that uh, seems to be showing up on the scene. So, again, uh, we're two weeks out and uh, from Sonic overshadowing God of War. <laughs> okay everborn nope. oh, oh okay, okay everborn okay. jeez no nah, you know I, I you know i gotta stay on that mound too man I know you do. um I know you do. but i got a looking good uh hopefully that continues to do well also again I, i'm expecting about a uh, i don't really care about metal but you know yeah. it's always interesting to talk about the numbers and what they could get because uh, i mean uh, the consumers do look at god it. Um, I'm gonna do sonic oh no i'll okay. do god first i'll do god first yeah. uh got a war i think it's going to get a 92 um and then sonic is probably going to get an 89 i am going to say a 94 for god of war mm. um, okay okay I, I actually think it could even push further uh from the initial uh previews that people have been giving it but i'm going to say 94 94 okay 94 Strong. Um, and then uh sonic i think I don't think it's gonna get that high for me. Mm. I, I I think it's gonna I think it's gonna hit in the eighty eighty four or eighty six. Uh, I think I think we go eighty six. Eighty six. Eighty six. Not 86. bad. No, but it's I think still it's not gonna bad. be no no not for a Sonic game. No, not for a Sonic game. But I think this game now that they've shown how deep it is. Yeah, um, they showed a lot. The only problem is there's going to be those reviewers who want the old classic Sonic that can't get over the fact that it is not the old classic Sonic, um, that it is going to play different, that now you have Sonic doing combos, that Sonic now has skills, now, you know, all this kind of stuff. The RPG some Sonic people who love it. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be some people who love it, right. love it, and there's going to be others who say, oh, I want my old Sonic back. This is not an open world. This doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. So I think we fall in that 84 to 86. I'll give it an 86 just out of nostalgia factor because I want Sonic to do, do right. well and I want Sega to do really well. So, yeah, I'll, that's what I'll say. Hey, nice, nice. Chad, let us know what you think, um, what you might be oh, looking Stubbs. for. Thank you, Stubbs, for being you. Sonic in the He 70s. said in the 70s. <laughs> Lord. Which is still a good game. Which is still a good. Game. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's still good. Again, uh, I I think that's probably going to be right right around the range. There it is. Go uh, go said eighty five ninety one. Sonic's eighty five. God of War ninety one. I, I think that's a fair place. Again, we'll see. <laughs> There's a lot of hype that can, that can go into the Sonic. I know it's going to pull pull a lot of traction is attraction in because of the movies and everything so it has a little bit more going for it than it typically would uh which is perfect again um i remind you guys that my daughter asked me for sonic 3 every day i, I mean I, I don't i don't know when she doesn't she's like hey uh, when's that movie coming out that's supposed to have shadow in it i was like when's, when's the next sonic movie is it coming out next weekend I'm like no <laughs> they're still making it <laughs> yeah he says 89 for god of war and 82 for sonic it's not bad it's not bad oh, um either, either either way uh stuff's the saying the 70s in general no I, I get what you're saying 70s yeah. uh i mean yeah, 70s, I, are good games. 70s is still it's not still not bad again uh, gotham's a freaking 70 game uh, apparently or 69 whatever it is on meta um so i mean 
again, it's not a, it's not a number that you go to live by, but it is a number that consumers do look at uh, when they are considering purchases and everything. Because again, I mean, it's not like Game Pass is in everybody's house, so there are other metrics that people have to use. But again, uh, I think those are solid scores for those games. I think the biggest point for me bringing that up, um, even talking about scores, is I think towards the end of the year we do have a good variety of games uh, no matter what type of gamer that you are uh, where you have something that you could jump into right uh nobody's I've, it feels like nobody's getting left out right whether you're sonic like sonic and god of war are so much are two different completely ends of the spectrum where you're like yeah they may be action adventure games but they're so god of war is more over the shoulder sonic's more pull back fast and it's just so different from each other that either way i think you'll you'll have something that's uh gonna be a good play uh fastback says uh i ain't score a game i have not played we shall see hey i, I feel that man i again i like to give game scores from what i can see up front and then when i if i play it scores never will determine whether i want to play a game or not it's always going to be my own interest right right uh jaheed says i just want starfield to be honest and man oh, hey hey again from when the things that i've seen from it so do i uh again i'm gonna stick i'm gonna continue to stick to three three twenty three uh for starfield God, I hope you're right. God, I hope you're right. I heard yeah. I heard Rand and Jez talking about it. Rand, uh, I mean, Jez doesn't even think that it's going to come out. So he doesn't think it's going to come out to the end of the year. Yeah, I, I really Rand. Rand sees it being pushed too. I really hope that's not that's not the case. I say Memorial not like weekend. it matters. But again, you showed it in your twelve months. I mean, I guess it was still put in your twelve twelve months. You put it in June or whatever. But memorial if you, weekend you put it toward if you put it towards the end of the year that's putting it outside of 12 months so then it's like now you're going to start that conversation of lying again so it was just like okay why if, you if it needs it they will push it yeah if they're in a spot this where is definitely really, one of those facts. they will push this game has got to be facts everything <laughs> like yeah. this is like this is the boat right here man this is what big reason not not close to being you know 90 percent of why they purchased zenimax or anything but this is there's a big reason starfield is a big part of that and because it is the next great game from bethesda and todd howard i think he has um, a and, point and sony point. was trying to lock it down sony was trying to lock it down for i mean yeah that too but i, I think yeah. i think this game too todd probably feels like he has a point to prove <laughs> to people um, because the, his studio has gotten a lot of flack. Um, and Bethesda are looked at again. They don't. You think he's not familiar with the name Bug Fesda? You think that he, that he he necessarily likes that as a designer or as somebody that makes games? I'm pretty sure as somebody uh, as a game maker, you don't like bugs being in the game. Yeah, you got to live with it and you got to hey, it is what it is. You know what you're doing, what you're creating, but you know he wants to give you a full experience exactly. So he's this gonna baby it. This is one of his, this is probably his, uh, this is his magna opus, right? Yeah. This is his dream that he's had since he started, before he started developing. He just talked about that in the last interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know, with the games that influenced it, and he picked out a couple really old games, one of them being Traveler, which was pen and paper, style RPG that he started, that's how he started programming. He wanted to make a Traveler game uh, on the PC, and that's when he started programming, right? And And so... So this is this really is the crowning achievement for Todd, and I right. think that again, if it needs more time, they will give it more time. I'm just really hoping that this year that they gave them, at, you know, or however much time it winds up being, um, up to 12 months is enough for him and his to get it together to where oh, he so. says yes, yes, this is this is my vision, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Like I said, Memorial Weekend would be absolutely fantastic. I know a lot of people go out of town for Memorial Weekend. But a lot of people stay home, and my God, if I can get an extra day without having to use vacation, I'm all about it. Give it to me. Yeah, now nah, that weekend. Nah, that would definitely be dope as hell. That would be dope as hell to end, to end up making that happen. And again, we'll see. Uh, I'm not going to hold my breath for it. And again, it's not like it's a huge deal, but uh, either way, uh, I think it's going to be a good time. So, uh, Well, Pong, with that, where do you want to go first, my young gentleman? Uh, many different places we can take it. Many different places we can go. Uh, many different interesting avenues are at our disposal, young man. Yes, yeah, sir. Let's, um, I just posted the, things. uh, I just posted the, uh, Square Enix comment in there. Let's talk about the Square Enix stuff since we were real quick. Let's get this out of the park. Um, okay. Line it up. Out of the way. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I got you. I'll, I got you. 
I got Wait. you. Okay. All right. I got you. Uh, I was just adjusting, uh, adjusting some things on the screen. I'll adjust it here in a second. Um. All right. So, Square Enix. Uh, let me actually put this. Let me see if I can put this, guys. Uh, because I think I don't want to do do it right here. And then, but yeah. And then we're gonna pull this up. Make it smaller. Eh, oh, too big, too too big. Oh God. Okay. Uh, one more time. Do we can scroll back? No, scroll, scroll. Okay. Anyway, um, achieving major growth in the gaming industry is difficult now for companies that completely, primarily in the Japanese market, given its growing demographics. As such, it is critical for our business that we produce hit titles that speak to the global market, which offers greater scales in terms of both customers and sales volume. Well, Square Enix, what happened to your Western division? Do you have any answers for that? No? Oh, okay. Then we'll continue. Furthermore, game development efforts are becoming more sizable and sophisticated as a result of technological advancements in the devices on which they are played, such as consoles or smart devices. Welcome to 2022, Square. Hey, Square Enix. Square, Square woke up and realized it's not 1999 anymore. Crazy. What year are we living in? Oh, okay. Um, the investment required to develop game titles is therefore an order of magnitude greater than in the past. Again, I'll ask the question, didn't you get rid of your Western division? Why'd you do that? If you, if you needed, you're trying to appeal to more people. Ah, in other words, the Japanese market is no longer sufficient for achieving a level of earnings that enables us to recoup our development investment and generate a profit. And we therefore need to approach our development efforts based on the assumption that we have to succeed in the global market. Let me make this bigger for you guys. <clears throat> sincerely, yes. sincerely Square Enix. Square Enix, yeah. Um, <laughs> am I missing something? Can somebody tell me if you're maybe I'm missing something because they did recently. In case you guys don't know, um, I got I still do have it up on the screen for you guys. They got rid of Crystal Dynamics and who else was under their belt? Idos, Idos Montreal, the makers of Guardians of the Galaxy, that actually was kind of like a sleeper hit, but you want to expand. You're saying that the Japanese market is no longer sufficient, but not that long ago, you pu also put out words saying you wanted to focus on the Japanese market, on your Japanese gamers, on your Eastern gamers. I thought, the, I thought these people, I thought these companies look out years ahead of time. Well, supposed to. You're supposed to be ahead of the curve. I mean, that's how you do business. Is, to be is Square Enix lost in the sauce? Is, is Square Enix like, are they flailing? Like, what is going on with Square Enix at this point that it seems like they're lost? Like, they're, they're like Hansel and Gretel without the breadcrumbs. Mm hmm. They are. They're lost in the woods still. Oh, they're I mean, lost in the woods. The only, thing missing, the only thing missing from this statement right here, uh, this page that you've got up, yeah. is a for sale sign like a for sale stamp on it. yeah yeah that's the way this, it comes this, across this, this, comes this across. is this is an appeal for a acquisition or a merger in my opinion this is an appeal this is a cry for help from square enix and this is because of their decisions for decades now this is this goes all the way back to even close to their prime time when they made the decision to not move forward with the rest of the industry, to not view the industry as a, and again, this is all my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, know. that's all it is. But, but we can see this stuff. Again, just as much as we saw what was going to happen with Crystal Dynamics and IDEOS Montreal, just as much as we saw before they came out, before we heard from Crystal Dynamics and people at IDEOS about the relationship that they had with Square, we were sitting on this show and many, many others still talking about why is it that every time a Western division, one of their Western division studios put out a game, it's never enough? Because you guys are using them. You wanted to, you only reason why you got them is you wanted to get a couple studios that had that global appeal 
that you thought you could hit the Western markets with that you could use as a cash cow to go ahead and supply your Eastern side of development with the cash flow to continue to do what you did, which was not expand out into the Western market. And again, Final Fantasy is one of the biggest global names in video games. Okay. Final Fantasy is a global brand. Yep. A global IP. Definitely is. However, however, Square never viewed it that way overall. Square viewed it as, hey, our Eastern, our Eastern consumers love it. Our Western consumers, yeah, we got some popular. We sell, we sell some over here, but our Eastern consumers love it. And we're going to focus on them primarily. Yep. That's what we're going to continue to do. And we want to continue to go with the old business model. We've seen this a lot, Steel. We've seen this a lot. It's very it's been a transition period for a lot of developers, a lot of publishers to figure out that we those old business models don't work. Square wanted to continue with that. They just got lucky with Final Fantasy 14 having a comeback and becoming a printing press for money for them, even though they've ignored a platform that would help it even greater. They've just decided, hey, this is going to print money. But that's what they wanted out of Crystal Dynamics and Eidos. And it didn't work out that way. Why? Because they forced Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal to do things that weren't necessarily in their forte. Now, Eidos Montreal actually did work it out with Guardians of the Galaxy. However, the marketing was so bad from Square Enix that it hurt that game. That game was marketed so terribly. And that's on the publisher, Square Enix, for marketing it in a terrible light. But it wound up catching fire, but it could have been so much more. It could have been bigger for them. But then they forced Crystal Dynamics to do a Games of the Service Marvel's Avengers game that Crystal Dynamics had no business doing. That was their it wasn't first their style one of game. ever. That's not their style. It obviously showed. It flopped. They, okay. Yeah, it's there's people that love it. It did well for what it wrong. was, but yeah. but not as good as what Square wanted no. it to do or needed it to do. Okay. So here we are now. And their decisions to not grow, to not nurture, and you hear me say this all the time, you have to nurture fan bases around the world when it comes to um, certain genres. Okay, We've seen right. that with the horror genre now coming back. You've nurtured that. We saw that with what From Software and Bandai Namco did with the Souls genre. They nurtured that fan base. And now you got one of the biggest hits all time, one of the biggest phenomenons all time, obviously, and Square just ignored all of that. Sega moved to a global brand. Sega moved their games to a more, um, they nurtured their audiences with Yakuza. They put yeah. it on everything. They threw it into Game Pass. They got Now all of a sudden they got people clamoring. Yakuza Like a Dragon is a freaking hit. And now yeah. they're talking about how happy they are that they didn't think Like a Dragon was going to be a hit. All of a sudden here it is and it's a hit and it's a JRPG style game but that's because they nurtured that business now atlas part of sega but persona right what are they doing now they've seen that persona has now grown but hey it can only grow so far so what do you do you bring it over to xbox now you're growing a whole new fan base you're nurturing a new fan base this is what you got to do and there's certain companies capcom moved to a western style uh publishing and developing style a long time ago, and we've seen the resurgence with them. Resident Evil, biggest one of the biggest global IPs out there. But what did they do? They didn't make it a strictly Eastern flavor. They globalized it. And what happened now, you got Capcom back on top. Square ignored all this and continued about their business as they've always done it, cutting deals with Sony and others um, to make these games exclusive. Um, sure, you can say, well, Square did put the Final Fantasies on Game Pass. A lot of the Final Fantasies showed up on Game Pass. A lot of the Final Fantasies were available on Xbox, but nobody bought them. But you want to know one of the biggest things that nobody ever thinks about when it comes to this? You've got to have consistency, Steel. If people are going to invest their time and their energy into a gaming franchise like Final Fantasy, they have to know that the next game is going to be there. Right now... That ain't happening. If you invest your time into a, if you're an Xbox only console player like me currently, and you invest into the Final Fantasy franchise, you don't know when the next one's going to come. If it's ever going to come, we still don't have remake here. So this inconsistency, this randomness of throwing certain games over here, you put Octopath Traveler into Game Pass, 
You talk about how many people discovered Octopath Traveler, which is a freaking, again, a niche genre, a turn-based, strat, more strategy-style RPG. You put Octopath Traveler in there, you say, hey, we got, oh, man, we got a lot of people discovering Octopath Traveler, but now you announce Octopath Traveler 2, and it's nowhere to be found on Xbox. Yeah. What was the point? What was the point? If you're not going to build your fan base, what's the point of all this? So again, I think this is a cry for help from Square Enix. This is, hey, we can't figure this out, and now we're in the position where we are limited resources-wise. We are risk-adverse. That's another problem with Square Enix. They are highly risk-adverse. They don't believe in taking chances a lot of the time. And so that puts you in this position now where you've painted yourself into this corner. And you're limited resources wise of what you can do and maybe right now because of the financial situation you can't risk the development onto an unknown platform like xbox of whether or not that game's going to hit you can't take certain games and put it everywhere because all of a sudden it's not it could be a downfall it could be a big hit to where you're currently at and now you've sold off your western divisions you finally gave up on them and you sold them for a pittance yeah to embrace like a group absolutely you sold them undervalued to embrace her. Like you didn't care. Right. Like you just wanted right. to cut you wanted to cut bait and run. That's all you wanted to do. All these decisions lead up to this point where we get this statement. Now, this statement, again, in my opinion, is a cry for help. It's a for sale sign on the front lawn of Square Enix saying, somebody, please, somebody, come start bidding with us, on us, and please, somebody save us from what we've done. And I, and I think obviously Square Enix, you know, again, love Square Enix. I, I, I criticize them for all the decisions they made because this is what I saw coming. This is where they're going to wind up as. But I love Square Enix. I love their IP. They have a catalog of IP, a catalog of beloved franchises, even if they are not 20 million sellers. Right. They've got worldwide appeal and, and brand recognition. And they do need somebody to come in and save them. Now, we had an interesting conversation with Hargeet Chani last night on Xbox Ultimate. Um, Hargeet comes from a different perspective, um, but I love his perspective. Um, you know, he is still in the camp that Xbox is the perfect fit for Square Enix. Now, I've stated in the past, I don't believe it is. I believe, that obviously, that they could really do good things underneath Xbox, given, you know, creative freedom, not having to worry about money, all that kind of stuff. I think they certainly could, but I don't think their management style mixes well with Phil and the rest of the team. I yeah. think it would be, it wouldn't be, it would be, it'd be a long process to kind of get them integrated into what the Xbox philosophy is and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I just, some it just other. doesn't make sense. Like, it doesn't, doesn't make sense at all. And not, not like, especially when you use it as comparison to like Sega, where that would make so much more business sense and give them the actual foothold that they're yep. looking for in that market, right? You yep. automatically get one of the bigger buildings in that area, right? So, yeah, yeah. I, again, I, it, that just makes more sense to me. And like, and like Hargi brought up, he made good points that it fills a very specific need for Xbox right. that all of the Square Enix games would then be in Game Pass. They don't have to make them exclusive. They could treat the Final Fantasies like they are with, you know, uh, Minecraft and, mm -hmm. and supposedly Call of Duty, that they continue to publish them everywhere, that in fact that they expand and that every title goes everywhere to Switch, to Sony, to Xbox, to PC, right. and that could actually, you know, be an extreme value to them. And the one thing that not a lot of people are aware of, which Hargeet brought up and I didn't realize, I knew that it was there, but I didn't realize how big it was, was that... Square Enix is the biggest mobile publisher in the East. They are the, they, they are the biggest mobile publisher. They have a gigantic catalog of published games mobile-wise in the East that never see the Western side of things. And obviously, we know Xbox is going for the mobile market. That's a huge push right now. So they would fill a need there as well. So I do like his thinking, but obviously, a Sony acquisition or a Nintendo acquisition make a lot more sense to me from a managerial side of things, from a standpoint of being in the East and knowing that market, I think it does make more sense. Yeah. Um, I also think that a merger with another Eastern company, whether it's a Capcom, whether it's a Bandai Namco, a merger of Square or an acquisition, outright acquisition 
from one of those companies that are already in the East that are doing well, that are on the uptick, would also benefit Square Enix. So, um, you know, again, it's sad to see Square Enix in the spot. They have way too much IP. They have way too big an IP to be in this spot. But this is, again, goes back to the, the decision making for me. Um, all through these decades that have led up to this point where they're at, where they are very in a very tight spot still, um, and they don't know how to get out. They're kind of locked in a box, and they don't see a way out of it. Um, and that, that to me is sad for some company like Square Enix, because they had the potential to be a Capcom, the potential to be an up-and-coming Bandai Namco, right. to be bigger than both of them. Honestly, with the IP that they hold, yeah. they could have been, but they just made decisions based upon old business models they didn't have the foresight to see where the industry was going and now here we are so i don't know if you got anything more to add to that steel um not I mean not in particular i mean again it just shows it's just kind of, kind of continuously exposing square that they're not necessarily comfortable in this space currently um and that they are still trying to figure things out and maybe they didn't have the foresight uh that maybe some others had uh as they move forward in Again, I mean, yeah, the Western Division, you could say, wasn't profitable for you or whatever the case. But at the same point, you can't turn around and say, oh, we got rid of that so we can fund um, so we can fund this and then turn around and now say that, oh, we have to look uh, other places to kind of expand ourselves and open the market up for us. And, and it's like, well, you just went against yourself, though, and it's not really good as far as marketing um, or to your consumer when some of that information has gotten out now again us being more the enthusiasts we have our hand on the pulse so maybe it's only us that are really going to have that conversation and the normal people are like ah whatever i mean they either going to make put games over here or they're not and maybe they'll never consider it so it's maybe i i don't know but i don't really have much much else to necessarily touch yeah. on with square enix though yeah, no. Seems that, like that, par that, for the course cool. at least unfortunately. It, it is. Like I said, it's just sad and again if it's just crazy to me to think about Square Enix in this spot. Like I said, yeah. I never would have guessed that Square Enix out of all the companies would be here in the spot with the IP they have, but like I said, again, I made mention of it when we were talking about the games next week. Harvest Stella should be everywhere. Harvest Stella is a brand it it, it it's an IP that has potential to be big because of the combination of two styles now again i'm not talking last of us type or halo type yeah, global appeal, doesn't have to but but it doesn't have to be it does not have to be and again the other one that i bring up is you give you give this brand new ip to xbox um oh god the name just blew out of my mind the latest strategy tactical game that came out and didn't get good reviews but it was a brand new ip and you put that on Xbox, but then you are going to bring out Tactics Ogre, which is, again, in a niche genre already, but it is one of the goats Octopath? of that. Uh, no, not Octopath. It's um, the one that just came out this year. God, it just came out. Of my, I was hyped about it, played the demo, and, and still liked it, but again, budget-wise, I couldn't buy it. But it was, uh, God damn it, well, I can't think of the name. No, of either it. way, we'll come, we'll come Anyways, it doesn't matter. But, but Tactics Ogre, one of the goats of Tactics games, you're remaking that game but you're going to limit where it's going. Like deal feel? Yeah, deal feel chronicle. Thank you. Uh, em Emerson yeah. shot Emerson for hitting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. My old brain doesn't work all the time. But deal feel, yeah. Brand new IP, niche genre, and you give that to an, a, a fan base you haven't cultivated yet. You give that over there and expect something to happen with it, but then you have one of the goats and tactics ogre that you're remaking that actually has name recognition for the very small audience that may be out there. And you're not going to put that on Xbox. Like this doesn't, this doesn't jive, man. This is, again, I don't have to be in the games industry or, or be running a million billion dollar company to understand that that doesn't make any sense from a business right. standpoint. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't. So it's just all that stuff. But again, square, something's going to happen with square. They are ramp. They, they, they cut bait with Crystal Dynamics and Eidos um, to slim down. They are getting ready for an acquisition or a merger of some kind here. Um, obviously, everybody's guessing it's Sony. Um, it's because of the relationship with Sony. I still think Nintendo could swoop in at the last minute. That's an old relationship. They have a great relationship. Right. It would make a lot of sense for Nintendo uh, to have the Final Fantasies on their platform win the new uh switch launches which we know is coming within the next year or two um so 
uh, it would make a lot of sense for Nintendo to swoop in and pick up this. It's going to be a great value, whoever gets them. They are going to be undervalued even in this seller's market right now. Yeah. Even during acquisition season, Square is undervalued because they haven't utilized their IP to its full extent yet. And I think that that is going to show itself, whoever gets them. Um, somebody's going to get a great investment here, for sure. Yeah, 100%. Uh, let's see. Where do we go from here? I think a good place would, would to go would be uh, something a little bit more exciting. Um, Age of Empires 2 and Age 4 uh, being announced to come to consoles go, finally, Steve. right? Let's uh, go. Now, me as someone who isn't the RTS aficionado that I once was anymore, um, doesn't mean that I don't appreciate them for what they are. Um, I know what they bring. I know the biggest, my biggest issues with RTSs is, is I know the time sink that they are, and which is why I try to refuse and play them. Um, not necessarily because I don't enjoy them. I, I don't comparatively to other experiences. They're not, it's not up there like it once was, but when you put out games like, uh, what was the, what, what was the game? Um, and I think I still, um, was a riff breaker yeah if i'm not mistaken which uh, that came mix, out which was a mix genres. between uh that power type, defense rts yeah i had i had multiple things that were going on on uh, that again was the closest that i've gotten to it recently and i lost myself within that like i couldn't yeah. every time that i got home that's all i was thinking about but to see that RTSs um, are starting to come more and more to console, as I kind of think that they should. I know that you and Mav have kind of been on the forefront and saying, hey, just give us the option. And I do definitely agree with you guys. Um, but it definitely, uh, what it comes down to, to me, it's always going to be time for them. And whether they have the the manpower to get it done, and I think that's always been the biggest issue, right? Because at the end of the day, you do have to figure out how do you make an RTS work really well for console. And uh, there are games like, for example, Supreme Commander that have done it well, and there are other cons other RTS console games that have done really well um, figuring it out. But it doesn't mean that everyone is going to be able to nail it. Um, Halo Wars is another one that really nails it out of the park. So there are there are those examples for you. But again, when it comes down to manpower, money, time, the biggest thing that I that I have seen at least, it is not the main goal, right? It's something that they might be put on the board and said, hey, maybe it's an option later, or maybe there just wasn't a big enough of an audience clamoring for it where they're maybe now especially with architecture being a little bit closer together um mouse and keyboard support is kind of oh, ladies and gentlemen call of duty on consoles ask you if you're going to use mouse and keyboard or not mouse and keyboard or controller you have the option so obviously things are changing so it only makes sense that we especially now um that we at least give our gamers the option to play these games on console. Now, one of Palm's main sticking points, um, and I 100% agree with this, is that, hey, well, you don't have to make sure this supports controller uh, up front. If you, you could just release it, say, hey, I need a mouse and keyboard to play. Um, you can make it a big, again, pay, to bring up a title screen um, on the front of a game. I, I know I, I don't know game development, but I do have an idea of how coding works. And I have do, I do that on games on PC where I take away those first title screens I, and I replace them. I know that you could do something, just pop up something real quick. Hey, you need a mouse and keyboard to play this game. Um, don't expect to be using a controller, right? Just put it on the box. Or, or put it on the box, whatever the, yeah, whatever the, the, whatever the case is. The options, we've gotten to a point where the options should be at least available. Uh, but again, I think the other side of that spectrum too, though, is we need to continue to hone the dev talent and make sure that these studios uh, continue to flourish or continue to build up, or we won't get these types of games possibly, because Age 4 just came out last year, right? Yep. So a year later is coming to PC, which that's good timing right it's not like three years later four years later they they got on it and you can tell that this was part of their their roadmap right 
uh, to get to get it out to consoles, especially doing it within the year that they got it done. I know you're more so the one that is super hyped for this hmm. for RTS is coming to uh, coming to console, especially for Age Two and Age Four. Um, did you say Age of Mythology is coming too? Uh, well, they've announced it to, uh, for PC. They're remaking Age of Mythology as well. They're remaking um, it. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, so eventually that will come. Be, okay. And and Jez Jez said that he knows of another Age of Mythology project, which was not this. And okay. so he so there is another one in the works as well. Age of Mythology is going to come back. Um, and then they also announced Age uh, Four coming to mobile as well. Age yeah. I think the other thing about RTS is too because they have a, have lost their juice, for lack of a better way to put it, um, over the years, over the last decade, I would say, where they've kind of fallen off as far as like because you don't have you you don't really have your ones that are sticking out there. I mean, of Total course, you got age, you got to, sure you got Total War, but there's not like it's not how Warcraft or Starcraft or games of that elk used to be you know you know what i mean as far as when there were people fucking playing those games like well, there, people were really. talking about that consistently no, no, like no. I, I, that was that was like call of duty back then right um yeah. starcraft and, um, I, I for mean, pc I'll starcraft i'll give you starcraft starcraft was on a different the age age and total war have continued to flourish. we got a base for sure but and there's many others. I mean, there's yeah, so yeah. many. I'm yeah, yeah of course, there's other RTSs for sure. Yeah. I, I, my, I think the main thing that I'm just like saying is that it, if that it hasn't, it doesn't have the same spotlight that it once had before. It doesn't mean that it can't, but it could be yeah. partially because they aren't available on console, so it's not in front of everybody, right? And as cons and as PC games have kind of evolved, mm -hmm. like I've always stated. PC gamers have always wanted console games. And right. now that those console games are coming, yeah. you see what they're playing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so it's right. like, right, right, right. You, you see those eaves and flows coming. Um, and it just hasn't been a, 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 a true RTS. And again, there are the ones that we all know of, but to really kind of break out out of that mold. And I think bringing them to console will be the perfect way to do that. But again, mm -hmm. like, talk to us a little bit about how you're feeling about um, yeah. age coming. Uh, how excited you are and uh you pers you know finessing yeah. me to get into it 2023 just got bigger steel 2023 just got even bigger for me like you said these are time sync games you can talk to boxenberger boxenberger's at or yeah uh, he's, been know, he's got i think he's got like three four hundred hours already into age four on pc um it's one of his favorite games that he goes back to and again yeah, we're facts. talking about a niche genre and i understand that not everybody's going to be excited but listen steel the, the the BS excuses as to why not to bring them consoles, it's it's trash, man. Because the 360 had them for God's sakes, man. The 360 yeah. had a plethora, and I don't care. They were designed for it too, They're, though. Like no, they weren't. Command and Conquer was not designed. Oh no, that, for that was ported over. No, ported over. That, that was ported over. Lord of the Rings, uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, Battle for Middle Earth. That was ported over. Like. Again, yes, yeah, certain games. Halo Wars 2 was designed from the ground up. Supreme Commander was. Console. Supreme Commander. Those games were played beautifully too. From the Brian, yes. No, I mean, an RTS is you, Sappho. I don't want to. I don't want to sleep on that. But it's not yes. like how it was before, where it was just like you hear, like on the Call of Duty level, when you hear, when you see the tournaments and everything. That's how RTSs were before, right? I, I where it yeah, was just compared like, to fighting man. games. I, yeah. I compare it to fighting games, how the yeah, fighting perfect. game genre yeah, has, yeah. has dipped down. It's yeah. still there. That's a perfect it's example. Still huge, but perfect example. Hype wise, it's not the same as it used to be anymore. Yeah. But I, I listen, I'm tired of the people, and I saw this again when Age got announced. I, I saw the people in the comments on the live stream and in <laughs> can't play on a controller. Can't play on a controller. It's terrible on a controller. It sucks on a controller. Because the play listen, styles are different. I mean, you, but, it's different. but to say that is the same as saying his game is trash without ever playing it. Right. If you're a PC player right. and that's how you play your R RTSs, I understand. Of course, right. again, keyboard and mouse will always be superior in the fact that you can customize it, that you can do all the, you know, the different keys. Listen, I understand your perspective, but as a console only player, let me tell you something. RTSs can be played on console that is still very accessible through a controller if it is done correctly even 
again, you get used to it. And if you are constantly on a controller playing console games, RTS is no different. You get used to it. That's how it works. Now, am I going to say every single game that isn't built from the ground up for console that I can go up against a PC player? No. But Halo Wars 2, let me tell you something. After I put enough time into Halo Wars 2, there was very few moments that I ever had in Halo Wars 2 where I said, I lost to that guy because he was playing on PC. Right. There was very few moments that I had where I was like, yeah, that PC had a little advantage there. Yeah. Because you got used to it, but because it was built from the ground up. Now, right. I'm not even asking for that. I'm just asking, port it over. If I want to play against PC players, play give yeah. me the option. Otherwise, I'll play against the computer all day long, or I'll play against other console players. I don't have Never. an issue, even if the player base is small. Even if I'm waiting for me, I don't care. I don't care about that. Give me the option. RTSs have a place on console. And again, if I'm on board, Mav is against me in this. He says that there's no excuse of why you can't have consoles or controller support. I say it hey, is, even if there's a mass you, difference. <laughs> there is, but what I'm saying yeah. is even if you don't want to do that, bring it over, make a keyboard right. and mouse only, like you used to talk about steel. I've been on that train. Give me I will go out and buy it. And if if I'm one of 50,000 people that go buy it, so be it. Right. But again, now that the architecture is so similar to PC, the cost to port it over to it's the not consoles is nowhere near what it used to be. And for some, I understand it might not be, but other companies like Paradox have been doing it. Even last generation, they were one of the few companies still doing it. They do it even on these double A RTSs and strategy games that don't have even near the big appeal that Age does. So to see Age, to see World's Edge, and we kind of knew this was coming. Jez talked about a long time ago that he knew for a fact. Tim Dog, shout out to Tim Dog. He talked about it that they do have a internal philosophy now at Xbox that hey, our first party titles, even if they are PC, need to come to console. And if they're on console, they need to go to PC. And there is kind of this mandate now. That's why we saw Gears Tactics come over as one of the early games to uh, the current gen consoles. Because there is this mandate internally. Any first party title that's on PC should be on console and vice versa. And so now, I'm man. happy that this is happening. Now, now, th I'm happy this is happening. Age is one of the biggest RTSs going, has been for decades. It has continued to grow and flourish. Age 4 has come, you know, won over a lot of fans uh, like Boxenberger and others. Age 4 is an incredible. We were actually supposed to see it this year, we thought. Um, that didn't happen. But for them to announce it for 2023... For me, a lot of people are going to dismiss it. I don't care if it's already been out on PC. This is a fresh console, first party, triple A. And I'm going to say that. This is a triple, is triple A, a RTA. No, a. We have another triple A game coming from first party in 2023, which is huge. And then the cherry on top, the something that nobody was expecting, Age 2 Definitive Edition showing up on console as well. January, early to give us that taste, to get us back in the RTS mode. This is freaking awesome. This was Christmas for me. This was an awesome show to watch when I watched The Age. They, they are doing a lot of work to make this happen. They've already talked about, they've come up with a new resource system, resource AI system specifically for consoles to make it easier. Look, the big thing for me is, is that we've got to have companies willing to try to show other companies how it can be done and, and and i think that's the important key the golden age of gaming is here you hear me say that all the time we are now back to that 360 ps3 era where our companies are looking at these niche genres and saying we can do it we just got crusader kings earlier this year which i still play from time to time and i gotta get back into because again genghis genghis pong in full effect but crusader kings is a 4x strategy game that everybody said can't be done on console well guess what done guess what paradox figured it out they got it done it works awesome on console and it's opened up a new fan base over here on the console might not be the biggest fan base but we're already talking about niche titles so every extra 10 50 000 people that play this game is a bonus to that genre because it's not the biggest genre out there. But age it, is going to move. Age it has controller support people. though, right? <laughs> it has I can controller say support. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They figured it out. They figured it out. They got it to work on controller. It works right. really well. They redid their whole dial system, yep. the, the, the menu screens. Age is going to move people. It's not going to move the biggest amount of people, but it is going to move yeah. people. And now you've got it available. And everybody that jumps into Game Pass, everybody that jumps new into this ecosystem will see Age 4 sitting there and say, you know what? 
I've never played an RTS game, but Try. let me give this a go. Let me download and give this a go. Next thing you know, you got a new fan. Not for everybody, but you got a new fan somewhere. And that builds. And I think that's the important part. And like I said, it sets the foundation going forward that Microsoft is saying, hey, we want every type of genre on our consoles as well. And it opens up the door for other publishers, especially the ones they have relationships. What I want to see next is them to convince Sega to bring Total War. To figure it out and bring Total War. Because that would be huge. But the next big one, Steel, is if this AVK deal goes through. Yeah. And Phil gets up on stage at some point and says, guess what? Or whoever from Blizzard, whoever it's going to be. StarCraft. And they announce StarCraft coming back. People, and all of a sudden it's going to be made from the ground up for consoles, People are going to blow up. They're going to blow up. It's going to be gigantic. It's going to be gigantic. And if you've already laid the foundation with games like Age sitting there and all of a sudden you announce StarCraft and then people who may never have played an RTS before, but they saw Age sitting there, but then they know StarCraft because StarCraft was huge worldwide. StarCraft is so, literally the Call of Duty of RTS. Yes, it was at it, one point. It, it's it, still it, being played in Korea in tournaments, yeah. for God's sake. Yeah, Korea no, still- it, it, literally, it, literally, it literally is. So that's going to have a ripple effect. It's going to build, and as ripples spread out, if you get more ripples, they suddenly turn into waves, and all of a sudden, I'm not saying that RTS is going to be the biggest genre ever. They're never. No, I mean, I mean, it could be but, because I mean, Gasol was making some good points about the Eastern market being really yes, uh, more so yes. into the RTSs. Again, yes, if the age, if age gets really running really well, it, don't don't forget about the cloud accessibility. Right. If they get that working right. on mobile. And then everybody yep. in the East jumps on the age bandwagon and they're playing on their phones on the go. That's going to be the definition of insanity. That is what the, I think. And that is the play that I think Xbox is actually trying to make right. with this. I mean, yeah, you want to introduce more people to, uh, to age as one of your, it's your mainline RTS. It's that's in the Xbox home and grown. It's been there since the very beginning. It's one of Xbox, Microsoft, uh, honestly, first games, um, on, you know, on PC and whatnot. Um, they've been there since the very beginning. So I consider this, I consider age is first party. So it's like, yeah. um, being able to get that more so on an international level, especially in markets that have a better internet infrastructure than we do, is exactly that move because it's easily. I mean, of course, yeah, RTS is a time sinks, but that doesn't mean that between people's train rides home or whatever else the case may be, they may not want to play a match between the computer or whatever else the case may be. And it's just, uh, I, there's such a perfect real. opportunity. Let's be real here. Perfect Time sync games are everywhere. Oh yeah, you got no matter what you're playing. Thousands of hours. No matter what you're playing. Division. That's me. You yeah, got people yeah. putting thousands of hours into Madden. I do it in every UK. game if, if I Listen, could. Yeah. This is the like I said, as a grazer, my mind is blown next year because I've got Starfield, which is basically five games in one for me. That's how many hours. It's a lot. Into that yeah, game. it's a lot. We got Diablo Four coming next year, which that's is gonna be, that's gonna be time sync. That's gonna be. Freaking, that's that's going to be a huge t- time sink. And now you got age coming in, a huge time sink. I mean, we're talking about games that are in that Persona just dropped. That's over 100 plus hours. Like, listen, yeah. every game, now, a lot of games nowadays are time sinks. They're yeah. specifically made to be that way for the engagement just, level. That's the point. And if you can hook people on age, you can get the RTS movement on consoles going. That's exactly what you want. People are going to stay subscribed to Game Pass or Age of Empires to continue to play that and put hundreds of hours into it. And of course, I do have some other, you know, selfish reasons why I want the RTS uh, to come back because I enjoy them, but I want uh, Microsoft to make Halo Wars 3. I, I, again, Halo Wars 2 did, was not as successful as they had hoped, but for those of us that put time into Halo Wars 2, because it was built from the ground up for console, it was a special experience. Again, I'm not even a Halo big fan. You guys all know that casual Halo fan right. here. But the experience I had playing Halo Wars and specifically online. And again, you all know, I'm not even the biggest competitive dude. But when it comes to RTSs, if I can have a great experience with one, I do want to play online against other players. I enjoy that strategy, that chess. RTS is like a living chess game. It's so much fun. You get that strategy down, and I want Halo Wars 3 to come back. So I want Age to do very well so that Microsoft, once they get Infinite to a good spot and it's kicking off and money's flowing in on Halo, I want them to look back and say, we can do another Halo. 
we can do another Halo Wars. Let's do another Halo Wars. I want that to come back in the biggest way as well. And then, of course, the ABK deal, as I already said. StarCraft, my God, if they can bring that to console, it's going to be so cool. It's going to be so cool. So I'm excited, Steel. Sorry, I ramble on because I've been calling for RTS games to come back. We had a whole generation with very few RTS games after coming off a generation where we had a ton of RTS games. I want somebody to go out there and get that. Now that uh, Lord of the Rings IP is kind of out there again, go make me another battle for Middle Earth because Lord of the Rings is perfect for that. And we've talked, Mav and I have talked about this too. Microsoft at some point has so many IP you could have an RTS with all different factions from all yep. your different games and IP in there. Yep. Hell, you could make a Call of Duty RTS easily. It would be freaking amazing. It would be freaking amazing to have one. Uh, we want Command & Conquer to come back. We want EA to bring back Command & Conquer. They put out the remake, but they only put it on PC. It should have been on console as well. We want Command & Conquer to come back. Brothers in Arms should come back in a big way to console. Like, There's so many different games out there that deserve it. Um, so yeah, I'm selfish. I'm, I want RTS. That's all. This yeah. is a great week. No, this I definitely, I definitely, I definitely agree again. Um, it's, it's all about the potential, um, of having more people getting drawn in and that's another example of it. Uh, so hopefully people do take advantage and, um, do get extremely interested in getting ready for age. Game pass allows it to happen. Steel. It allows it to happen. You know, that is true. All right. So. I think this would be another perfect opportunity uh, to get into some numbers. I know people like to talk about numbers. Uh, and when I'm talking about numbers, uh, you guys got to know that I am talking about Game Pass being profitable. Man, we never thought it would see the day. Everybody said there's no way. Microsoft is gouging so much money. Uh, there's those dollar deals. Everybody's paying a dollar. Everybody's recouping. Mind you, I haven't, I won, don't use any of my um, rewards. Uh, the only time I get rewards is when I buy stuff. Um, two, I re-up my Game Pass every month. <laughs> and I never think about it. What, for a dollar? No. For uh, fourteen ninety nine. Oh, you're a sucker. Everybody gets it for a dollar. Oh, everybody? Oh, wow. Yeah, everybody. Wow. Everybody gets it for a dollar. Everybody, huh? <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe I am the sucker. I mean, for not for not trying to get it for a dollar, but I honestly don't care enough and don't have enough time to uh, figure out why I'm not getting my game pass for a dollar. Um, I don't mind it. Uh, the amount of value that I have gotten from it, the amount of games that have um, allowed me to jump in there, try them out, uh, in games that I thought were maybe not going to be things that I sunk a lot of time into. Like, again, Rift Breaker, a game that I mentioned earlier, that's not a game that I would have bought. Um, but it did come into Game Pass and I, on PC, and I did play it. And mind you, I put almost 200 hours in that game. Origami. You and I Origami, Origami. is another one. That's another game that we I wasn't planning to buy it, nope. but it was in nope. Game Pass. Me and Paul played it. We spent at least... 20 hours in that game at least and we beat it yeah, yeah we beat it and we beat it we saw beat the second one yet but it's either here or there they got a lot of content that's come to it and they're updating it consistently which and it's looking good so again but it's another one that's in game pass they're all options and i know a lot of people are going to say hey well there's nothing there for me and it's game pass fodder and xbox can't put out good games and we have a good good first party games in uh, x amount of time people will tell you the exact day date time and everything which i think is personally embarrassing uh because i don't care enough but to each their own about how bad xbox is but seemingly I don't know how they're doing this, Pong. Maybe you can let me know. Or maybe we've talked about it quite a few times here right on Living Split Screen. Or maybe Kay Asante and Everborn are talking about it on the Gaming Circle podcast. That Xbox has done this, made Game Pass profitable, profitable up to this point with no first-party games to speak for. Third party deals, second party games, and just putting content into Game Pass. And still, somehow, 
churning a profit. Whether that profit's a dollar, whether the profit's five dollars, I don't care. They said it is a profit, and that is something that people said it was impossible for it to be. So, I'm going to go over a few tweets here. One starting with Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella uh, reports strong performance for gaming of console. PC Game Pass subscriptions increased 159% year over year, and with cloud gaming, more than 20 million people have used the service to stream games to date. And again, sure, you can say, hey, some of these numbers are inflated. There's no way that that it could be those numbers. That's not necessarily accurate. And again, you can only go based off the information that we are being given. Um, and a lot of the information that you look up, whether it be on Google or anywhere else, follows that exact, that similar information, exact same. I also added, as we look towards the holidays, we offer the best value in gaming with Game Pass and Xbox Series S. Nearly half the Series S buyers are new to our ecosystem. Wow. When I saw this information, I'll be honest with you guys, I was quite quite dumbfounded because, no, you know, I don't necessarily think that Game Pass, I never had to feel like, oh, it's not profitable, can't, it's not making any money. Uh, I mean, I'm also not the guy who's sitting there looking at whether the games are profitable or not. I'm just looking for good games. And if people are providing me a quality product, unlike my ISP or other things that I'm not exactly happy with, if you provide me a good product, then you're going to find a customer to be there. What? Strauss was right. Wow. It's just a, <laughs> you, you make the product, they'll come, huh? That, that is such an interesting concept to come up with. And Xbox and Microsoft have hit the nail on the head with meeting a, how, how's the market go? Where there's, uh, where there's a demand, there's a need, there's a demand or something like that. I can't remember the exact saying. Uh, there's a want, there's a demand, or whatever the case. Um, either way, obviously, Microsoft has hit a chord and have hit a market of people that are willing to invest into an ecosystem, at least at the price point that they've put it at, along with the product or the service, I should more so say, uh, to complement it, uh, to give you more of that perceived value, right? To me, the biggest thing that Xbox Game Pass has for a lot of its users, and especially for me specifically, is that it does come across free. Whether I'm paying the $14.99 uh, $14 a month or it's a dollar, whatever it is for you, it's the perceived, I'm not paying anything extra. If I get three games this month, I, so I'm covered for six months, at least. If I play one game in Game Pass, I'm, I'm covered for at least three months. Within at least three months, there's going to be another game that comes out and I try in Game Pass. Within that time, <laughs> I am still subscribed and my subscription has not lapsed. Why? Because I have time investment into other games. Now I'm considering about buying these other games because that option has never been taken away from me. I have the option to still buy the game. I choose not to because it's available in a service and Xbox has provided it to me and made sure that the developers were gonna get taken care of on the back end to where me as the gamer or as the consumer, I don't have to think about it. You think that Xbox is, thinks that I'm thinking about what the consumer is thinking about? No, Xbox is like, what does the consumer want? They want games. They want a product they could sell, which is exactly what they're giving us. What's up, sugar? Uh, no, I have not fixed it. I will fix it in a second. Give me one moment. <laughs> but I got I to gotta swap screens over. Um, for whatever reason, my capture card, when I'm catching gameplay from the Xbox, it recently it started acting weird. So I got to change a bunch of settings on the Xbox. But I'll change that in a minute when I pass it off to you, Pong. But. Xbox and Game Pass, um, well, we'll for this focus more so on Game Pass being profitable and then you could take it and then we'll kind of bounce back. Um, Game Pass being profitable is just funny to me because people were were swearing up and down and then also uh, kind to trying to find their back, back door by saying, hey, well, you know, so I don't talk in absolutes and 
it's like, well, you don't have to talk in absolutes if you weren't being disingenuous. Conjecture, steel, yeah. macroeconomics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. What? What? Whatever. Uh, and now again, like we played about in the beginning of the show, now you want to see hard numbers. As a consumer, who gives a damn? They they said it was profitable, right? The same way Sony said they were profitable and they still charged more for their console, right? Have been charging more for their console, right? Huh? So through. who gets a golden parachute? Why does one get a golden parachute, the other doesn't? Well, because oh, I mean, we we all we all know why. We talk oh, about no. that all the time. Um, brand loyalty is a is a major factor, and it's something that they're going that Sony at least is going to always fully use at their uh, their disposal, even when they have more people as part of their service. They haven't mentioned whether their service is profitable or not at their current standpoint, but they did say that the hardware was uh, profitable. So. Sony can be profitable on hardware, and that's okay. But Microsoft can't be profitable on services because they're bleeding money. And they're giving people Game Pass fodder, which is trash, for those who don't know what fodder is. just gonna, You're giving people trash, although seeing more growth, because Satya also said that this generation has sold more Xbox consoles than any other generation. Mm -hmm. Xbox consoles. On pace, right? Yep. They have sold more at this point. At this point than any other generation. It's like, damn, if we already hit like wow. We hit Xbox 360 numbers already. Then. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, no. It's yeah. tandem. It, with, yeah. At this point yeah. in the generation, yeah. they have sold more than any other previous generation. So what does that tell me? That tells me that one, yes, we're in for a hell of a ride. Two, what do you guys think when these games actually start hitting? And I think mm. that's the perfect point for me to pass it off to you, Pong. Yeah, you go do what you need. If Game Pass is profitable currently, with no first party titles. Right, right. With right. people being upset about how Xbox is handling their marketing, mm -hmm. uh, the performance of games still not being the greatest. Yeah. The possibility now also of a price increase, which we don't know where that's going to get affected. Yeah. Um, although I think they did confirm that it wasn't going to be on the console side. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think. But I think it was. The I, assumption I don't know. is it probably the, the assumption is definitely that it won't be on the console but side. But we should be things. ranting about it already, Steel. Even though nothing's been announced. Nothing's been announced, but we should be mad about it. Be mad about it. What do you think about the news about Xbox being profitable? The stick the stecklers or the hecklers, I should say, the sticklers and the hecklers, um, okay. saying that they don't understand how it was ever profitable. Um, Xbox is bleeding, although they don't have any first party games to speak of, and are doing uh, seemingly doing better than ever. What does that tell you? What are some of the things that you've seen, or what are you pulling from this? And um, do you have a different version of that future painted uh, that we constantly kind of talk about here? We're still on yeah. par for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a couple. There's a couple different avenues here. First of all, the circus is always going to move the goalposts. That's that's constant. And the fact that they were saying that it wasn't sustainable. Um, that it wasn't profitable, just made zero sense. I don't care. You call it conjecture, whatever you want to. It's conjecture on all sides because yeah, nobody had, nobody, nobody will ever have the full numbers, no matter what. But you work for that's them. Every, mm -hmm. That's every conversation, right? That's every conversation you have in general with people. It doesn't matter what subject is coming up, unless you were actually talking about a field that you are an expert in or a part of. Of course, it's always conjecture, but that's the fun part about it. this. Is opinion based, but even just looking at the basic numbers and doing some. So just random calculations in your head about what it costs and versus what you what we know the costs are versus what was being made off of Game Pass. It was easy to see that it was very sustainable at this point and that they were probably making a profit. Um, so the fact that Phil kind of finally came out in black and white and confirmed it uh, through his words is great. Here's the here's another interesting point, uh, Steele. I had to dip away, so I don't know if you brought it up, but you know, uh, Phil did talk about, um, and we do know now for a fact from the earnings call 
uh, that uh, they did not hit their goals as far as Game Pass growth goes um, on the console side of things because Phil said that they are kind of capping right now uh, with Game Pass growth on the console side. So it wasn't surprising. And kind of, you know, people keep people can twist that and say, oh, listen to that. They're not growing Game Pass on console anymore. Well, as Matt brought up last night on Xbox Ultimate and on, on PM and the PM, uh, and I think it's a great point, right now, with the way consoles are selling, it's a one-for-one for, one for the most part, people entering the ecosystem and picking up a Game Pass. And so right now, without the first-party titles, um, without the consoles being readily available for a large portion of this year, it is getting better now. But with the chip shortages and the problems they were having, yeah, you're going to see a slowdown uh, on the growth from the console side of things, of course. But we're not just talking about consoles anymore. And why people focus on the console market when Xbox, Microsoft, Satya, Phil, everybody talking about, it's not just about the consoles anymore. It's about PC, it's about mobile, it's about xCloud, it's about all these other parts that nobody ever thinks about because we're so hyper-focused on the console market, that old way of thinking, oh, this is, this is Xbox versus PlayStation consoles. No, 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 that has been thrown out the window a long time ago by Microsoft and Xbox, and I don't care if you wanna say that's an excuse or they just don't wanna talk about their, their lacking in console sales. Listen, we've got all the console numbers now in black and white as well, thanks to the regulatory bodies out there in this ABK deal, Microsoft has confirmed. Sony last generation, two to one, okay? That's how it works. It is what it is, a little over two to one. That doesn't matter anymore. Game Pass now just isn't about consoles. Game Pass is now about PC, and funny enough, Satya came out and said, oh yeah, <laughs> we saw 159% growth on PC Game Pass. That's pretty damn good, right? And we haven't even seen the effects of the Riot Game deal yet. When the Riot Game uh, Game Pass deal goes through and what that's going to increase, they have the potential to grow in so many areas outside of the console, and that's the big thing. And they're already talking about it being profitable. And like Steel brought up, without first-party big titles dropping yet. Again, that's on Xbox. That's on Microsoft for a plethora of reasons, and I've been critical of them. This year, unacceptable. Unacceptable to not have one AAA game drop. But it spilled milk. It happened. It is what it is. But unlike the circus, who likes to act like no games are ever going to drop, that the, all these dev studios that Microsoft already owns without even ABK being a part of it, that all these dev studios, 28 of them or whatever it is at this point, without ABK, all those studios are working on nothing. It's all vaporware. None of those games are ever going to drop. So Xbox is going to continue 23, 24, 25 with zero games. Well, we all know that's not real. So next year, when the games start dropping, when the avalanche really begins, and again, we can rip off the names right now. You can add Age 4 to that, Age 2 Definitive Edition out the gates. You've got Redfall. You've got Forza Motorsport. And we've got Starfield, at least. That's four AAA games alone that we know of first party. And then you throw in all the third-party stuff, the deals that we know about, the Wolongs, the Stalker 2s, all that kind of stuff. This avalanche is happening, folks. It's undeniable. You can't stop it. It's not just suddenly going to disappear and Microsoft and Xbox are going to close up shop and say, hey, we gave it a go. We just couldn't put out any games. That's not going to happen. It starts next year. And when that starts and all those games are in Game Pass, not only on console, but also in PC Game Pass, when they're available through the cloud so that people, wherever you are, whether you're on your Samsung TV with the app, and who knows by then we might see more, whether you're on your Steam Deck or your Logitech G Cloud or your Razer, doesn't matter. You're gonna have access to all those games. And whether you personally find it a playable experience elsewhere outside of the big screen, doesn't matter. There's, in fact, billions of people who play games on small screens or on other devices outside of a console every single day, including PCs. 
which is a gigantic market. So when all those games do hit Game Pass and are available in all those spots, you're going to start seeing more growth. Microsoft and Xbox are not just reliant on the console anymore, folks. That's not what this is about. And especially when we're talking about the Game Pass situation. So of course, it's profitable right now. It's going to continue to grow in profitability as those numbers go up. Now, is it a done deal? No, it's not a done deal. As I said from the beginning, again, you can't, there's no absolute like, hey, we're headed towards the, the best possible scenario. No, there's going to be bumps in the road. There was bumps in the road this year. That's why you saw the console market slow down for Xbox. Now, they still did very well. Revenue-wise, they were up when some people thought they were going to be down because of, of how this year went and because of inflation and because of all the situation in the world. They still were up revenue-wise from Xbox. But Game Pass doesn't just grow with consoles. It grows everywhere else. And as more as they fix their PC Game Pass and they get better at the PC side of things and these games start hitting PC Game Pass, the Riot Game deal kicks in and you get all of that content from Riot Games. Again, people want to poo-poo that deal or say it's no big deal because we don't play on PC. Well, guess what? To PC players, that's a big value. That's We're talking like five, six, seven hundred dollars worth of value that you get just by subscribing to PC Game Pass. That's going to move numbers. So next year, next year, when we start seeing towards the end of the year, you know, we get these, these numbers coming out. I expect there to be a lot more growth than even we heard about this year. Sati's already talking about 159% growth in the PC market on Game Pass. It's gigantic, folks. Let's not forget, we just found out that uh, Microsoft is working on their own mobile store. What do you think that's going to entail? When they start cracking through on the mobile side of things as well, not just through xCloud, right, but through actually having their own store. The growth continues outside of the consoles. But next year, next year, as far as the console side, since everybody likes to focus on the consoles, because that's the only way we can play our games in 2022, is through the console still. Like this, again, is 1999, Square Enix. The only way we can play is on consoles. And everybody wants to talk about that. Next year, all the chip problems, hopefully, are going to be pretty much sorted by that point. We're already seeing it this year. We already see a bundle coming this holiday at Target from the Series S along with Modern Warfare 2 as a free pack-in, digital. When those bundles hit next year and then you've got this plethora of first-party AAA home runs, and again, it's not set in stone. Redfall could be terrible. Motorsport could be terrible. Starfield could be terrible. But chances are with the pedigree of the studios behind them, that's not going to happen. But you got all those games along with all the third-party titles. And then you've got the ABK deal done and hopefully Diablo 4 just happens to be in Game Pass as well. Next holiday, as the consoles are available everywhere by that point, when you see that Series S on the regular down at that maybe 239 range, 229 range, maybe even hit that 199 magic mark next year somewhere around Black Friday, as we talked about with King David on PM and the PM on Thursday, whatever the case may be, when all those consoles are available, yeah, you're going to see the consoles pick back up again. And if you don't think it's not going to be close to a one for one when somebody picks up a console and joins Game Pass, you're fooling yourself. It's going to be close to a one for one. The other stat that Satya threw out that we haven't talked about, Steele, is that fi uh, nearly 50% of S owners, Series S owners, are brand new yeah. to the Xbox ecosystem. We are already seeing the impact of that potato that some people like to call it. That potato, that console that's going to hold back the generation. We're already seeing that effect take hold as it becomes a companion console to many PlayStation hey, users, whether huh. they admit it or not. Yeah. Uh, that potato does plays Call of Duty at what frame rate? Uh, 120. Oh, well, not, uh, not, not not the campaign, supposedly. No, not the that. multiplayer. I'm talking about the multiplayer. The though. multiplayer. Yeah, 120. 120. I, I'd consider that a next-gen experience. Ah, uh, yeah. Because your uh, Xbox One is not doing that. Your PlayStation 4 is not doing that. No, no. But that potato steel is the Trojan horse. It is, and that's what Satya put out there. Oh. Nearly 50% of Series S owners are brand new to this ecosystem. That's important. That is only going to increase because it's not about the enthusiasts with the Series S. 
It's about the PlayStation owners who go buy that companion console as Game Pass gains even more value, even if the loud mouse out here in the circus want to say, there's nothing there for me. Guess what? There's a lot of you. A lot of you playing Series S on the side, just being yep. very quiet about mm-hmm. it. And next year when, these third, when Starfield drops, as much as you guys want to laugh about it, trash it, oh, it's a 360 game. When Starfield starts popping off and you start seeing everybody playing Starfield and you, you uh, recognize the fact that this is another generational type Bethesda title, you're going to be buying that Series S. You're going to be welcoming yourself to the ecosystem and guarantee you're not going to be paying full price for that game as much as you guys like to say. Oh, support the devs. I pay $70. If the price increase happens with Starfield, which I think it possibly could happen, I think that could be the $70 game where Microsoft switches over to $70. And again, I will be right back here criticizing Microsoft. Even though I'll be playing Starfield, even though I'm not that guy to po- wallet, pocket watch anybody out here. If you find value in the game at $70, fine, so be it. I can hold both thoughts in my head because I'm an adult human being. I'll be back here criticizing Microsoft when they increase their game prices to $70. Okay? But when that happens, you're not going to be going picking up that S and not buying Game Pass. Yeah, I was gonna say. I see that's gonna You're be my be that's gonna be my main argument. Yeah. I was like, I, yeah, I'll come back. Would they raise the price of games to seventy? Yeah. I'll come back right and say, yeah, well, well, they can do that. I don't agree with it, but they can do it. And guess what? Go go get the game in Game Pass. Right, right. You have that option. Right, and all those Switch owners are gonna be wanting to play Starfield, wanting to be playing these other games too. They're gonna be picking up an S on the side. Again, it's not about the enthusiasts nope. who care about 4K uh, all the damn yeah, time. Yeah, stop fucking, stop, stop. It's I hate not that. about that. It's about the masses. It's about mom and dad going into the stores in the holidays and trying to decide how much money they can spend on their kids, want to give their kids an experience. And they see that Series S bundled with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which kids have been clamoring for. And it's at that $299 price point. That's who's going to be picking these up because their TVs probably aren't 4K 120 at home yet. Kids probably rocking on 1080 still. Maybe 4K if they're lucky to get that TCL. It doesn't matter. The, the yeah, parents and the kids aren't going to care. They're going to pick up that Series S. So not only is it a companion console, it's a value console. Yeah. And that's what matters most in the market when you get outside of the enthusiast thought process. You get outside of this community and the circuses that are here and you realize that the majority of gamers look for value. Who's offering the biggest value? That's going to be Xbox, not only with the with the hardware, but with the services. And that's where Game Pass continues to grow on that side of things. But again, it's not locked to just the console anymore. Nope. Game Pass is everywhere. Stop now. thinking about it like And it's growing more everywhere. And that's where you're going to see that big growth. So yes, yeah, deal. Again, it's not set in stone. I'm not saying by the end of a generation, Microsoft hits 100 million Game Pass subscribers. I do. I'm not going to say that. I've I've been on the 50 to 70 million range. But if they do, fantastic. Even better, be more money coming in. I think it's going to be 100 because if the if we follow the same trajectory we kind of have on previous console generations where on the back half of the generation, usually within the last five years, where we really get those console defining games last of us didn't become last of us at the beginning of the generation it became last of us at the end of the playstation 3 generation right when they finally figured it out the biggest gripe for playstation probably one of the biggest failures in design history for making hardware for gaming and they figured out to make that style of game I think that's the thing that irks me the most about the remaster because, again, of course, you want people to get in there or the remake because you want people to get in there and experience it in its greatest light, right? But the other thing, too, is that you kind of lose the... I tell Pong all the time when we see screenshots and everything else, you've lost that magic when you've transitioned and remade the game. But not only that, but the fact that the game was what it was on PlayStation 3, I think is a perfect benchmark for what you should expect because we've had that another example with red dead right Mm -hmm. red dead redemption 2 came out on the on the very back end of the xbox one playstation 4 generation and you can't tell me as many and i see it all the time where people say that this is the best game looking game detail game that they've ever seen i don't necessarily get it but i can see it i'm not blind so what do you think is going to happen this generation in a console generation that is one 
where they're talking on similar architecture to the consoles are actually on point or a little bit ahead of what they would usually be in gaming, right? Because we've always traditionally gotten consoles that were behind in technology. Now we're getting consoles that are technically they're ahead in technology because we're still getting computer games or games that are releasing on a standard hard drive. Right. You do not require an SSD to play most games still. There are more games coming out. Xbox is, that's the one thing I don't like what they're doing with the SSD. There are games that could run on a normal hard drive that are forced to run on the SSD, which is not a good look, but you don't need it still. And until we get to that point that, I think this would be another perfect point to transition, um, unless you got something else you want to add on, my fault. Um, uh, no, I was, I, was, I was just curious where you're going. No, you're I, was gonna, I was gonna say, cause so, this, transitioning that's a, in. No, that was a perfect point to also introduce that, um, coming off the Game Pass conversation, just that the, with Series S coming back in the conversation also, right? With, uh, we yeah. were kind of teasing and people saying, oh, like you were saying, it's a potato, it's not worth it. That's the lowest common denominator. Um, but people also seemingly forgetting the main marketing point that we were pitched while we were getting these consoles sold to us, well, while they were marketing these consoles to us, and that was the SSD. Now, two years, almost three years down the line, that SSD is still not being used in totality. There is a vague difference between a game being on an SSD or not, and it's not just load times. It's much more than that. It's bringing assets in. It can help games run smoother. And if the game wasn't designed like they were pitching that the games were going to be designed, if the games weren't designed for that up front, then what do you think you're going to get? What then? What the? That would explain why we've gotten the type of games that we've gotten thus far. Gotham Knights was seven years in development. The the console just came out two to three years ago. They had a market to feed before that. Before they turned coat and made a decision and they see the reason why they cut last generation for gotham knights is because obviously there's enough people buying newer consoles when you have your the people who are selling the console saying hey we're selling more consoles than we've ever had before hey cut it off it'll be all or right it ran, or it ran so horribly that or, i mean that but that's the but <laughs> yeah but it but because it ran horribly you can afford to cut it off because people are investing and that's my that's my big that's my biggest thing with that. So you see with Game Pass, and then you also see with the Series S, to where one we're not utilizing the the hardware for what we have right now. I know people are talking about RAM and everything else. And again, two three years into the generation, we're still not getting games made specifically for these consoles, and we will not until the back half, the last four years. And this generation is going to go ten, at least. If they don't turn our boxes into cloud in the, in the servers, in the server blades, right? right. Because the hardware is only going to improve even more. Games are only going to get the streamlining uh, for developing games is only going to get better. Do you think technology is all of a sudden going to go backwards? And we're not going to like these developers aren't going to come up with more creative ways to present games to you. You think destiny is going to stay the same forever? No, <laughs> this, and that's a live service game to use as an example. Do you think your single player games are gonna stay the same? No, <laughs> like everything is changing because it has to. Technology is forcing it to, people are forcing it to, value is forcing it to. So for you, I know I just introduced like, uh, the concept of the Series S, and, and you were touching on it too, the whole potato yeah, factor yeah, yeah. and everything, yeah. and I saw a bunch of conversations about that again, um, yeah. and I heard you and Matt talk about the lowest common denominator, along with uh, along, along with King. Uh, you and uh, y'all talked about it the week before with 3-Bit and everything, and I, I still hear people coming out and saying, well, the Series S, the lowest common denominator, that's the lowest common box that they got, complete, and, and saying, oh, well, P PC's different, that's not, it's not the same. But forgetting we're still getting games that on PC need a hard drive. Minimum specs hard drive. Right. 
Well, I mean, so what what do you kind of so to just to add on to what you were saying, not throwing in that uh that the whole series S or how well it's doing and it, yeah. you know, touching more on the fact that people are portraying to be a console that it has so much value as a for lack of a better way to put it, a four box or a food stamp box. That's the way that it comes across. Right. Oh, this is your government assistance box. Right. <laughs> like, uh, like, what are we what are we doing? Like, is is that the kind of feeling that you're kind of getting from people or yeah. or we still amongst others? Are we just on a different string on a different accord? We see the angle differently where others are just like uh, they're just kind of lost in their own space. Maybe. Yeah, I think this goes to the fact that gamers now in this community, we're not talking about the wider audience, the mainstream, yeah. the, the, the the casuals out there. We're talking about this enthusiast community is much more well-educated than it ever has been. Um, sure, most of us aren't devs outside of the three bits of the world and that kind of stuff. Most of us aren't devs. Most of us aren't working on our own game, not developing, not doing but we have access to more information than we ever have before. What that creates is a sense of superiority uh, in, in a lot of people. People take um, their knowledge and run with it. And again, I'm not talking about those of us that necessarily take the satellite view and use general knowledge to right. you know, prognosticate and that kind of stuff and read the crystal ball. I'm talking about the people who honestly believe that they know the facts and that they can come out and make proclamations of hey the series s is holding things back and that kind of stuff so then you have the other side that comes in and tries to say no and defend it which is the right way to do it because as we do know from a general knowledge standpoint that it is not the lowest common denominator but the s it doesn't matter it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day the s exists Neil, and it exists with a purpose microsoft didn't randomly say yeah, let's see. Can we just slap something together and uh, put something uh, low price out? And who cares if it runs great or doesn't? No, this was a part of the R and D engineering. This was part of Jason Ronald and his crew with a very specific purpose in mind to reach the casual market with a value based proposition that they can't deny. That is along with Game Pass. It was all part of a deal. And developers, like I said, the three bit. Developers had their way, Steel. Of course, every developer would want console. us running 4090s. Okay? We, we all, they would never make anything but for 4090s yep. and SSDs. Okay? That was not a console. Right. It was flat out. If developers had their way. So, of course, you can have developers come out here with ridiculous takes because I'm sure it's not fun developing for every single platform right now. I'm sure if you're yeah. making a multi-platform game and you got to consider a a 1060 with with a standard drive and you got to also think about the 4090s with the ssd i'm sure it's not fun and you got the consoles in between i'm sure it's not a great time but it's your job and it is something that's a part of the business yeah. it's a part of the reason why you're getting paid is because there's so many options for people the series s is a gateway it is a trojan horse is it going to be for everybody no of course not it but not is it going to be for the masses of Could course be. it is mm -hmm. Was the we made for all of us? No, no, no. <laughs> hell no. But, but what did it do? It hit the masses because yeah. of the value, because of the types of games, the yeah, content was that was on there. Grandma could go bowling with the grandkids. Like that was huge, and it hit something. And I'm not saying even Microsoft is going for that, but what they are trying to do is say, hey, no matter what your budget is, no matter who you are, yes. we are going to give you an option awesome. to come into our ecosystem. For a fair price that you can give your family entertainment now that this industry is the number one entertainment in the world we are going to give you a simple way to drop in join game pass you got access to hundreds of games for a monthly price and we think that we're going to offer you something unique and we think that we're going to give you something that yes while you you don't care about 4K. You don't care about 6120 ray tracing, all that stuff. But the Series S does do ray tracing, by the way. And I don't see yeah. low end computers doing ray no, tracing. They it don't. does have the capability. You have to have a 2000 series card to do ray right, tracing right. at any level. Right. right. So we're going to give you something that we feel will allow you to play the latest and greatest games and get into our ecosystem without breaking the bank for you and your family. That's what they're trying to do with the system. 
along with, as I talked about with the Game Pass deal, a companion system for those you know, who are maybe primary Switch players, primary PlayStation players, but see what Xbox is doing and want to dabble, want to get access to Starfield, want to have this. They don't necessarily have a PC that can run it. You can buy a Series S as that companion console as well. But that's what they're trying to do. They, this fills a need, and it was very specific what Xbox was doing with Little Man, as King David calls it. Little Man is there to be that gateway drug, to be that accessible point, or those people that just maybe don't care as much or just don't have the budget to care as much. So there they are. And again, it just gets better and better once the first party titles drop. So devs are going to have to, they're not, Xbox and Microsoft aren't going to say, okay, you don't have to make a game. No, that's not going to happen. No, that's not going to happen. I mean, that's not going to happen. The only thing I could ever see, Steel, is that there might be games. There might be a game towards the end of this generation or a few games towards this end of gener- generation where you could honestly say, depending on technology, okay, I'm not saying this yeah. is for sure, yeah. but but I'm saying towards the end of the generation, you could see games that actually are better running it through the cloud on the S than it is local. You might be able to get better performance frames-wise on the Series S running it through the cloud than you do localized hardware. That option. I see. I see you know what going. I'm saying. You I see mean, what I'm saying. You I, see what I'm saying. Towards the end of the generation, if technology catches up, if they get this, listen. All I'm saying is that the Series S has the ability to do that as well. So if there is a game, you have the ability to stream it through the cloud as well, just like you do off your old consoles. Right? Yeah. Just like you do. So all I'm saying is the Series S has a place here. The devs have to deal with it. They're going to have to develop for it, just like they have to develop for the low end spec. Right. PCs, again, that's part of selling the game. That's part of the whole process. And again, you want to reach the audience that Microsoft is providing you, you're going to have to do it. Right. And it's going to work and it's going to be fine for most people. And the people that wind up getting a Series S and then later on go, ah, it's just not the best for me, they're going to have the option to upgrade to the Series S. And, and, and Kaya Santa brings up a good point. Just like you need cloud to go play Flight Sim on Xbox One. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a good example. And the biggest thing is seeing if the internet continues to evolve the way that it has been, then yes, yes I 100% agree with that. Um, the other thing, too, though, is that I do think that as technology gets better, they're going to consistently try to find better ways of implementing sure. things like um, Fidelity and DLSS, yes. FSR, yes. things of that nature. Um, to make games run smoother, so and look better. Again, what if we can get to a point to where people are experiencing fake 4K? Mm-hmm. That's the goal, right? And there's yeah. so much headroom left on these consoles that we, I still think, within the next eight years. Well, yes, within the next eight years, before we get our next console generation, I don't think they'll have to completely go the cloud route, um, even halfway. But at this, in that same breadth, though, it is going to depend on the type of game that they're making, right? Correct. Absolutely. Um, Always. And it's going to, it's, again, it's going to be hard to determine how these things are going to happen or what's going to, what's going to go which route until we get games that are made specifically for the generation that we're in right now. Mm-hmm. Once that happens, I think at that point, it'll give us more of a outline or a roadmap of what we can look at for the future, right? Mm -hmm. Um, The potential, whether the boxes are going to be able to handle it. But again, with so many things working against both sides as far as hardware um, in the past and then for them to be on pretty much the pulse, the only one that isn't is the PlayStation probably by a year or so. Um, behind Xbox as far as hardware and the consoles go. I could see a possible pro versions of these consoles. I I know that we were kind of saying maybe, maybe not. Again, it would probably be one of those things where just like the Xbox One X, it's literally an option. Um, And it's not as big of a difference as you going from like a VCR to a One X. Um, it's more like you going literally, it's more like they're going from like a one X to a series S maybe, 
um, in that perspective, but you have more horsepower um, this time around than anything. So it's like, hey, if you're an enthusiast, you want a box that's going to hold you over for an extended amount of time, uh, maybe hold you over two to three years going into that next generation as we get these new consoles put out. Hey, we have this. But, but also at that same time, it's just, I don't, I don't know which way it's going to go, which I think is more interesting to me because I legitimately, like before, you could kind of predict it. Now it's like, which way is it truly going to go? And then we bring up quantum computing all the time here. We're, we're literally a breakthrough away from a lot of things changing. So it's hard for me to be like, yeah, it could go this way because in the next right. four years before the console generation is over, we're six years in and you just don't know. I, like there's a major breakthrough and now everybody's in VR. So like, I, I, I don't, <laughs> we all got holodecks is what you're saying? I, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, I, sometimes, sometimes, That'd be amazing. again, I know it's movies that make it seem like this sometimes, but yeah. sometimes it only takes one person. Right, oh, yeah, no. it's like the no, SSD situation it. in the consoles. The only reason why the SSD solution are in the console, at least on the Xbox side of things, is because one person came up with an idea to do it that way and streamlined it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like just never know. You know, you, you never, you never know. You never know for sure. You know, you, you, again, you'd bring up great points, Steele. I think that I think we are now that I'm seeing again a lot that determines, and and, and right. everybody who's techies versus me. Who, not a techie can talk right, on this right, more. Right. And we got KS on we got Dutch in the chat. We got you here live who know more about this stuff than I do. Shot. Um, but the, the, the more I'm starting to see of these games and, and uh, maybe next year, I'll, I'll have you bring right. up that trailer real quick and we'll show off yeah, the fast. trailer of this game. Um, the more I see of these now games that where we're starting to see the transition to visual difference, next gen yeah. visual difference, that kind of stuff. And we're starting to see the frame rates be at that 30 mark. It does scare me. I want the option always for 60 frames. And we've talked about the content. Just give me the option. No matter what the resolution is, give me the option. Whatever you got to do, give me the option for 60 frames. Let me try it out. But I do feel we could get to a point quicker than maybe we thought with these current gen consoles, the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X, and Series S, where we all of a sudden ran run into limitations with these new engines, Unreal 5, new unity all that kind of stuff where 30 frames we go backwards and 30 frames on consoles becomes the norm again and we start having more devs come out and say we just can't get it to do 60. that's when i really see i'm never for the mid-gen refresh but at that point i would be like okay maybe we do need a mid-gen maybe we do need to beef up but that's the only case i see it where it happens but like you said it could also be the developers. It could also be the tools. Yeah. Catch up. Rebit talked about this. Again. The potential is there. The tools, developers, they start figuring out these 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 newer engines. They figure out shortcuts. They figure out ways uh, to do things more efficiently. And all of a sudden, they, they, they realize that the consoles do have the power, and we still get the options for 60 frames down the road and 120, all that good stuff. Yeah. Yo, so I think there's a lot to go through this generation to see. Again, I always knew this generation was going to be extremely fascinating from a multitude of reasons, but the tech side is going to be that because we see the leaps in computing power now, the 4090 versus the 3080, um, you know, that kind of stuff. That's a, you know, teraflops wise, pure raw horsepower. Yeah. It's a big leap. Like it's a big leap, man. Yeah. So um, how quickly that moves the needle, how quickly devs move away from the lower spec PCs and then yeah, start again. requiring that SSD, start requiring a little bit bigger cards. That's the first cards. Yeah, that's where it's, we're going to see. That. That's what's going to kind of lead, kind of dictate where we have this generation go. But the Series S, get back on point, does have a purpose. It is going to be one of the of top selling consoles this generation, if yeah. not the top selling console this generation worldwide. At the end of the day, it certainly could move that needle that far enough if Game Pass explodes, if xCloud continues to grow. If, if Microsoft's first party studios get on track, if the ABK deal goes through, we get mobile, we got all this other stuff going on. Series S could wind up being the best selling console this year. So it easily could uh, for the masses. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's going to easily be. I mean, again, it's, it's affordable. If you want people to transition, again, your typical consumer who all is still on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and again, even during those generations, we still have people that were on PlayStation 3s and Xbox 360s. 
I can't tell you how many people um were just transitioning over would tell me, um, hey, I just got an, I just got an Xbox One or I just got a PlayStation Four, and I'm like, wow, and we're about to get the next generation consoles. Uh, and they're like, yeah, you know, I just got one. I'm excited. I got these games to play. Like the common consumer matters, and that what I hear all the time, and it's just like, yeah, man, I got all this stuff. I got it for like two hundred bucks. Now you're seeing that price kind of reflect in a new generation console where you're getting new experiences. Frame, the frame rate differences, 60 FPS, which should be a standard as we move forward again. Uh, we'll definitely see how that kind of translates, but you're seeing that same type of price point and it makes it so much easier for mom, dad, grandma, uncle, auntie, whoever you are, sister, whoever you're taking, person that's taking care of you or taking care of a family who has a uh, who's looking for some form of entertainment gaming whatever the case may be this is a good i would say at least um a good avenue and a good spend at least mm -hmm. for um especially with game pass being included uh there's so much more that you're being given today um and accessibility than i I had previously, which makes it so much of, uh, which makes it a unique thing, um, especially when I watch my kids watch like Hulu or Disney or yeah. Netflix or anything like that. And then you look at Game Pass and even for them, it's like they expect for games to be a certain way. There hasn't right. been a game that's come out yet that I really had to spend money on um, right. other than the Demon Slayer game that came out recently from my oldest. But other than that, they play everything through Game Pass, like, right. um, or through that, or or it's free. So, right, right. it's kind of where we're at right, right now, right? So, it is. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Hey, uh, Jesse Darby, great to see you in here. ATL, it's today. Still rocking out with us. Uh, great to see you, ATL brother. I just said your name, but great to see you, brother. Kay Asante, thank you for dropping in here. Shout out to you, Everborn Circle Podcast. Facts. They get done with their show, and Kay Asante rolls up in. <laughs> thank you, man. Wandering Dutch arrived late. Uh, football was on. Hey, Dutch, I get you. I get you, man. Hey, no yeah, problem, brother. Thank you for dropping in. Appreciate Here's you coming. The midweek mix-up collective uh, and all the brothers there. Jaheed still rocking out with us. Siki is in the house. Cam Solo dropping on in here. Sappho. Oh, somebody did so, bring up a um, a comment that I wanted to address. If you brought up Jaheed. I didn't want to forget. Um, yeah, yeah. So Jaheed says, is the Series X equivalent to a 2080? Okay. <laughs> because i see this conversation come I'm up <laughs> um i see this conversation come up and i'm not going to attack the conversation directly uh directly hand head on except this is what i'm going to do i'm gonna give you a different perspective computers and pcs are meant to do a multitude of different things unless you specifically build a computer to play games which still it still is that's the only thing that it does it is very different from a console. It is the way that it's always has been. Console is a closed system. You cannot upgrade it. You can upgrade the storage. That is about it. The way that consoles are set up, and I know a lot of people try to make it seem like it's different um, or try to make it seem like it's an issue. The way that consoles are set up, what made games unique before and why they couldn't come to like PC for an example is that games were specifically designed for consoles, right? In that infrastructure, the, the coding and everything. Gaming on PC is an additive feature. It is an option. It's just a benefit of having a computer. You either have the hardware or you don't. In a console, you have what you have, right? So to compare any console to one specific hardware piece in a computer, I don't think is a accurate or intelligent comparison because there are so many more components that go into it Versus us just talking about, hey, is this console comparative to this graphics card? I can't just plug a graphics card. I can't plug a monitor into a graphics card, hook my uh, Xbox into or a computer or hook a random something into my graphics card and it just works. It doesn't work that way. 
I have to have a power supply. I have to have a, a CPU. I have to have a storage device. I have to have motherboard. I have to have something for all these components to talk to each other, which assists, which a console gives to you for three to $500, which is not possible. I don't care who you're talking to. It is not possible to get what you're getting on console on a PC. Why? Because consoles are specifically designed to play games. They do have an entertainment option, but let's face it, at the re in the reality of it all, streaming movies and TV is not that big of a thing. It doesn't take up a bunch of different resources. The internet has even, actually the browsers have gotten more streamlined, have taken up even less resources. So doing things and having apps and everything like that, having something lightweight in the background that you can do some other entertainment things with, is again, is an add-on to what you're getting on the console. Again, best way I could put it, gaming is an add-on to the PC space. Gaming is the focal point in the console space. There's two completely different perspectives, two completely different uh, things that they're used for in their premise and their principle, which I don't get, which is why what frustrates me when I hear people say, what's the point of getting these pieces of hardware, especially in the console market? Because where have you been over the last 30 years? You could say that about any console if you ever bought. Why didn't you just buy a PC that you could play those games? Oh, because they weren't available on PC before. Because games were being made for console. Because it was designed differently. So that's kind of my long-term answer on that. Kea Sante also throws in there. If you build a PC to play top tier games, it will also be capable of most everything else better. Because of the limited OS of the console, it will never be capable of what a PC is. Steel Rain is 100%. That's the, that's the biggest difference. But that is why I hate when people bring up PC hardware and console conversations because they do not go hand in hand. The fact that we're getting the performance that we're getting out of the Series X, look at the how big this console is, or even your PS5. Look how big those consoles are, and then go look at a PC. That's fucking insane to me. Look at the 4090 card. Look at the, look how big the, the 4090 <laughs> card is the same size as the Series X, guys. Like, right. what do you like? What do you want? It's a big same size as the PS5. Like, what do you want me to like, guys? What are we talking <laughs> about? So don't listen to. I personally would advise you to not listen to people who try to make that comparison or say, oh, it's comparatively. They try to make that as a graphics point comparison, but there's other things that are being implemented to allow that performance to happen, right? It can't look at the, at the same way that you look at console. I just, they're talking on the same architecture. That's as far as it goes as, as that. And we're getting similar, right? performance and quality because there are some games that are coming out like plague tale if you're just looking at a picture on twitter you see the playstation 5 series and the pc comparatively to each other which one like could you really tell which is which would you be would you really care which is which at the end of the day and a lot of the pictures that i see that's why I'm excited to talk about what's going on in this industry. That's why I do a podcast with my brother from another every Saturday morning with Living Split Screen. Because I am dumbfounded every time that I, we, me and Pong DM each other all the time with indie games or people creating games or just design elements that people are putting in place all the time. Because I am dumbfounded and amazed by what we have what we are able to see now comparatively to what we saw in the past coming from all that blocky stuff to seeing perfectly animated care for call of duty to have the amount of visual fidelity that it has on a series s that you guys are saying is a potato not you guys in chat but some people are saying as a potato back in the day if we called your pc a potato you weren't playing games. That's what potato meant. It cannot run it. 
Crytek, Crisis Four is a good example. Your your computer could be considered a potato if it couldn't run Crisis. That was kind of the the bragging point back in the day, right? Comparatively, man, it's it's interesting. I love it. It gets me excited. I know everybody has a different perspective on it, but. We, we got to try to at least have solid conversation. Like Kay Asante said, G disingenuous arguments by console warriors. Again, not by gamers. Again, you're not even having disingenuous conversations as a gamer. You're, you're just as a console warrior, as a plastic warrior. I don't get that. Uh, Ham says, there's a reason we can't scale a game like on PC. Everything uh, on a console is very specific, which we are seeing those changes again, where you get those changes in resolution, where again, Gotham Knights, why does the game run perfect run better on the Series S than it runs on the other consoles? Why? Because they re lowered the resolution. Oh, I thought it wasn't that easy. There are things that are possible. There's capability here. Um, Jesse says people do the PC performance because you can get uh, a setup for a more frame rate. Not always about visual quality, right? People do care about frames. A lot of people care about frames. A lot more uh, people care about a, frames. a lot more people care about <laughs> frames actually and more are coming too. Yeah. Uh, GE says appreciate the clarity. I always see people comparing the consoles to a specific graphics card, but your explanation makes sense. Thanks, Jahe, man. I mean, again, I'm always going to try to attack it a little bit differently than other people were. I've I've always hated that conversation in the past because uh, that's always been a thing since consoles have been uh, in existence. Oh, how does this compare to a PC? This is the first time where we can honestly try to compare, but still a closed ecosystem to an open ecosystem, a gaming device compared to a device that literally can create games. Right. <laughs> like what? Like what? Like what are we doing? <laughs> right. That's that's no. that's all. That's all. That's the difference. No, that all makes sense, Steel. Again, I've heard that explanation too, and you know, people always want the simplest form, like so it's right. easy right. to understand. And in this case, it's much more complicated at the end of the day. Yes, 100%. Than just to be able to do that. It's not apples to apples. No. But people always look for it. Hey, shout out to General 27, General Spartan 27 showing Ooh. up. Live supremacy. Uh, Splendiferous. Why so serious? Uh, all of you. Psychonauts jumped in here, brother. Great to see you. Fuzzy, of course, jumping in here as well. Uh, listen, we appreciate all of you that are here listening now or in the future. Muppet. Uh, one one six nine. I see you as well, Muppet. Uh, but yes, all of you that are here now, or whether you're in love and respect to all of you joining us today, uh, stream is running great. Grim. It's yes, great. no drop frames. Awful grim bones. What's going on? Um, so we are having a good time here. And to love Steel's it. point, that was a perfect transition, actually. Still oh, okay. talking about why we're talking about this stuff. Yeah, why we get excited. Steel and I do this from time to time. We 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 talk about a lot of games in the DMs. Right, we are right, right, always right. on the hunt for new games. Um, I want Steel to show this trailer. Yeah, facts. Uh, there we go. Ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is a game that maybe some people missed this week. It got a release trailer, or an announcement trailer, I should say. This is the most visually stunning game. One of the most visually stunning trailers I have ever seen in my entire life. But this is like Steel was saying. So what gets excited? about this industry this is what gets us going and i want this to show this is from a car studios feel if you can start that up yeah you have um just take a, i want you guys to take a look at this game See if i can this is called repo man from a car studios um coming out of nowhere coming out of nowhere um and just look at this game and appreciate what we're starting to see this is absolutely stunning this is an R, this is an open world rpg folks yes this is craziness. I cannot believe what this looks like. I am so excited for this. Now, if you watch it, you can definitely tell it's running at 30 frames. <laughs> you can definitely tell when you're watching this. But the visually, they are trying to do something that I haven't seen done before um, in a lot of ways. It gives me some Bioshock feels. It gives me, you know, different, different game style feels. But man, is it visually stunning. And this is what Steele and I were talking about. And again, just wanted to show everybody because not everybody pay, you know, is all the time on social media paying attention. I just thought this was worthy of seeing something, uh, of showing it to everybody. So for sure. Yeah, and I'm going to play it one more time just in case people yeah. didn't see it for sure. Um, I got it full screen on uh, for you guys. 
Uh, sorry for the little transition there. I wanted to make sure I, I got it in the best quality possible, but it is a very good looking game, man. Uh, you sent this to me in the DM, um, and I started watching. I was like, God damn, like the fucking attention to detail and the characters and uh, just the world overall looks really well put together. Um, it definitely gives you those uh, those Bioshocks uh, vibes that you were mentioning. Uh, the only Bioshock that I played was Infinite, uh, so that's the only one that I can kind of draw that comparison to but there's a lot of different artistic choices that were made in this game that are really appealing to me and really draw my eye uh but then uh, like you mentioned you can't tell that it, this is 30 fes uh so that's definitely a turn off for me but um as far as the artistic vision goes and everything um what they're going for uh it definitely looks very intriguing now i will say up front it's not going to be my necessarily yeah. style of game from what i can tell um, because there are some things that are a little bit off to me, but again, this could be another one of those cyberpunk situations because I wasn't necessarily hyped for cyberpunk, um, up there either, but then Pong recommended that I jump into it. And, um, again, cyberpunk is one of the greatest games that I've ever played. So again, I mean, this could be another one of those, uh, definitely one that could set the bar, another bar for RPGs and, uh, the type of quality that we're kind of speaking to. Uh, so that's gonna be really interesting to see man hopefully uh, uh hopefully they do something nice with that man yeah yeah absolutely i'm excited to hear more about this game i just want to see it again the minute i think it was uh idle sloth put it out there and said it was an open world rpg i'm like what? yeah i'm like what i want to go explore this world it just looks fantastic i just want everybody to see that uh keep you up to date on something that really caught our attention Thank uh is it an indie is it an indie studio uh a car studio i've never heard never of heard of them yeah i was gonna say i, I don't think car studio let me see yeah i was just gonna look it up too and just uh give people a little bit more background if we could uh a car studio story driven real-time crafted yeah, let's see i not for what not for what i could tell guys i mean well see that's the other thing that's unique too uh let me see because you need to type in repo man it comes up with other games uh let's see Pu publishers games box I haven't heard of them either. Yeah, it might be from an indie team, guys. From what we, from what it's looking like. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna see they're if I can get some on, more. They're working on a bunch of games, though. They got a bunch of games listed on their website that they're working on. Currently hiring, of course. Uh, very interesting. Even their website is interesting. Got it set up. Do I do they? Based, they're based in Poland. Okay. And you know Poland, awesome. they they do get funding for the yeah uh, for they're based stuff, in so. Poland, so yeah they might be uh, have some of that government money coming in too. Poland government. yeah wow they, they, they might be in the studio, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I mean it looks like um that's at least what I noticed beforehand because I didn't I didn't find any information um and then this is like the first time I'm looking at it, like really seeing like man there's there's no wiki there's nothing for them oh. um other than their like main website uh our car, car studio. So again, they joined Twitter. They joined Twitter in March of 2022. So they've only got 20. So they're really recent. 28. I just really. I just followed up. Yeah. There's a gay Asante makes the perfect point. Looking bold for a studio out of nowhere. They're coming like Black Myth Wukong, blowing minds. Yeah. Exactly. Exci but that's what I'm saying. Like uh, that's what Pong hits to all the time. And it's like we're getting all this talent from smaller studios, and but we ha we're not we have not seen yet what our bigger studios are capable of. Right. And I think that's what really gets that hype set up for 2023. Although I still have my reservations about it because these are still games that had the previous generation in consideration. Sure. Unless they decided differently in the beginning of development. Yeah. Which the gap is the gap is closing too, still. Yeah. Like 100%. Between big, big studios really have to worry they can't take chances that's what we always say the, the risk taking happens in the indie scene right new games yep. come out of the indie scene the new mechanics come out of the indie scenes the majority of the time because they take risks they're people who maybe broke off uh from a bigger studio and want to try something a new vision or they're new to the industry so they don't have the same kind of um you know mentality that veterans who have been working for a big studio for a long time always looking to have that massive hit because they have to have that massive hit for the masses they can think outside the box they can do things differently but the tech gap the the engines now available with unreal 5 unity all these tech that are available to these smaller studios to bring their vision forth 
it's changed the game, literally, pun intended. It's changed how things are done, and that's why you can have these pop-up studios, yep. like a Black Myth Wukong yep. coming out of China. We've seen so many smaller studios in Korea and China, and now we see another one in Poland just pop up out of nowhere. Now nobody knows about them, and all of a sudden they drop a trailer, and it's like, what? Where did this come from? Yep. Oh my, who's doing this? Like, is this a big studio? And you come to find out, no. Started as a garage studio with a group of you know group of friends or a group of people that got together that had the same type of vision, but it looks like it's a triple A game coming from one of the big studios. But that's what we're going to see more and more of down the road. That's why this is so damn exciting and why it's the golden age of gaming. There's just so much talent now, so much talent out there, Steel, and they have the ability with the tech to actually make that vision come out they don't have to start with some 8-bit 16-bit looking game yep. even though some of them enjoy doing that yeah, and there's yeah. plenty of great games that have come out of that as well from the indie scene indies can now jump in and say no i have this experience that i want to boggle people's minds with the graphics i want to do this big open world rpg right. yep. here we go or we like um like the other small indie dev that we're um that we're seeing and i think it's only one person on it you might have a few people working on it right now um where we sh- kind of share updates on it in the background uh there, i know there's a few of them but there's the one that's kind of uh like i want to say it's like say a superpower esque maybe it's more like dragon ball esque but it's a uh, super yeah. power fantasy driven where you see the guys like he's blowing up planets yeah. blowing up yeah. holes in the you know making right. craters in in the earth or whatever he's on whatever planet he's on um yeah. you're doing these huge blasts and out of space and you see it like you're like bro what and he's you're seeing it kind of come together and you see him more and more detail get added in and then now i'm curious about okay so what story is he going to be telling with this now then right so and now okay so now how am i going to because another thing is um he also said it was like oh there's gonna be a lot of customization in here you're gonna make your character your own it's like wow what this is a game i'm not seeing anybody else make so Yeah. The potential is limitless, honestly, right? People are so up in arms about Activision and Blizzard getting bought, but not, but constantly forgetting that there's other small teams that are going to come and step up to that spot, come and make a hit game. Again, Battle Royale just recently blew up within the last decade. It's not like we've always had it. Right. There can be something else. There will be something else. Yes. Guaranteed. So it's it's going to be interesting to see how good things go. And like Kay Asante says, that's why I love the indie space. A lot of exciting things coming. These guys look like Ninja Theory shooting AAA shots with smaller teams. And now look at Ninja Theory. Their, right. their second game might be the most critically acclaimed game ever created if they hit the mark that they're trying to hit. Uh, making a psycho thriller along with making a visual masterpiece. Right. right? Um, especially if you're coming off the heels of that first game. Again, if anybody's telling you that first game's boring, not into it, they weren't playing with headphones on, um, and maybe they just didn't like the story, I guess. I don't I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's possible. Hellblade isn't for everybody. Yeah, Hellblade isn't is. for everybody. I didn't think I was going to like it, but I fucking loved but it. You felt, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I loved it. Uh, it was a good time. Uh, I teetered the line a little bit towards the end or before I was being fucking scary, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it's neither here or there, but yeah, man. Um, it's exciting times, man. Well, I mean, you, we got anything else that you want to add on there? No, no, I'm good. I just want to show everybody that. Keep everybody up to date. Like I said, on something I thought was stunning enough that it should be seen. Yeah. More people should be aware of coming out. Right. So it is something to look forward to, man. Another one. <laughs> so much. Yeah. And then there's so many, there's so many things coming out again. If you thought your library was going to get a little bit smaller, uh, it's going to continuously get bigger. Uh, again, if you guys are having a problem playing games now, um, it's only going to bring it progressively worse. Um, Jay says there are plenty of indie studios in acquisition away from being able to be a top tier studio, 100%. Bioware didn't become what they, what they were without, you know, those hit games. Mass Effect has really kind of solidified them no matter what. Uh, people love that along with, Everybody um, starts somewhere. Everybody starts somewhere. Always. It's not always underneath the big publishers. So that's, that's the way it works now. And then nowadays, again, even more so. Yeah, one accessibility to this tech opens up again. Microsoft making a huge push into cloud development, right. putting the tools up in the cloud, giving access to people around the world. Again, they opened up a, a shop. They got boots <laughs> on the ground in Africa looking for new talent. Um, again, it's going to come from anywhere. It's going to come from anywhere in any place. One day I might be able to make a game, for God's sake. Yeah, I mean, that's the way it's looking. <laughs> I be, I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm considering is, it. I've been considering AI it. Is gonna, AI been, is going to change. Definitely me. considering it. Yeah, I know you are. 
Uh, live supremacy says sometimes small studio gets successful and they can't handle it and they sell it. I mean, that's the that's the business, man. Sometimes it's yeah. worth it to sell it. Again, if it, if for an example, if me and Pong go start making a game out of nowhere, if we had a budget or if we even made the game for thirty thousand dollars, right? Uh, we took a year and we just really put our nose down and made a game. And somebody made us an offer for a million dollars. I would probably take it. Depending depending on the type of game that we're made. Now, if me and Paul really had faith in this game and uh, we feel like we could really take it somewhere, that may be a little bit differently. Uh, but who knows? We may be in a place to where you say, yeah, I mean, take it. Look, and we go story, have fun. Yeah. You know? <laughs> who knows? No, this is a great conversation still because, again, this wasn't in our topic list at right. all. But now that we're on it, listen, you can go listen to, listen, go look at Double Fine and Tim Schafer's story. Yes. Tim's put the story out there, right? Double Fine, highly successful, critically acclaimed, but not mass appeal games, right? Tim Schafer was the head of that studio. He not only was heading up his teams, you know, coming up with narrative design, helping out with the dev work, but he was, he had to be, when they were independent, they had, he had to go sell his games. He had to be the marketing man. He had to go find the cash flow to keep it going, right? They were kickstarting games, which is another avenue. They, he had to go do all of that. Tim Schafer was the, that, the, Double Fine was the ultimate indie studio. Okay, the ultimate indie studio. They had gotten to the point, the top of the indie studio scene. And what did he say? He said, even we knew there was limitations yep. to what we could do. And he said, when Xbox came in, and said, hey, we'd like to think about acquiring you. And they started going through that process. Tim said, guess what? If you're going to give us creative freedom to do, and we can take all the marketing and all the resource, the money stuff off of our plates, and I can focus on doing what I love, which is managing teams, which is creating new games. I'm all for it. And they wound up being acquired by Xbox. And Psychonauts 2 turned out even better than what was originally planned because they had Microsoft behind them. Now Tim and his team are working on multiple projects. They don't have to worry about the back end stuff. Go listen. In Exile just put out a great YouTube video for their anniversary. I just watched their whole video. In Exile, Brian Fargo and his team over there, they went through the entire gambit of ups and downs at In Exile to completely being giant to completely dropping down to barely existing and talk, think, talking about, hey, we might, we're one game away from failure, right? We're one game away. What did they do? They went and kickstarted Wasteland 3 as a last chance opportunity, and it worked. There was enough people, enough fans out there looking for the next Wasteland, that Wasteland 2, I should say, Wasteland 2, that they kickstarted it, they met their goal, they made Wasteland 2, and that brought them back to life again. And then Brian said, they got to that point and they were like, okay, what are we going to do next? Well, that's when Xbox showed up at their doorstep in the middle of while they were developing Wasteland 3 and said, hey, we we're thinking about acquiring you. Would you be interested? Brian Fargo said, yeah, of yeah. course. Come on, okay. come on in. Come on in. And he said, as they went through the process, as they went to, through the meet and greets and, and getting to know everybody and Microsoft was looking at their workings and all their internal books and stuff. Brian really saw the future and said, look, this takes away all of that risk factor for us. And you're going to allow us to do what we do best. You're going to be hands off. You're going to allow us to create. Great. Let's get this done. And they got it done. And now in exile, listen, they got the best social media team out there. They love being under Xbox. They're being able to build the biggest game they've ever built before when we get to finally see it. They're so excited for it because of Xbox came in. So yeah. As an indie dev, not all of them. A lot of them want to remain independent. But for the most part, you start an indie studio to become a part of something bigger, to eventually do be acquired, to give that security to your team, to your devs, to give that security to yourself that you can go ahead and just focus on making the games. That's eventually what indie devs want to get to. Not all. Some of them love being independent and will stay independent forever. But many of them do that, and it's great. It's been great for business, especially with a parent company like Xbox, who understands now there's been criticisms that xbox is too hands-off that they haven't managed enough like we've heard that right we had this year with no first party triple a games but at the end of the day i would rather them miss the mark as far as getting games out like on the on the on the type time frames that we want as gamers and let their devs 
be creative and create what they want to than to be micromanaging them and forcing out games or pushing, you know, like Square Enix we talked about with Crystal Dynamics, making them make a game that it just doesn't fit their style just to have a content game. I'd rather have a parent company like Xbox more hands off, allowing these people to do what they do best. So I think it's great. Yeah, no, I think it's a perfect move for them. Um, and it's perfect. Uh, I'm excited for it. So, um, all right. Let's see where we get into here. There was an article that just went out by uh, VGC today uh, about Xbox kind of, not Xbox, but Phil Spencer uh, talking about the deal some more again. I know we talked about a little bit about that earlier, um, but the VGC wrote an article saying that Phil Spencer claims scrutiny of Xbox's Activision deal is fair and warranted. Um, and then there is, we can go, uh, and then they have a little bit more information about that. A lot of what I've read about on this article uh, thus far, while I was reading in the background a little bit, um, is just a lot of the things that we've kind of talked about already. Um, but we can get into it if you want to um, uh, jump sure. into here, uh, Paul. Bro, bro, to, go with it, man. You, uh, let me get that pulled up here. So again, this was posted by VGC. They just wrote this article today. Um, I didn't really find any new information, again, uh, from outside of what we already knew and things that we've already discussed. Um, but VGC is pretty credible. Um, VideoGamesChronicle.com. For those who aren't familiar, uh, this article is written by Andy Robinson, uh, another one of those respectable. Shout out to Andy. Great yeah, dude. He's a respectable. So that was one of the other reasons why I wanted to kind of bring it up because uh, I know he's a respectable article writer and also VGC is uh, one of the best ones uh, that I like to tend to go to. So, hey, Casino, what's going on, man? Nam, what's how you feeling? So, um, in this article that was posted today, 29th of uh, October, 2022, uh, although this says 3.54 p.m. And it's um, yeah. 12.17. Um, so maybe they're in a different area. Um, I, I, I saw this like a couple hours ago, so whatever. <laughs> but they go on to say Microsoft's head of gaming has commented on the ongoing investigations into his proposed acquisition of Activision Blizzard stating that he believes heavy scrutiny from regulators is fair and warranted. He goes on, uh, I go on to say on the article, regulators around the world are currently holding a magnifying glass to the proposed deal, with the UK CMA notably expanding its investigation voicing concerns that it could harm PlayStation and other game subscription services, something which Microsoft has dismissed. Um, again, Microsoft being the... And having the less amount of subscribers in the service currently compared to the competitor definitely leaves them in a good space. Um, the other thing too is that um, I saw somebody running with, uh, what if the FDA <laughs> doesn't approve the deal? That. I saw that too. That was old. Somebody brought it back up too. That happened early and then somebody brought it back up in a contract. Uh, so, hey. Uh, uh, to the circus, man. So uh, if anybody is concerned, um, you know, shout out to the FDA. Uh, they're going to make sure that the food is yeah. going to be good <laughs> and uh, whatever deal is done. Uh, when Activision Blizzard gets signed, they'll make sure there's pizza for everybody. Anyway, <laughs> that just that completely threw me for a loop. But I was like, really? This is what we're like. People just people are like will easily embarrass themselves. Anyway. Yes. Uh, the CMA has officially expanded its investigation to second phase. While the European competition watchdog has set its own provisional deadline of November 8th to clear the deal or choose to uh, enter a second phase, the U.S. FTC is expected to rule by later November. Speaking during the Wall Street Journal Tech Live event, uh, this week, Xbox head Phil Spencer said he believed scrutiny around such a significant deal was warranted and, re and revealed that he had been meeting regularly with regulators around the world. Of course he is, guys. Like, this is the biggest deal in Microsoft's history. Everybody's going to want to know what's going on with this deal. What's their plan? What are they trying to do behind the scenes? Uh, the board is going to want to have those conversations. They have questions answered. Uh, yeah, and as Hargeet said last night on Xbox Ultimate, it was a great point, one that I thought of, but whatever. It's just it's funny when somebody else says it and you're like, right. oh, yeah, I meant I've been meaning to say that this is the biggest deal in entertainment history. Period. And now the gaming industry has elevated itself to the point where regular regulatory bodies are taking a look at it. It's been it's been underneath the shadows for a long time. Steal the movie industry and all that kind of stuff. This now they've elevated themselves. So, yes, all of this is going to come underneath. They're, and then none of these regulatory bodies know what they're talking about because they never paid attention to the industry. 
Right, right. This is something that's completely new for them, right? Uh, so they go on to say, uh, and I had to move some things around here. All right, so uh, then it goes on to say, because I wanted to get it on screen for you guys too. It might be surprising to people, but I'm not expecting uh, on doing a $70 billion deal. Oh, sorry, not expecting. It might be surprising to people, but I'm not an expert on doing $70 billion deals. Phil said, but I do know that we're very focused on getting approval in the major jurisdictions, and I'm spending a lot of time in Brussels, London, and with the FTC here in the US. Phil says, I would say the discussions have been very fair and honest. It is a big acquisition, there's no doubt. Microsoft in its role in the tech industry is a large com tech company. And I do think the discussion around an acquisition of this size is warranted. And I've appreciated the time to go spend. He also added, we're really focused on getting the deal approved in the markets. I'm confident in that. I was just in London last week, continuing to have discussions with all the regulatory boards and remain confident that we'll get the deal approved. Much of the discussion from the regulators and games industry around the Activision, Activision Blizzard deal had focused on Call of Duty. Despite repeated assurances from Xbox that Call of Duty series, which is regularly the best selling release of the year in the US, will remain on PlayStation, Sony has been engaged in increasingly public war of words over the proposed deal and told the press that Microsoft's offer in regards to the future of COD was inadequate on many levels. Although, let's keep in mind that Sony can cut deals and make sure that they have specific operators and content for you in Call of Duty to try to sway your opinion on what platform that you which you want to invest your time into. Double XP, battle pass tier skips. They literally said it's okay to give you guys a pay for progression. That's what, that's what that XP is. I don't care what, how you feel about it, and I know it's not that big of a deal in Call of Duty. At the end of the day, PlayStation gave its gamers a benefit, and that's pay to progress. You guys are getting it. Whether you want to think that's a big thing or not, it's not that big of a thing, it's Call of Duty. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Well, I've also been told in this Call of Duty it's a little bit differently. You don't well, just prestige like you do a previous one. And it's, petty, a big, and it's a big deal still. No, you're oh, not okay. being petty because it's a big deal because Sony's made it a big deal. In these conversations yes. Yes. that's one of their points to the regulators is that if xbox has it they're going to offer bonuses and benefits to their consumers that won't be available on playstation yet they're paying for it with the marketing right they're doing the exact same thing so they made it a big deal steal in the yeah. grand scheme of things we've never thought of it as like no whatever I, I don't but care. right i don't care but at the end of the day they made it a big deal so that's why we talk about it but that's also that's also always been the conversation too. It's like when those deals get cut, I don't look at it and be like, "Oh, oh stupid." I look at them like, "Oh, they're trying to get more people into their ecosystem." Duh. I mean, that's what that's what it makes me consider. I do consider that when games get released to different platforms. Okay, what do you get for it? Getting from different platforms. There was also a time where if you bought games from specific places, pre-orders, where you got specific things for pre-ordering in a certain certain place. Wow, what, how creative. <laughs> like, and, and, and Sappho, yes, to your question, which we're kind of answering here. Uh, Sappho said, I know this is off topic, but do any of you think how much Sony pays to block games for Game Pass could potentially come up in the investigation? It already yeah. has. We yeah, saw the has. Brazilian mm -hmm. notes. Xbox is laying out all the receipts, Sappho. Xbox is laying out all the receipts. Again, these regulatory bodies don't have any real idea of how the industry works. Microsoft and Xbox are educating them right now on how yep. this works and how Sony has been bullying the industry for a very long time so yes that again the, the entire conversation that's going that's going on right now and we get to back to the main show uh the entire conversation that's really happening right now guys and again i'm not in these boardroom meetings i don't know what's going on um we're completely clueless we could be but we could be our chair guys right we could sit we could sit here have an honest conversation and, and kind of put our brains together put two and two together put information that we've gathered for being in the community being interested in the industry and having some enthusiasm about what's going on overall and say that look guys you got to get people you got to get people into your ecosystem the way that it's been tr tr traditionally done is by cutting deals Xbox, and the, this is the conversation, Xbox is doing it different, and it's a problem.
That's the only reason why this is the crop part of the discussion. Because if it wasn't, if it was happening differently, if Xbox was the one that was just cutting deals for exclusivity, unless it got to a point where Sony started going into meetings and they get walked right out because Microsoft cut such a good deal with them that it made it pointless. Because in, in reality, whether you want to accept this or not, Microsoft can go in and overbid Sony on every deal that they do if it was really that serious. Yeah, absolutely. I, like do you guys like I, that's what that's that's what's funny to me because it's like people don't consider that when they have these conversations it's like oh well playstation went in there and outbid xbox well obviously microsoft didn't want it like that's or, or they just didn't want to pay or they, or just they didn't want to pay that wasn't price the value again right. they could they could outbid sony for final fantasy 7 remake yeah. but sony would have upcharged it so high right that it that you know, Phil probably would. Is it worth it at that point? Is it you worth know? it? Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, and um, like Muppet was saying, and, and a lot of these people that are in these industries outside of gaming, um, you're right, have no clue. Um, well, Muppet says they don't know about real life, <laughs> but uh, and some people, he also said earlier, well, they, they don't have any clues about gaming. They don't know how this works. They don't know how this industry um, has kind of been, a, been staying afloat this entire time. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, okay. Whoa, that what was that. Uh, <laughs> things, put just, up? Things, things just kind of got crazy right there. Everything kind of froze. I thought my computer crashed. I was about to say, oh, whoa, 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 what whoa, happened? Whoa, whoa. Um, no, but yeah, they have no clue. And like Paul mentioned multiple times, this is a perfect opportunity. Um, and it's actually convenient for Microsoft because they're the one that are doing the talking. Nobody else. And they can do the talking not only on one side of the coin from a place of power because they have money, but they also can do it from a, from a place of weakness because they are the weakest in the industry, technically. Technically. Quote, unquote. Technically. And sure, but cloud could blow up and there's a conversation to have monopolies and everything else. But, but what happened to, oh, well, they could just come to the, back to the deal later. Like, oh, so, so now they can't come back to the deal later. It has to be done first, right the first time. They, can, they have to consider everything in the future right now. And I thought you guys said they can always reconsider later. So it's like, what is it? The conversation is going many different ways. Uh, but again, I do agree with Phil in this article where he's saying like, hey, man, I mean, I understand it needs to be, it needs to be critiqued. The biggest deal in our company's history is the biggest thing, tech deal in, in that has been done. Yeah. <laughs> like, so of course, $70 billion, yeah, scrutinize it. Ask questions. We want you to ask questions with a right. smile on his face. Right, and, and again, I don't know if the article was on to say this deal, but this, this has all come from the Wall Street Journal. Um, they had a um, they had a, a tech they do touch on uh, that. conference. They had a tech conference. Did, did did they touch on him talking about Call of Duty specifically again or no? Um, he says uh, they does say here that uh, despite repeated assurances from Xbox that the Call of Duty series, which is regularly the best selling release, will remain on PlayStation. Uh, I read that part. That was the main part that they got into. Okay. Um, the okay. other thing was that Microsoft stands that it would continue to release COD on PlayStation yeah. uh, for the foreseeable future. The exact claim that for its gaming business, the company was more interested in what the addition of Activision Blizzard could do for its mobile growth. Yeah, and because Phil, during this tech talk as well, reiterated once again that they consider Call of Duty exactly like Minecraft. That this is its yes. own, it's its own platform, and they have zero intention of not only keeping it on PlayStation but expanding it further. Yeah. Just like Minecraft, they want it on Switch. They want it everywhere. That they consider Call of Duty its own thing, and they are not going to mess with that thing. They are not going, and and they want to grow it. That the Call of Duty is too valuable, an IP to not grow out even further. So he made those statements blatantly clear yet again, that the, again, and they've done nothing. And again, I know that there's probably some language in the Minecraft deal that said that they had to keep it everywhere or whatever else, but they've seen what they that power is from Minecraft. They've seen the power in Minecraft. They've seen how it happens if you grow out an IP like that. And Call of Duty is one of those special case scenarios that requires them to handle it with extreme care, and they are planning on being good caretakers of that IP, not limit, limiting it, but actually growing it even further. And I think that was very, very important. 
that Phil brought that up. Again, again, for all the people in the back who haven't heard it. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Again, um, Phil's talking that big boy talk here. He goes again and reiterates most of the dialogue that's out there has been around consoles and how Xbox and PlayStation consoles compete with each other. But when we think about 3 billion people playing video games, there's only about 200 million households that play on console. The vast majority of people who play do so on the device that's already in their pockets, which is their phone, which is another good segue because me and Pong are not mobile gamers, right? I mean, there, I think there's a lot of people. I know where you're going. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people who wouldn't consider themselves as mobile gamers, and you know, even us, you know, we take the RTS perspective and try to pull ourselves out of the world and try to be as open as possible sometimes. But even us can be kind of biased towards what we would prefer. So when a game like, for an example, a Marvel Snap comes to mobile devices. And again, as somebody who's not a mobile gamer, I don't like playing on a mobile device like that. It's just it's too much. I'm already on, not on my phone like that as it is. And when I am, I'm just being nosy with little random stuff. For a game like Marvel Snap to come out and be so simplistic yet so deep and pull the type of attention it has from me, um, and I'm, I can only speak, speak for myself specifically, although I know it drew has drawn Pong in, especially as somebody who's not, who's kind of given up on that whole genre, really, of not saying that he's not interested in it or whatever. I mean, he has some interest, but it's just not the same, right? Or is what he would prefer from it. Even to pull someone like Pong in who really wouldn't want to play a mobile game shows you the potential of the audience that Phil is trying to reach that we here at Living Split Screen want to reach with our, our listening audience, right? It's that, same, it's that same kind of thing. We want to get it to, out to as many people as possible because we don't know who's going to end up listening, playing, or paying attention. Marvel's, Looking forward to the Living Split Screen card game. Uh, living see. Split Screen card game? <laughs> <laughs> we, we need one. We need one. But Marvel Snap has definitely now, like... I can't say somebody who plays Marvel Snap is not a gamer because I mean that is a game. There's there's strategy that goes into it. It's not a uh it's not a it's one of those that goes from checkers to chess real quick in six easy turns. To, easy to pick up, very mm -hmm. hard to master. Yes. There's a lot of strategy involved. A lot of strategy, and there's gonna be a lot of different decks that you can end up building and things to that nature. I only say that because it's a it's something that I wasn't expecting to pull my attention. When it first released, I was like, man, I'm not about to, I'm about to get into that, man. I don't, I don't about to play, nobody about to try to play that. And then randomly, I saw somebody else bring it up or I saw an ad for it and I downloaded it. I said, you know, I like Marvel, whatever. I'll give it a shot. I, that's how I do with phone games sometimes. I'm just like, I'll download it, give it a shot. And before you knew it, I was in that bitch. For, I was on that for like an hour. Just, just running it back to back to back to back. And uh, we had a conversation last night. And we were like, hey, do you think all the people that own Marvel Snap are real people? I was like, if this is how they have the game set up, yeah, I think we're all playing real people. It's real people that we're playing, which is the other unique thing, is that it's like, this is a PvP game. <laughs> Throw it through. Which is, which is badass, unless somebody clarifies that for me. Now, I'm not going to go to Candy Crush. Like, Candy Crush, that's not for me. Marvel Snap is for me. Wow, somebody made a game that appealed to Steel. Somebody made a game that appealed to Pong on a platform that I usually don't play on. It's like Fortnite. I don't play Fortnite like that. I have recently. I can't say that I haven't bought skins, though. <laughs> right? It's, it, it works. Again, what did, what did Strauss say, Pong? Build it and they will come. Oh, Make a good man. game, they will come. Oh man! Wow. Pause. Pause. I think I, I, that's what I'm gonna name this episode. Make a good, <laughs> make a good game and they will come. Oh, no, Marvel! Marvel Snap is unique, Steel, um, in the fact that the excess. Again, I'm not yeah. even the biggest card. Me oh, either. I, yeah. I I have been in the past. Listen, I played Hearthstone when it first came out. I actually invested money in Hearthstone. I actually bought packs in Hearthstone at one point. I thought that was going to be a game that I continued to play, but I eventually dropped off of it. I'm not saying Marvel Snap is any different. I caught myself playing it at work, and I was like, okay, look, 
<laughs> I got to get down to business. This is too easy to pick up and play some rounds in. So, but Marvel Snap for being what it is, as we just said, highly accessible, easy to pick up, but then you start getting into it. You start getting into the deck. You start getting into the powers. They got a unique system where you've got three, three locations that you can play cards on. And those locations open up as the rounds go on, and it's a total of six rounds. So it's fast. Yes. It's a fast hand, too, which is great. Not looking to play Magic the Gathering where I'm playing for four hours. Okay, That's not what I'm looking to do. So it's got three, three locations where you can play cards at. You can play a total of four cards at each location. Each location opens up as the rounds go on, and those locations have um, unique mechanics to them. So all of a sudden, you could have played a card there, and, and it opens up, and all of a sudden that card becomes more powerful or something changes how you're strategizing to play. And it, it's as simple as you want to wind up, you want to win, you got to win two out of the three locations in total points with your cards, right? That's how this works. That's how simplistic it is. But strategizing how you're going to play your game, uh, how you play your cards. You can not play any cards if you want to in a round. Yep. I've done that before. I've done mod to all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a lot to this. And all the cards, some of the cards um, are just plain cards. They have a, 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 a play value to them. So you got to have enough points in that round to play that yep. card. And then they've got a power point total that adds to your total wherever you play them, whatever location you play them at. But then there's other cards that have unique abilities to them, which obviously changes the field of play or changes those, those specific cards you've already played or will change a card that you play in the future. All of that comes in. And I got to say, like I said, between the accessibility, between the fast pace, and then the deeper strategy that you start getting into as you play it more, this game has it all. And I've seen more and more people saying, yo, and I, I hit everybody up in the DMs and I'm like, look, I'm not, I got an admission to make. Marvel Snap is damn good. It's better than it should be. It's, cra it's crazy. <laughs> and then the cards, you can upgrade those cards as well. And all it's doing is upgrading. It doesn't upgrade the powers or anything like that. All it does is upgrade the look. But you get those 3D cards. They look freaking so awesome. Jeff Grubb and Giant Bomb, they were showing them off um, the last uh, cast that they had. They were showing off some of their cards that they upgraded to 3D. It works so well on mobile, and when yeah. you show it online, like through you know through the show, that 3D just pops off the screen. Like it's crazy good looking. So yeah, Marvel Snap is better than it should be, and I suggest you know again, even if you're not a mobile gamer, it's quick, easy. Download it, and try it. Especially if you're a Marvel fan, you're gonna enjoy it. it it's got all the characters. Listen, they sold me when I started seeing all the X Men in there. When I could get Colossus, when I could get yep. Night, when I could get Nightcrawler. Man, I was in. I was in. The only thing I hated is that they start you off with, with uh, 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 Cyclops. I was uh, like, yo. Yeah. I was like, yo, we didn't need Cyclops in here. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. Uh, yeah, the the 3D gold print. Uh, the 3D with the gold print is nice. Yeah, man, they do a really, they really, really good job making it, making it feel special right and I, I think that's what makes it different especially since you're playing with those cards too yeah. you can't wait to pull that card out and it's like oh it pops and it looks cool and uh it's, it's and they a really don't make you game. spend a lot of money they don't no. make you spend a lot of money either you can play it through and earn a lot of stuff yeah you can earn might everything get to it's the 100%. point might get to the point where you're investing enough like i do with free-to-play games where I'm like okay i want to give pass. these devs back a little something grab that battle pass or whatever the case may be right. what is the battle pass like five bucks it's 10, ten bucks and 10 bucks 10 bucks for a battle pass so but you can earn all the cards you can keep playing they give you plenty of bonuses to keep playing um you know it's not over the top uh diablo uh what uh diablo immortal uh type cash grab it's not they're not they're not asking you to spend a ton of money to play this game so marvel snap is better than it should be i agree steel yeah it's worthy it's worthy the, it's, it's, it's really it's really it's really weird really strange um has me worried but again uh <laughs> it is what it is it's a, again great um, and I have the exact, I have the exact quote here. I was being petty. Ultimately, the consumer votes. And if we create great hits, which is our business, then consumers will show up and no one can take that away from us. Shout out to uh, Strauss, Strauss Zelnick. Good, good, good yeah, Strauss. Love him or hate him, dude's intelligent as all get out. And he's yeah. not wrong. No. I, I get it. It is what it is. You take that for however you want. 
Um, I will call this episode "Create Great Hits and Consumers Will Come." Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't think of a better idea. We, better uh, we see that we receive that with Modern Warfare right now. So uh, I, 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 saw I just Jahid. say it. Like <laughs> Jahid, Jahid goes off topic, but my buddy I game share with just <sighs> sent me a picture of him buying Modern Warfare Two. Bro, I'm, Warzone I'm tell- isn't even out yet. I'm telling, <laughs> dog. I am telling you, people. This is the comeback for for Modern Warfare again it's for never, like that. Yeah. It's, it hasn't declined like it's declined, oh, but it's but it's oh it's, it's still a top right seller. Yeah. yeah, it's about to break. Right. To go right back. I've right said back that, up. I said that from the beginning. It wasn't a big, uh, it wasn't a big guess in any way, shape, or form to say that. But the hype has been real and it's carrying over now. Modern Warfare Two is going to break the records for Call of Duty. Oh, and, and nah, I man, he says not my type of game, but glad y'all enjoy it. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, again it's not my type of game either no me, no it's like, <laughs> that's the crazy thing about it because it's like i find myself up hey i'm in the bathroom all right yeah get a couple rounds <laughs> in <real quick. laughs> you know what i'm saying like it's, it's yeah, just it's crazy that's how easy it is but that's, that's how that's how mobile yeah. games work and the games last like a few minutes most of the time that's the other yeah. crazy thing it's like it respects your time mm-hmm. yeah, for sure yeah. hey Hey, good content, yeah, that's why people. Candy come. Crush, Candy Crush makes more money than Call of Duty still to this day. Yeah, folks. Candy Crush is so, killing it still. Yeah. Crazy as it sounds, that's how, how big mobile gaming is. That's why Microsoft wants a that pie. That's so one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Um, all right. I think for me, I, I didn't have anything else that I necessarily wanted to get into today. Um, as far as uh, what I had lined yeah. up, I know we yeah. did have some people. Oh, excuse me. We did have some people that uh, left Rocksteady. Uh, so yeah. that was another piece of important information that came out, especially with Suicide Squad um, not being out yet. Um, but let me find that article if I can get to it, unless you're... I got it if you don't have it. Uh, I just got it. Uh... Yeah, I mean, again, the turmoil continues over I at WB. It. Yeah, um, there's some. There's some... Uh... You know, again, we've known for a while there's rumors out there that uh, this is a done deal, that WB Discovery will be sold to Universal or um, when they are able to do that. Uh, shout out to Benji Sales. But if you go look up at any of the articles in the entertainment industry, Hollywood Reporter, et cetera, it's like a well-known fact that this deal is like all but done. That They just can't do it legally yet. Um, so we know WB Discovery uh, on the movie side, it has been cutting back. They're delaying releases. They're trimming the fat big time. Talked about the games nonstop here about whether or not that might have affected Gotham Knights. Um, hopefully it's not going to affect Suicide yeah. Squad and Rocksteady, but you can tell the turmoil is real. So Rocksteady founders are leaving after 18 there you go. years. Thank you. Jamie Walker and Sefton Hill both leaving. They mentioned that they are heading for another adventure together. Um, don't really need to read the article here still we can okay, cover okay, it okay. this way it's fine it's not that big it, oh i mean it's a big I mean, deal it's but it's, a big... there's not a whole lot of information they didn't right. say much right? i don't think they it's as say... big of a deal it's not like a a deal breaker because i think i actually think no. the game is done and that's why they left. yeah the game that's why they're leaving right now that, that's fine but they're starting a new adventure together and i think that's the bigger thing with all of this turmoil steel and i'll take it you you can jump in wherever you want but i i'm just gonna say with all the turmoil there's going to be a we we had talked about this in the past during acquisition season how much I wanted WB Discovery to be purchased by Xbox. I thought that was the best buy that they could have done. Obviously that it sounds like it's not going to happen. Yeah. And it doesn't sound like the game studios are being sold. The game studios are profitable. Um so it's a big piece of the pie. Um so they sound like they're going to keep the game studios, to keep the licensed IP um and hold on to it until the universal sale goes through and then yep. Universal will decide what they want to do with it, right? So They'll probably sell comcast i should say but it's nbc Universe. yeah we'll probably end up selling it yeah yes maybe maybe but what i want to say what what, what what's curious if we're going to travel to speculation town here is yeah, that sure. jamie walker and sefton hill are leaving they are going to pull a lot of talent steel yeah uh, oh, there's going to be course, a lot yeah. of people looking to get out of wb discovery mm-hmm. from That's those safe. studios they are going to pull the top talent from those studios if their new adventure which it and we're assuming right now they didn't say any specifics, but I'm going to assume they're starting their own studio. We just saw this with Jade Raymond and a bunch of the staff from Google Stadia um, when they left and formed Haven Studio. And who swooped in and funded that studio? Well, that was Sony. 
Right. Um, and they started working on a game for Sony. And within months, Sony announced the official acquisition of Haven Studio. Right. right? Huge get. Jade yeah. Raymond, again, Big. I've given her her flowers Huge. here. People undersell her for a variety of different reasons. Jade Raymond is freaking ridiculously smart and knows this industry and is good at her job. Um, that was a huge get for Sony. I wanted Xbox to go after Jade when she left school. Go say, I thought she would have been awesome. But you have an opportunity here, Steele. You're wrapped up in this ABK deal. Um, we know that's holding back acquisitions that Xbox may be wanting to make right now. They're trying to cause as little ripples as possible while they get this through the regulatory bodies. They don't want to flex more money, more muscle uh, right now. You got an opportunity right here with these two. You aren't going to be able to go get those WB studios and those IP because we know that's part of it. Xbox right. would want the IP. Yeah, that's all. That's got two part. guys who have been the founders and formation of some excellent studios. They're going to pull talent from those studios. Plus they're going to pull talent from out elsewhere. They know how to make games. Yeah. Quality games at that. Quality games. They like, know how to do this. This could be, this could be Xbox's naughty dog. I quality. Right. Right. And if Xbox does have ideas of jumping into the licensed IP ring, You've got two gentlemen who are well versed in the contracts, well yeah. versed in handling licensed IP, well versed in all the different areas you need them to be. In. You go fund this studio, your Xbox. You go get this studio. You go talk to these two and say, "Look, we're going to back you. You don't even have to talk acquisition right no. now. Say we're going to fund man. you. Whatever Fine. your next project is, we're funding it because we already know." your talent and we know the talent you're going to attract and what's the hardest thing in this industry right now to go find talent. talent. It's all been eaten up. You go get these two guys uh, again, not as necessarily an acquisition, but you go fund these guys, start the studio up, get the ABK deal, go through, see how their projects coming along. And then you can go ahead and announce that you acquired their studio. But I think this is a perfect opportunity. This is a unique opportunity. Not saying they, they want to do that. I'm just in speculation town now, folks. I just think that this is one of those opportunities that pops up so infrequently when big founding partners of a studio leave to go do their go do a new thing and you know they are going to have the respect of the industry they're going to have the respect of devs they previously worked with they're going to be able to draw those people in you get them at the ground floor while they're starting something new you give them the cash necessary to go do what they do best which is create games you form that instant partnership instant relationship and don't forget folks don't forget another big part of that WB discovery purchase that I always talked about the Xbox making um, that I wanted them to was because Bat Matt Booty has a relationship with most of these people. Matt Booty knows these guys personally. He's worked with most of the WB studios, um, not all the devs I'm saying, but all the big shots. He's worked with them at some point between Midway, et cetera. Um, and he was, he was heading up a lot of that stuff. So I think this is the perfect spot here to be able to go make something happen for Xbox. I think this would be great. Yeah. One, 100%. Uh, again, uh, another, another feather, right? Uh, the yeah. feather in the cap, I, th I think it would be. Um, but I, that was something that I did want to bring up just because some people, I haven't heard anybody really talking about it. One, uh, two, when I first saw it especially coming off the heel of the Gotham Knights because it kind of started that conversation with yeah. Rocksteady and their games because Rocksteady has only really made a Batman game. Right. That's what they're known for. Um, but you can't deny the quality and the attention to detail that they did put into those games. Uh, so it again, and obviously they're a quality studio, right? Um, we'll see how quality they are in today's day, uh, day and era once we get Suicide Squad. Um, be but... What I can say is as much as Gotham Knights may not be a necessarily like an Arkham follow-up, I do think that Suicide Squad is going to be that next-gen leap that people were looking for coming from Arkham, right? Um, that the, the true transition they were looking for, the difference feels completely different, feels more realistic from at least the trailer that we saw, that gameplay trailer that we got. Um, it's gonna be the co-op Arkham that everybody that, wants. Yeah, that the co-op Arkham that everybody wants. Yeah. From the trailer that we got, dog, like yeah. that game looked different. 
And uh, it could be another one that sets the bar. So it could, uh, again, uh, if they end up getting that game to release and go does well, and then Xbox gets in those conversa conversations with them again, they're going to be free agents. Or maybe they yeah. just want to stay free. But and you're always going to want some backing, right? You want to want oh, some yeah. money. You want some type of funding. You don't have to acquire. <laughs> just funding. Just right. funding a new studio. Just Try like they out. did. Yeah, exactly. Just fund that first project. Let them get goes. it out the door, see how it goes, all that good stuff. But you just know they're going to bring in the talent steal. And again, yeah. it's just a perfect opportunity with two people, veterans, who have founded their own studio, turned it into something special. Yep. You know what they can do, right? And it's just, it's a perfect opportunity. I feel like so, if anybody, if anybody's worth putting a bag behind, um, it probably, it would be them. At least, at least try it out. See if they're happy yeah. with it. If not. And the game yeah. could still release everywhere. You know what I mean? If they wanted to do it that way, or uh, I mean, I, I, again, I think Xbox, uh, Microsoft should get a little bit more bullyish and say, "Hey, no, nah, if we're going to do that type of deal, that's going to be specifically for us." But I, I think it'd be dope. Yep. Uh, live, live supremacy says MS can open, reopen, or open up new studios. Yep. Yeah, I mean they can. Uh, but again, they've also had to play catch up in a lot of different ways. Um, at least fifteen. Uh, on, on, I would say almost two decades worth of. Uh, making sure that they build up their internal staff uh, with, as far as their studios and everything. Uh, I would say they're, they're about almost two decades behind on doing that, uh, which is why they've doubled down, tripled down, quadrupled down <laughs> on making sure that they have what they need at this time. And it's not easy. It's not no. easy. We saw this with the initiative, right, Steel? We yep. saw this with the initiative. They tried to build a brand new studio. Hey, it's still there, uh, but we saw... Again, potentially the problems. You bring in the biggest free agents from you try to create the dream team out there. Doesn't always necessarily gel right, yeah. right? And we saw the initiative lose a lot of big, big people out of that. Um, mm -hmm. It's not easy to build your own studio. That's why I say you got two guys who have already done it, proven right. it. Fund them. Go, go. Let them do their thing um, and do it for you. And I think it would be great uh, for that. Joe Dunmore says, I game share on PS5 with my son. And picked up Modern Warfare 2. Haven't played multiplayer in 10 or more years and got my ass handed to me. Scared to go back. LOL. Listen, Joe, that's okay, brother. That's a part of Call of Duty, especially if you yeah. have not played multiplayer been a minute, in 10 years. Oh, yeah. And this one's It'll different. You can't yeah. expect to play this one like the probably the most recent Call of Duty you've played. Um, you can play fast, but it's it's a little bit more slower. You want to take your time, get your aim right. Um, I've been recommending for people, uh, if you have a question about sensitivity and things, I would recommend for people to start off right around seven sensitivity. Yes, um, that's where I'm at. It is marked at high, um, but the the highest number is 20. I say start off at seven, see how you feel. Like I'm at seven, and it yeah. feels pretty. it feels pretty good. Um, I bumped it up to nine. It felt like it was a little too much. I do have some instances where I feel like it could be a little bit higher, but then a lot of the time seven feels like that perfect, perfect point. I would say start off at seven to kind of feel your way out from there. Still see if you feel like you made any improvements. And if not, I, I just continue at it, man. It's games multiplayer. People are going to sweat. People are going to run into people that are just going to completely destroy you. Um, again, and if, you, and if you're not playing with sweaties, the skill based matchmaking, yeah. Joe, you will find your your footing yeah, because you will be playing against people of the same ilk. Um, so you will find your footing again. It's not like playing with Steel or Jasper where you're thrown <laughs> into the sweatiest of sweaties. Uh, and I'm always towards the bottom middle to bottom that's where i'm at but it's okay because it makes me a better player and then when i go play with randoms and i get based upon that's completely skill, different <laughs> yeah yeah now i'm at now now i'm middle to the top that's the way yeah. it works and it is a pretty for as much complaining has been out there yeah. um about the skill-based matchmaking you know i get jasper's point too even though he is a sweaty he doesn't want to sweat all the time, but skill-based matchmaking does put him in those lobbies, and so he's kind of forced to. Otherwise, mm -hmm. he's going to feel like he's not having a good time. So, you know, it happens. But, Joe, keep keep at it, brother. Keep at it. This is a great game. This is going to yeah. be a long – again, we're not getting to Call of Duty next year. So huh. this is – you're going to be able to play Enjoy this. It. They're going to expand this. It's going to be – there's a lot of different modes too, Joe. Go try yeah. Go try Ground War. Ground War we'll is a totally different experience. Yeah, try co-op. Survival or whatever totally different experiences so you don't have to just play the classic multiplayer maps if you don't uh so a lot to a lot to get into uh blue blue fc says i miss mag shouting joe dunmore 
Yep. On gaming after dark, yeah, man. That's why I try to I try to do it for him. I try, yeah. I try, I try. I did, I did it, I did it when I was on the gaming after dark over at Newf, and Newf actually oh, said I did a pretty good job. So there you I'm go. like, yeah, Steele and I do it every weekend when Joe shows up in our chat. So that, that's a fact. I, I, I love it. I love, when I you do. when you got a good name, you just got to make sure you say it right. Like Splendiferous, Splendiferous. Shout out to uh, <laughs> shout out to the Lords, man. Uh, love everything that they do over there too. Uh, Nick says on controller, I used to play mouse. Uh, what? Mouse and keyboard uh, that you put K and M. That's that's <laughs> that threw me for a loop because you put it backwards. Uh, keyboard and mouse on COD PC. It definitely made me better. Invasion is a great mode too. Big team battle. Yeah, again, that's uh, yeah, that's Call of Duty's version of big team battle of in Halo. Um, and again, it is a direct copy of what Battlefield does, but Call of Duty has. It wasn't good before, but they are learning now. and it is getting better. Again, yeah. I played in the beta. Mav loved it in the beta. Mav absolutely loved it. Yeah, he was having a good time with it. Uh, I liked it. it. Again, Battlefield is still the king of yeah. that type of game. I want to play but, that. I'll play that. Yeah, but Call of Duty <laughs> has gotten better. Yeah, it's for not sure. Bad. They, they've definitely learned some lessons. So um, that is awesome. Um, I don't know, Steele, if you want to wrap things up, I'll get a couple things, a uh, couple quick uh, notes here to yeah, everybody, because again, we do have a couple smaller things I want to make mention of uh, that we didn't get to real quick. Uh, first of all, if you didn't go watch the new Redfall trailer, go watch the new Redfall trailer. If you have any interest in this game or you're on the fence, this trailer that they kind of made it spooky, Halloween-ish for this time, I wish they would have had a beta this week, it would have been perfect, but anyways... The trailer, latest trailer for Redfall is absolutely amazing. The best one they put out yet. I am freaking excited for this game uh, for sure. Um, we got an official launch date for Wulong. Yes, uh, They March, finally right? announced March 3rd. So not February, but that following week. So Wrong, it's, it's going to be a... Yeah, we're going to get slammed come the beginning. Um, another big one. A studio that I also believe is promoting themselves to be sold. Uh, CD Projekt Red made another announcement this week. CD Projekt Red gave us the roadmap. Well, they left out one important thing because they're not the main studio doing it. It's they're going to be monitored. They're going to be producing it and they're going to be, you know, overseeing it. But they came out and announced that they have partnered with a studio called Fool's Theory. And Fool's Theory is going back and remaking Witcher 1 in UE5. Bro, this is huge. Witcher 1 was PC only. Yes. It was a totally different style totally different game. game. I saw people talking about this. Yes, yes. But they are going back and remaking the Witcher 1 in UE5. Look, we're not going to see this game three, four wow. years somewhere in that neighborhood. But this is a big announcement. Uh, a lot of people, uh, we all know how big Witcher is now. For to be able to go back, um, and if you never got a chance to experience it on PC, I never did. I watched some uh, friends play it on PC uh, back in the day. This is going to be a brand new experience because Witcher 1 does not hold up. It is one of those games that is way dated. You can't really go back and play it. Like Jez was explaining the battle system on, on Xbox 2. It's a completely different battle system. Like It's a rhythm-based type, almost Arkham, like early Arkham style. But you had, it was literally like a rhythm game. Really? You had to hit the buttons at the right moment to get a flow going. Like, it's this very strange uh, type of uh, system. So, but they, that was exciting. Uh, that's going to be a huge game when it finally drops. Hopefully, Fool's Theory, uh, can, you know, with the oversight from CD Projekt Red, does a great job. I can't wait to see what it looks like at UE5. Probably going to look absolutely amazing. I want to get that out there. We touch on the A. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. If 2023 isn't always full enough. What else we got? Bethesda, Bethesda this week announced that Fallout 4 is going to get a current gen yes. update for free on PlayStation and Xbox. So Fallout 4, yeah, we already got it boosted on Xbox Series consoles, right? It's already right. got the 60 frames mm -hmm. boost. But they're going to add the texture packs. They're going to add the frames. They're going to give us the... Um, mod content just like they did in skyrim except they're not charging anybody because you can only charge for skyrim you can't charge for fall four fall four didn't right. hit quite as much as they wanted to but they announced that they're going to give it away free uh next year 2023 we're going to get a fallout 4 series uh and playstation 5 uh patch so that was freaking amazing as well um what else we got here just any of the smaller topics don't think so hey uh playstation's london studio 
is working on a brand new untitled ah, yep. online co-op combat game as Steel and I and so many of others have been telling you all. The diversity is coming. Sony knows where they are weak. They are forcing the issue. They have so many studios working on not third-person, over-the-shoulder, narrative-driven games now, but this was another one. Uh, Co-op combat game set in fantasy London. Most ambitious game by the studio to date, built for the PS5, using the in-house Soho engine. So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, I do have one you... more. Yeah, go ahead. I uh, have one more, too, if you didn't see it. The one more that I've uh, actually, and it's something that got posted today, apparently Xbox subsidizes the cost of the Xbox Series X and S, and this is one thing we, of course, yeah. we figure, but um, apparently they subsidize it by 100 to $200 per console, Phil Spencer says. Microsoft aims to recoup that money with sales of accessories, games, and Game Pass subs. Um, that's coming from CNBC.com. Okay, well, that makes that's a lot of loss, man. <laughs> no, so that's a lot. Anyway, between a hundred to two hundred dollars. Yeah, you're a taking a huge upfront uh, loss on that. You wonder why they promote their controllers so much? They sell the shit out of them too. <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, the last one, I oh great. Uh, who said that? What? Oh, blue, was it Blue Moon? I think what? it was Blue Moon. Yeah, Blue Moon. Yep. He's never played Fallout yeah. Four, and now he's got another game to jump into. Exactly, Blue Moon. 2023 is going to be crazy, man. Um, the last one I wanted to do is out of the blue this week, folks. Somerville uh, from the former, uh, the, uh, oh, he yeah. had formed a new studio from the former main guy who did Inside. Um, listen, he went and formed his own studio. Somerville is the next game. It's in that line of that 2D, very atmospheric type adventure puzzle games, uh, which are critically acclaimed and hugely successful. Somerville, we've been waiting. Uh, a lot of people thought this had got pushed to 2023 because they had gone radio silent. We had seen it multiple shows. It looks better and better every time. Somerville, out of the blue, trailer. Oh, by the way, we're dropping November 15th. November 15th, out of the blue. So November 15th, and it's coming into Game Pass day and date as we already knew. So another indie title. Oh my God, Steel! Amazing stuff, man. I can't. Yeah, wait. man. It's, it's so so much content coming. There's something for everybody, right? Uh, that you can jump into, get get a run in, and it's coming from every avenue, man. Like the we're we're getting more variety, and again, it feels like I'm a, I'm on a soapbox, or I'm just saying the same things on a week to week basis. But we are literally in the age of accessibility and the age of variety. There's so many things that are happening for us that. I'm just, I'm just grateful, man. Like, the I, golden I'm, age steel. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to see how it continues to evolve. Um, I'm ready yeah. to see what else that we get from it. How it uh, presses. So, man, it, it blows my mind every time. Every time. Yeah. See, Blue Moon had missed that announcement too. Yeah, Blue Moon. It's just crazy. We're just getting these announcements out of, everywhere. It's you can't keep up some days, man. If you're not looking at Twitter every day or pulling news sources, you're not going to see this stuff. But yeah, Somerville, November fifteenth, everybody. You're absolutely correct, Steel. This is why we've been preaching this since we started this show. It is the main philosophy behind this show is that this is the golden age, that this is the time to enjoy it, that this is the most exciting time that's ever been in this gaming industry. Yeah, there's been a lot of different time frames throughout the generations that have had seen advancement and seen accessibility and that's seen that kind of, but nothing like this. No, this is transitional. This is a this is transformative. For this industry things that are happening today with the abk deal with all this stuff going down this is the stuff that is going to dictate where the next 10 15 20 years go and then there's a bunch of unknowns in there that like Steele said earlier in the show somebody could make a breakthrough on quantum computing somebody could make a breakthrough in vr somebody could do something that completely changes it yet again and all of a sudden what we thought was impossible now becomes possible that's where we're at with this industry and why because there's more people more money more talent investing right now into this industry than at any other time in history and that's why it's the number one entertainment form in the world that's why strauss says we got another shout out to strauss again i got another 20 years minimum of growth in this industry before we even get close to peak this is the best time ever to be a part of it man i'm so lucky yes i'm starting to feel my age yes you know, Fallout 5, 
Jez posted about him being in his 40s when Fallout 5, and I had to post it on his. I said, Jez, assuming it comes out in eight, eight years, which is best case scenario, I will literally be 55 when Fallout 5 shows up. But I'm so happy to be an adult during this time frame, to be enjoying this and to watch this growth and to be able to have podcasts like this one to talk about it. Because, again, people are going to look back, especially the younger generation who doesn't have the history I do, this is going to be their history now yeah. going forward. They're going to look back and go, wow, what a time that was. That was crazy, man. You remember that? You remember 2023, like the most historical year in gaming with all those games that came out? I mean, that's that's what they're going to be talking about in the future. So I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end towards the end of our show, so you know what that means. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're new here. You just think that it's over. We're about to start giving outros and everything else. No, it is time for this day in gaming, the section where one, uh, I make Pong feel old. Two, I do it because gaming is art and should be treated as such. Uh, you know, again, we just talked about it a little bit earlier. It's always amazing to see where we have come, to see where we are now, uh, which is the biggest reason why I do this. Again, I'm, I'm probably gonna end up playing some Call of Duty multiplayer, right? And I'm looking at this list and Super, Final Fantasy II on Super Nintendo was released in 1991, guys. And I'm playing Call of Duty. Like, you can't tell me that you're not like, you're not dumbfounded by this. Like, that is crazy to think about. Definite, that's the definition of insanity. Uh, you're all mute, Paul. Shout out to Jacob who says he's going to be uh, 30s when uh, Fallout uh, hits. Congratulations, oh, uh, Jacob, you youngin. <laughs> uh, and then Blue Moon on the opposite end uh, towards my way says he'll be 60. Hey, but he says, luckily, that's the new 40 these there you days. Go. Listen, as long as you take care of yourself, you're as good long to as go. You treat yourself right, you're good to go. My dad is now 72. 72. And uh, he's still out there partying in Florida, still having a good time with his girlfriend down in Florida. Listen, listen, you're absolutely correct. You know, I look at it and I go, yeah, I'm going to be old, but man, I feel young and I continue to plan on feeling young and I'm going to be rocking and rolling on these. So absolutely. Yeah. Shout out to both of you. 100, 100%. So let's get into it, ladies and gentlemen, this day in gaming. Uh, let me go ahead and bring this in a little bit more. So it looks good. Perfect. All right. So. Okay. Oh, the... All right. There we go. All right. So this day in gaming. Uh, can I change the font here? Let me change red real quick. I got to fit the, the scene of the show. We got red this week. In case those don't know, we do yellow, red, green, and blue. Uh, this represents the different ecosystems. Anyway, so this day in the gaming, we had 34 years ago. We're starting on the, uh, October 29th, 1988. Genesis released the Genesis in Japan. <laughs> um, then in 1991, Super Nintendo released Final Fantasy II in Japan. Um, then in 93, you had Turbo CD release Castlevania Rondo of Blood in Japan. Shout out to Castlevania. Fucking right. We need a, we need a return to Castlevania. We need a modern Castlevania. Yeah, like we, a need, action. we need like an RPG. Yeah. Some type of Castlevania. Yeah. In, that, in, that, in that world, bro? Yeah. Oh, good gosh. Um, 1998 PC got Fallout 2. Uh, God damn. Oh, uh, I didn't realize Fallout came out that long ago. Jesus Christ. Um, then PlayStation got... That was the old Fallout, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. As yeah. we currently know not, it. Not as we know it, but still. Not as we know it, but yes, yes. Uh, then PlayStation released uh, Legend of Legea in Japan. Then in 2002, uh, we got one of the better GTAs. PlayStation 2 released Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Shout out to Vice City. My favorite one by far. One of the best, best soundtracks in history. Yep. Uh, then in 2003, PC got Call of Duty. Again, think about when Halo came out. Now, look at when Call of Duty came out. 2001 versus 2003. Yep. Then 2009, PlayStation 3 release. And shout out to, uh, shout out, I guess it would be kind of like, what, Bayonetta's birthday was yesterday, I guess. Uh, <laughs> new, brand new game. 
uh, Bayonetta 3 released this Friday, but they got, in 2009, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 got Bayonetta in Japan. Um, I believe what that was the, the, did the first game get released in tandem with everything else. With what? Because wasn't it? Oh, I thought it was Bayonetta was strictly Nintendo. No. Hmm. No, Bayonetta was multi-plat. Yeah, I thought it was only yeah. Nintendo. No, 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 huh. no, no. That was multi-plat back in the day. So, okay, okay. Yeah, no, no. That's why everybody got upset because then. The, because then they, they locked it. Because yeah, two yeah. was yeah. locked. Okay, yeah. so they started yes. with two. Okay, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Platinum. Makes sense. Whatever. More decisions. Okay, so yeah. That, understand. Whatever. <laughs> uh, that makes sense then. Okay, so yeah. uh, I was going to say uh, two is. Okay, so yeah. two and three are. are. But the all HD right. version still lives up. Anybody yes. want to go play Bayonetta? The HD version is. It good. does. It does. And it does play really well. Uh, the DS released in 2009. Final Fantasy, The Four Heroes of Light in Japan. Uh, shout out for Final Fantasy making every different form of Final Fantasy they could have. Uh, Xbox 360 released in 2009. Grand Theft Auto 4, The Ballad of Gay Tony. Then in 2000, fantastic. Yeah, DLC, it, was, it was solid. It was solid. <laughs> yeah, it was. Then in 2013, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 released Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag. Great game. Love the pirates. Uh, yeah, it was a good game. A good game. Uh, Ship battles were fun. Yeah, ship battles were fun. I felt like it was, I felt like it was just too much at the time. But even to considering like everything yeah. that that game allows you to do in 2013. Yes, yes. Beautiful game at the time for sure. Uh, 2013. We also on PlayStation Three and Xbox 360. We got Battlefield Four. Mm. One of the best battlefields. Um, but released in a terrible broken, state. <laughs> broken terrible when state. it came out, but recovered and went on to be one of the best. Yes. Yep. Um, then on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, you got WWE 2K14. I believe that was one of the better ones, too, one of the uh, more renowned ones. Uh, then in 2015, uh, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita got God Eater Resurrection in Japan. Shout out to God Eater. God Eater, love God Eaters. Uh, then in 2015, PlayStation Vita got uh Yomawari Night Alone in Japan. Yes, fantastic atmospheric game uh just a um top down view okay. um i guess adventure game you want to call it that but you're you're hiding out in the shadows trying to get away you know trying to hide from spirits and stuff but the right. atmosphere is gorgeous gorgeous animation style too simplistic but very gorgeous absolutely love that game all right uh, and then in 2019 playstation 4 uh released this gay of four complete plus NIS, bring your games to Xbox. Bring your Disgaea series to Xbox, please. Please. I'm begging you. Please. Thanks. And then uh, on Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4, um, in 2020, we got Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, Should have been multi plat as well, Atlas. Yeah. Shin uh, Megami Tensei is so good. Oh, God. Got to Shin Megami. Uh, then in 2020, PlayStation 4 released Watch Dogs Legion. Broken. Haven't gone back to it. Need to yeah. go back to it. Yeah. Once it cost me six hours, that was it. So I don't, we we went back and played co-op a little bit, just try out co-op, but yeah. I haven't gotten back into it. But it's a cool game. It's better than some people claim it is. It's got a unique experience to it for a Watch Dogs game. I kind of yeah. like it. All right. Yeah, so it was all right. Uh, Nintendo Switch uh, in 2021 released Mario Party Superstars. Shout out to Mario Party. And that is your This Day in Gaming segment, ladies and gentlemen. This is October 29th of 2022. And this has been episode 78 of Living Split Screen. I think today's been a uh, pretty excellent episode. We got into a lot of different topics today. A lot of different passion discussions also. And again, the chat Y'all have been on fire once again. Uh, Y'all are always active. You're having conversation. Um, uh, and Jacob says, I'm just, I, I, I just want to ask, didn't uh, The Last of Us PS3 come out in October 2013? Not the 29th, but a different date? Um, I don't remember. I feel like it was towards the fall when it was released, but I can't remember exactly when it was released. Uh, I'd have to look that up. Uh, 
thank you for you all being here today uh for our almost four hours worth of content uh, again no issues today guys again this is some this is what june, we should expect june 14th june 14th 2013 nice okay perfect perfect um but thank you all for being here today again four hours plus content uh, definitely three out three and a half hours worth uh, worth of content. I definitely appreciate you guys uh, for sticking it out again. Having those conversations in chat is always a beautiful thing for me to see. Um, as we're kind of talking and discussing and everything, it just lets me know that we're we're hitting the right notes, man, and that you guys appreciate that what we're talking about and that you're involved. Um, I always love it. For anybody that's new, uh, maybe on the audio side of things, you're checking us live for the first time. I saw some people earlier mention that. Hey, look, we greatly appreciate you tuning in. The other thing too, and um, Jacob Novick says LSS feels like five hours. Um, <laughs> it definitely flies by. It doesn't, doesn't. It never feels like it's been as long as it has been um, until we get to wind it down. It's like, damn, I, I didn't even know. <laughs> which is which is always a beautiful and a great thing for me personally. So again. Uh, if there's anything that you guys think that we could change, make better, or you got opinions, you want to, you know, maybe throw some questions out there personally, hit us up in the DMs and chat or anything else like that. We are, um, at least I'll say my DMs are always open. I'm never hiding from anybody, especially um, if you see me on Xbox, send me a message, hit me up. Um, if you want to run it up in some games, let me know. I'll tell you straight up, man. Hey, I'm busy. I'm doing this. I'm not one of these people that need to run and hide and um, I won't reply to messages for whatever reason. I think that's weird behavior. Um, especially, uh, at least personally for me, um, when you're someone who's in the community, you do a show, uh, you're going to have people that want to talk with you, chop it up. And again, uh, I don't have a problem telling you you're weird either. So <laughs> expect that. Um, if you end up being weird, uh, I will tell you that you are being, uh, have some weird behavior going. But hopefully you guys have uh, liked, also liked the changes that we have made to the channel overall. Again, constantly trying to live stream i might live stream some uh some call of duty multiplayer today uh depending uh also hopefully the quality is up there for you guys too but other than that every saturday morning you can find me right here 9 a.m central 10 a.m eastern 3 p.m uk time I still rain I the T is a seven everywhere. If it has a search bar type that in the same thing with living living split screen um i did it all purposefully uh, you look up living split screen on Google, you'll find all of our information. Um, if you search up uh, Steel Rain, I Steel Rain, I to Season 7, you'll find all of our information. Uh, so just check me out. And other than that, I gotta pass it off to my brother from another, the uncanny gentleman himself, the X-Men who is not Cyclops. Even though Marvel Snap makes you start with a Cyclops, it's actually... Yeah. He's actually pretty garbage in the game, too. Like, why is he garbage if, in the if, if I can have Jean Grey as my girlfriend, I'll be Cyclops. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Wolverine had her too, so I mean, yeah, whatever. it's true. That was whatever. a triangle whatever. and a half. Hey, well, whatever. whatever. <laughs> hey, well, her, get it in where you can fit it in, right? <laughs> uh, but either way, ladies and gentlemen, greatly appreciate you for being here. Pong, lead the people to victory. Show them why you're not Cyclops and uh, why I call you the uncanny gentleman, man. And uh, thank you for being here again. Thank you, Steel. And yes, Splen, I did look that up. I don't have that knowledge on the tip of my head. All the years run together at this age, so no. Most of my information, I do tend to look up unless I do happen, but there's no way I could pull The Last of Us date out of my ass. There's no way. <laughs> and, sh <laughs> and shout out to Yobi jumping in here too and, and saying great yeah, show. Sure. Yobi, the legend, uh, he had a great show on the uh, Backlog Bastards with Spooky uh so uh go check that out but yeah shout out to the legend dragon heart yobi in the house as well i appreciate all of you that were in here um yeah marvel snap did cyclops dirty i'm glad Kaysante. cyclops deserves <laughs> to be done dirty okay dude's weak all right i hate that dude anyways uh love you all uh you can find me pong soul you know the drill xbox and then twitter and then tonight you got to jump over to the shop podcast Nothing gets better at the end of your Saturday night. I'm telling you, we have great conversations over there. PTK Blam, been doing it for so long, and he deserves more of an audience. So if you got yeah. a chance, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Central Time, drop in there, say hi, stay a while. Listen, we're going to have great conversations. PTK Blam is the man, of course. That's his channel, the shop. And then we got Fuzzy Belvedere. We got myself. I don't think we have a guest 
tonight. So it'll be us three, which means we'll probably wind up with some extra time at the end of the show where PTK opens it up to the chat and you can ask us to talk about a topic and we will cover it. So be there tonight. And then otherwise Tuesdays, whether I'm there or not, it doesn't matter. It's double barrel gaming. It's Mr. Boomstick, the Terminator five days a week of content now shows. I don't know how that man does it, right? The retirement's great. Uh, But you got to be there Tuesdays for Xbox factor, 12 PM Eastern, 11 o'clock central time, all good things. Green uh, every Tuesday. And then of course, Thursdays it's PM in the PM it's pong and Mav in the PM, much like this show, two man show. Although we do have guests from time to time and we've had great guests lately. If you didn't catch this week's version, Listen, go back and watch it. We got King David on. We had royalty in the house for the first hour and a half. You know what you get with King. We had a great freaking time. Talk about time flying by. It was crazy. So go check out PM the PM this last week. Uh, But otherwise, be there this next week, 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 o'clock Central Time. For me and Mavs, hot takes, catching up just like Steele and I do here. Um, that is every Thursday. And then back on Fun Speculations channel, once again, Friday nights, Xbox Ultimate, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Central Time. I was in the captain's chair last night. I'm on the captain's chair for PM and the PM. But Mav had a headache last night, a bad one. So I took over the captain's chair. We had Harky Chani, great member of this community. He is over on Game On Daily with, of course, the sauce, Gaz, and, of course, the reasonable one, the one who runs mm-hmm. everything over there, Asa. He keeps everything level-headed over there. Game on daily, but we had Hargeed on last night. It was absolutely a fun time, great conversations. And because I was running the show, folks, we didn't go left very much, right? I keep things in check, whereas Mav just lets the show run wild. So uh, anyways, uh, we'll be back next week on Xbox Ultimate as a panel member, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Central Time. Otherwise... Golden Age is here, folks. The Golden Age of gaming. Gotta, you gotta hear it from us. I mean, again, you can't tell how excited we are for all of this stuff. Everything in in between, business side of things, all of it. The games, the content. It doesn't matter. We are interested because this is the best time ever. Get out there, enjoy your weekend. If you're playing Modern Warfare 2, I'll see you on the battlefield. Happy hunting out there. Play what you love. Love what you play. And even if you're not playing Modern Warfare 2. Guess what? There's probably a thousand other games right now to enjoy. Literally, there's so many games. It's crazy. Have a great weekend. Steel, get us out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all have a beautiful rest of your day. Stay safe. And uh, again, we'll catch you gaming. Much love. Stay easy.